Hey guys, welcome to the stream. How's everyone doing today? Alright. Oh, we don't want that. Um, I'll enable in game crisis, but let's face it, we never really get to it. I'll just put them all on default. Not ultimate. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, it's fine. Let's go. Feedback loop there, all good fixed. So I recognize that probably haven't played the dwarfs since Immortal Empires first came out, and that was um Grumbrindle, so I thought we'd give Thorgrim Grudgebearer a go. Why dwarves? Um, why anyone? <laughs> I just picked a race that I haven't played very much. March on, brave Dowie! March on! Okay, so an interesting thing about his campaign. Oh yeah, th that's bugged, isn't it? We don't. That. That gets cancelled, if I recall, right? Yeah. <laughs> so many things are bugged. Um, now with the inclusion of the Chaos Dwarves in here, that gives Storgrim another challenge in his early game to deal with. Of course, if we don't go out this way and fight Scarb Snake, which we're definitely going to have to do that. Um, well, let's just see how we go. Pretty straightforward side, I think. Isn't this one of the worst places to be on the map? Yep, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's not it's not a great place to be. We're on very high battle difficulty now, right? Yep, yep. Okay, all good. All good. Uh, should we fight this manually? Yeah, probably. Probably. Have you noticed the campaign difficulty has dropped since approximately patch 3.0? Mm, feels about the same to me. You might be just getting better at the game. I know you don't like mods, but what about the community bug fix mods since CA is no negligent? I'm thinking about that. Yeah, I'm thinking about adding that in. If they don't start fixing some of these bugs, I might, might have to, yeah. I just never thought about doing a Nurgle campaign, painful as it is. Uh, not, not personally. The, like the, the early game guide I did was enough Nurgle for me. <laughs> if I want to play Nurgle, I'll actually play Warriors of Chaos as um, Festus, because Warriors of Chaos with Nurgle, really good. Demons of Nurgle, they just, they just feel wrong. But Nurgle's really good for the Warriors of Chaos. Alright, how are we going to do this? Uh, I don't think it really matters that much. Let's just get set up over here on this hill. How would you meet Grumby as Thorgrim? Mm, I don't know. You'd, it'd be, yeah, it'd be pretty difficult to meet him. Okay, I think I'm gonna bomb their archers. Alright, hang on, let me just check. I'm pretty sure I've got blood on. No. Yeah, how's everyone doing? How's your week been? I think that one's thinned out enough for now. Yes, 
Okay, decent amount of damage with the Gyro Bomber there. Okay, let's just make a little bit more of a gap here. Want them to keep targeting the gyro bombers, just keep them distracted while we take out the melee infantry. Good, want to make sure they're missing. Got a bit of a situation here. Need to get them in there. Try to get Thorgrim out of there. I want to keep the casualties and damage fairly spread out as much as possible. So far, no casualties. Bound to be one or two soon. Okay, this will give us some extra ammo back. A bit of extra balance of power. Alright, get Thorgrim back in there. Any chances for an ogre live stream? Very low chances for ogres. They are extremely unpopular whenever I cover them. It's just not worth it. I don't mind playing the ogres, but they always perform like crap on the channel. Alessandro Baldino did a 10 euro simpson. Hey Legion, I recently watched your Lou and the Oka and started an Elbrick campaign just confirming the great Free Girl Night Cheese still works if you can federate Lewin. Okay, thanks for that. Um, good to know. Thanks for the chat. Uh, Nat Birch at a five pound to chat. Hi, Legion. Glad to catch a stream. They've been very enjoyable lately. Thorgrim was my first ever Total War campaign, so it's good to see him. Cool. Yep, funny enough, it was probably mine as well, Thorgrim. First ever Total War Warhammer 1. Well, first ever on the channel, at least. But yeah, thanks for Super Chat, guys. Appreciate it. Alright. Army losses any moment now, I think. What makes hammerers not so good, in your opinion? Well, you're assuming I, I think don't think that they're good. Um... I think you're going off old information there. Anything that I said in Total War Whammer 2 kind of doesn't really apply anymore. So I don't think I've ever said that hammerers aren't good in Total War Whammer 3, but I actually do think they're good because they've got magical attacks and melee infantry are better than they were in Total War Whammer 2. But something to consider about hammerers is that their defensive value is relatively low compared to... Uh, compared to... I'm just trying to think of it, what's it called? Um, iron Breakers. And sometimes Iron Breakers are better just because you want to hold the line for longer. But these guys here will dish out damage. So it really does depend on what kind of army you want to build. But I don't think that they're bad in Total War Warhammer 3. The fact they've got Guardian is one of the most overrated things in the game. Some people think that that's like, it applies to every unit around them. It only applies to heroes and lords that are near them. And you can only get that once. Alright, this guy here is outrunning him. Alright, whatever. I found a way in Thorgrim campaign that if you push too far east or west, you get swamped by a war declares and it turns into a tar pit. Interesting to see how you prevent that. Well, let's go north or south then. <laughs> Would you consider doing campaigns with specific goals or handicaps again? Not at the moment. Things are very quiet at the moment, so I'm not going to do campaigns that aren't necessarily ones that I would enjoy. So, what? yeah, things are really quiet at the moment, which is understandable. It's that lull between DLCs. So right now, definitely not. Hello, Legend. I want to ask if Warhammer 3 is worth buying in your opinion. Depends on you. It's not a perfect game. 
I recommend it if you've played if you like if, like, if you've played Total War Warhammer one and two and you like it and you're sort of done with them, then yeah, I'd recommend it. Don't pay full price for it because it's been out for more than a year. Um, but it's good. It's not for everyone, so you have to decide that for yourself. It's just, I can't 100% recommend or not recommend it. You have to decide for yourself. V became a member for uh, six months. Uh, stream four of Asking Legend for... Okay, I'm not going to read that kind of crap out, but thanks for the membership. Saad did a 25 SAR super chat. Forge, fuse, recycle, profit cheese. I don't know if, it, if it's work until now or not. All right, thanks, dude. Appreciate the super chat. Uh, I'm pretty sure it still works. I'm going to take that because it's going to give us extra growth. Yeah, guys, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to play into, you know, the day five, day six of asking, pesting me for stuff. I'm just, I'm just going to delete your comments if you start doing that. Okay. I don't want people doing it. I don't care about the donation or whatever. Don't do that. It's super annoying. And it's not just annoying for me. It's annoying for everybody else. Nobody cares. Alright, could get grudge against green skins. Seems like that would be useful for now. Don't really need Root Marcher right this very second. And Skaven, yeah, let's grudge against the foul. Notice how he doesn't have grudges against Chaos Dwarfs. That's interesting. One might think that they haven't been updated. If a unit has 50% physical resistance and enemy has fire missiles, how much does it reduce damage? By 50%. <laughs> Unless that fire is magical damage. So, for example, if it's Sisters of Avalon, it doesn't dodge it at all. But if it's like the um, Chaos Dwarf's uh, Hobgoblin Archers, then it blocks 50% of it because it's physical damage. Fire damage can be physical and magical. Sorry, fire can damage can be either physical or magical. It can't be both at the same time. All attacks in this game are broken down into either magical attacks or physical attacks. So magical attacks can sorry for the message, not gonna happen again. It's all good. It's all good. Wasn't mad about it, but I'm not I'm not gonna like not gonna play into that crap. I really don't like that shit. But I appreciate your membership. Uh, Far sent to watch it a ten pound super chat. Good to have a live stream to finish the week. Still not managed to get Wormer three right to run on my laptop. I have seven thousand hours of Wormer two. I never played a Dwarf Wormer two campaign. Where should I start? Uh, I'd, I'd probably start with um, Thoric. Start with Thoric. That's the best one in my opinion. Thanks super chat. All right. So, single entities are a little bit damaged. Everyone else is fine. You're a bit damaged. But it's okay. Uh, Seymour Storm did a five dollar super I always fun to see the cheese, man. Do you have any hopes for Shadows of Change? Anything you want to see, etc. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I don't, I don't think anything's like riding on it that much. It's Zinch, Kithay, and Kislev. Um, I just want to see more content. So, I'm not, I'm not fast. Like, I'm not going to make 10 videos on speculations about stuff, because I have no idea. Whatever the Legendary Lords are for each of the factions, I I am fine with. I mean, it's really hard to know when it comes down to the new races, like... Um, actually, I should send you up. Kislev and Cathay, since I'm not familiar with any of their campaigns... Uh, campaigns, characters... Whereas Zinch, you can kind of guess that it's probably going to be Egrim Van Horseman. Probably. If you just had to guess. Could also be the Changeling, but... I feel like it's Egrim Van Horseman. Might not be. Who knows. I'm going to bring Thorgrim back. He's had enough. Yeah. Do you find the dwarves boring? I find that lack of magic and chaos makes them feel dull. Well, you can get cavalry with the dwarves if you use alliance recruitment, and they've got magic through rune magic, which you know isn't the best. But I don't, they're not, not, they're not the most interesting faction in the game, obviously. But I don't mind playing them. I used to hate them, but ever since they got the um, item crafting, I've, I enjoy them a bit. I 
I guess the thing is with dwarves is they're just a bit vanilla, but I got nothing against things being particularly vanilla. Yeah. Variety is not something that I demand from my factions. Keeping Thorgrim out of it because he's already a bit damaged. He didn't heal at all in the previous battle, obviously. Why did you turn off 3D portraits? Performance. It. I noticed a big uh, performance improvement, and it's not important at all. I just noticed ever since like 3.0, uh, performance has been a bit shaky, and that that made a very big improvement. Uh, Shakurakat became a member for 37 months. Hey, legend, how are you doing? Hope all as well. Yeah, everything's fine. Uh, thanks for the membership. Thanks for being a member for so long. Appreciate it, dude. Did you see the Bannerlord update announcement? I have not been paying attention to Bannerlord lately. I wouldn't mind playing Bannerlord again. Not on the channel, but just in my own time. Worst Warhammer... Total War Warhammer DLC? The Blood Pack. <laughs> I'm sure that's not what you meant, though. The worst Warhammer DLC is probably... Oh, depends on when you ask the bloody question. If you had asked me this two years ago, I would have said Hunter and Beast. But I'd probably say Grim in the Grave. The first DLC is pretty boring. Does your room look different? It's just the um, the stuff. I've taken some of the stuff. It kept falling down, and I haven't got time to fix it. I just I don't really care that much these days. <laughs> um, the Funt became a member for 45 months. Thanks, dude. Appreciate the support. Yeah, I just don't have as much of the uh, the audio foam up ever ever since it got taken down. I just haven't put it back up. Do you have another channel where you play other games? Uh, I play Valheim on another channel, but I haven't um, I haven't uploaded anything in a while. I've just been busy with real life. Other other things have happened that have made uh, managing that channel not really an option for a bit. Send me to vengeance. Alright, still don't think we need Root Marcher. Because we can very easily get to Mount Squighorn next turn. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, I got an idea actually. Um, I will actually grab this. And I'm going to grab a new Lord. I'm going to have him launch the attack. Uh, ooh, I was going to get a Rune Lord, but we got a Grugny dude here. Yeah, I'll get the Grogny, dude, because that's really good. Okay. Then... Yep, leave that. Upgrade this. Yep, we need... Let's see, what do we need? We need, um... Artillery. I can't get that yet. Not yet. Okay, so we need... Definitely need growth. We've got 50 growth coming in per turn at the moment. Do we need money? Probably gonna need some money. It's only 15 growth, right? Just go with that first. You gotta get a nice balance between money and and growth. Okay. Don't have a lot of cash left over. Just regular dwarf warriors are good. Alright, I need to get some cash from somewhere. Yep, okay. Good, that might cover it. 
Onward. <laughs> oh, th there we go. Yep. Okay, two dwarf warriors. Now, the reason why I go for regular dwarf warriors as opposed to great weapons, for one thing, they're cheaper and they have higher defense values, which is more important. Except that we don't have any missile units yet. Yeah, no, that'll be fine. Cartman1 did a $5 super chat. It's great to catch you live. Cheers, mate. All right, thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Good to see you as well. All right, let's get... Where's the one for growth? There it is there. Yeah, let's get that. Uh, Liam Roundtree, became a new member. Thanks, dude. Appreciate the support. Have you played the new Riftbreaker DLC? I have. I think it's good. All right, I think we're done with this turn. All right, so here's the plan. Next turn, we actually attack with this one, and that way Thorgrim actually keeps moving on so that we can actually reach the high place relatively quickly. Because you can't reach it from Mount Squighorn to the high place, but we'll see. Because we've got to move quickly. Don't have to worry about Grimgor anymore, so that's good. Although these Skaven can be a bit of a nuisance if we... The biggest nuisance is going to be Skarsnick. It'd be good if we could team up with um, Ungrim up here. Do you find stealing a healer hero a must in the late game? No. Join war against Kazrak with friends for money? That's a pretty good idea, actually. Yeah. Do it next turn, because that way he'll have more money. Don't remember exactly why he stopped with the old outro. I just didn't want to do it anymore, that's all. I wasn't forced to do it, I just... Just didn't want to do it anymore. Ah, okay, Skarsnick already took it. Who has Black Crag? Skaven faction has it. I reckon Gorfang Rot Blood. Rot Gut. Rot. Whatever. Uh, he should have it. Can dwarfs get scholars? Yes, they can get students. Yes. Jeez. Okay, no, 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 that makes sense. Alright, looking at this. Haven't met them yet. Throw banners! Let's march! Because, yeah, look, it only uses up 45% of his movement. So we want to be able to make more use out of that. Yeah, this is fine. TB Swinkles did a two euro super chat. I should study. Can you save my disaster exam? I'm sorry I can't, but thanks for the super chat. The best Dwar Dwarm Doomstack at the moment? I don't know. I don't really Doomstack very much anymore. Alright, this is a good defensive position. Do you still prefer how Winds of Magic worked in Warhammer 2 or how they work in Warhammer 3? Still prefer them in Warhammer 2. The Warhammer 3 system is a definite downgrade. Although I don't mind how it works for the Chaos Dwarves, and only for the Chaos Dwarves, because they're actually able to get huge Winds of Magic reserves, which is one of the things I like about it. Uh, one of the things I don't like about Warhammer 3 in terms of Winds of Magic is that you reach your maximum potential very early on, which kind of... It's kind of boring to do that. You should be hitting your maximum potentials way later in the game, and that's not really what happens. Alright, we've got a lot of enemies coming at us. Okay, I really don't need to be running down all this way. That is a nice looking cluster. Let's go bomb them. Oh, I may have 
missed my chance there. Oh well. I kind of want to go for the goblins just because they've got... Oh no, they don't have as much shield block as they had in Warhammer 2, right. Well, they're in tighter formation, so we actually end up doing more damage. Good amount of damage done so far, happy with that. did 13,000 damage. That should get them at least to charge up at us. Okay, the music stopped. I'll fix that. Cool, they just want to sit here. That's fine. Got heaps of ammo and I can go and get it recharged if they... Um... I got no problems with this. <laughs> They'll eventually charge at us. They can see our forces. In Warhammer 2, they would have already charged by now. Jeez. They're really letting me do a number on them. Do you prefer heroes or infantry for holding back the enemy for your ranged to work as the dwarves? Definitely prefer heroes. But you've got to be careful because sometimes the AI will just run right past them. So you've got to, you've got to know how to use them right. Whereas melee infantry is a little bit harder for the AI to push right through. But if you know what you're doing, heroes heroes do quite well. Hmm. I can't explain why they're doing that. Well, that's not heaps of ammo. Are the lowest tier gyrocopters actually the best ones against infantry? Yeah, they're anti-infantry. They're better. They do more damage than these ones. These ones have kind of better bombs. And there is a certain advantage to single entities sometimes. But I'd say that the the uh, the regular gyrocopters in the early stages of the campaign are definitely better. Later, later on, sometimes the gyro bombers are better. Because these ones are okay against single entities as well. They're more uh, well-rounded. I don't know why they're just sitting there. This is weird. It's on very hard battle difficulty. They just don't want to advance on us. Hmm. Maybe they feel like they've got missile superiority just because they've got a couple of troops that are missiles. Alright, I'm going to start moving up through here. Because I want to make sure I hold the high ground. That's really important. I mean, this is all the high ground anyway, but I also want to try to make sure I don't get flanked. During the late campaign, who do you think is a better choice, Chase of Snowball and Chaos, or Order Tide? Um, I'd say Order Tide usually prevails, depending on the player's decisions. Um, I do find that no race ever, or no one faction ever, comes out as the undisputed ruler of the world. Even if they're an endgame crisis, they usually get thwarted by other AI. I, I once had um, did a bit of a test with the Greenskin, the biggest war, and just sort of left them alone to see how big that they would get. And Grimgore got to 95 settlements before getting pushed back by the, the, the non-endgame crisis AI. And this was 200 strength Grimgore. So the AI never really... becomes like super strong like they did in um warhammer 2 do you remember what the dwarves would do in like every single campaign in warhammer 2 they would always become strength ranking one or or dark elves would malekith would completely dominate the high elves and then 
invade the old world. That doesn't really happen so much in Warhammer 3. So where the where Warhammer 2 didn't have an endgame crisis, it, the endgame crisis happened. So it, well, actually, it did have an endgame crisis, but the endgame crisis between factions happened naturally, which I think is a lot better than a sort of shoehorned in endgame crisis at a certain turn. Uh, Giga Johnson did ISK 1500 super chat. Made my day with wolves. All right, thanks, dude. Appreciate the support. Appreciate that. Glad I made your day. Even dwarfs? No, I, I never see the dwarfs. Uh, the dwarfs become number one. And their in-game crisis is nothing special. I've definitely seen them get thwarted by the AI before. Oh, I'm back. Okay, it's end game. Not yet. If this is a Babylon shoot a Lamasu, does it do physical or magic damage? Um, it does magic damage because the Sisters of Avalon would have to be within its aura range when it starts shooting in order for its magical attacks to be repelled. It doesn't, it doesn't immediately make a missile attack become physical straight away. Okay, that's all of my ammo with that one used up. Uh, Toby did a $5 super chat. Uh, thanks to your content ledger, do you think Warhammer 3 is better than Warhammer 2 these days? Uh, about the same. About the same. It's got roughly the same number of players. Uh, it's got more content, but the content's not in as good shape as Warhammer 2 was. Um, it, it's a very buggy sort of... There's issues with it, but it's about as good. Matt Lee did a total super chat. What's more likely? Total Warhammer 40k or Fishman? I'd say Warhammer 40k is pretty likely. What are they doing? I don't know. I'm on the... I, don't, I just don't know what they're doing. I was expecting them to charge at us. And they just never did. Yeah, no, no. You shoot at that. Even now, I, I can't explain it. I don't know what they're thinking. All right, look, if he wants to snipe their lords, here, if you put this down, you'll get additional missile damage. I don't know. Shit. They don't want to attack. <laughs> Alex Brock may become a member for 14 months. Just besieged Lockyer, he sallied out in 01, then he left the city and ran off. Since when is the siege lifted when the defender attacks and lo loses? When it's a port settlement. Thanks for super chat. Uh, membership. Yeah, it's a port settlement. Yeah, from any port settlement, you if you're under siege, you can just leave straight away. By the, via the sea. So I think I think this guy might actually be the commander of the battle. Uh, maybe not. God damn. Man, this AI is set to off. It is just not doing anything. Alright, here they go. They finally decided to attack. Yeah, stop that. You need to be shooting at these. God damn. Oh. 
So this is another thing about hammerers. The AA always like to target them because they're high value with no shields. So even low tier archers can actually wreck hammerers. Sometimes people just look at the stats of a unit and be like, Oh look, it's super strong! That's not always the case. Um, so for much of chill, let's be chat. I miss super factions made in games great sometimes. Yep. Yep. Thanks for chat. Yep. Shoot into this big blob over here. Does melee defense only work when the unit is standing still or always in melee? Melee defense is just a measure of how well an enemy can dodge a melee attack. That's what it means. Doesn't matter if it's standing still or charging or getting hit in the rear. Although, if it's getting hit in the rear, its melee defense is reduced. Bit of damage, but we're okay. But still, the seed shouldn't be lifted. Maybe because I wiped the garrison? Dude, I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't there. The game does weird things sometimes. But you're right, if he sallied out, and you won, and you wiped out the garrison, but not his army, and he sailed away, that may have caused it to... Lift the siege. Yeah. That's actually pretty pretty interesting that that can happen. Is there any special reason for the 2D portholes? It's just, it's better perfor performance. Alright. Um... Yeah, I really want to get that growth and control going. Alright, did you get that? Fi yep, you got the Pincer's Blade, that's good. Alright, after that... What am I doing with Thorgrim? Let's have a look over here. Is that Skarsnik? Yeah. Alright, we're considered about equal to him. And how many settlements does he have? Two. So he hasn't he hasn't attacked this settlement over here yet. Okay. But yeah, he's able to recruit nasty skulkers early on, isn't he? So we, we really need to get an attack on him very quickly. Let us begin. It is time. All right. So with this one here, I usually like to go with Dead Eye. I never find Grudge Raker to be a very good. Actually, that'd be better. Let's get with that. And retake the realms. Yeah. What are we doing? Do I want to go down his melee line now, or do I go down his blue? No. Don't worry about the blue line too much. We're not going to get Lightning Strike by the time we fight Skarsnik. But I think maybe that'd be useful. Okay. Time for a reckoning. Why you recruit the second Lord? So that Thorgrim can move past this army next turn. Alright, should I order that? No, I shouldn't because we need to stay in as good shape as possible. Because we're going to immediately fight Skarsnik. Notice that you need four victories against Skarsnik. I thought you needed five. Uh, 
Are you going to sack two more times for Rune of Spite? This is the bloody spears, not Skarsnick. But yeah, when it comes to Skarsnick, we'll have to keep him alive and sack his minor settlement a couple of times. Alright, they'll probably just sit there and wait. Again. Can regular dwarf dedicate to Hashut? No, that's a weird question. Uh, one little issue that I'm having here is that every battle the Jaro Bomber keeps getting a little bit more damage, so I'd like it if in this battle here he doesn't get damaged at all. That'd be good. Let's see, these two here have taken the most amount of damage. And this one, I don't care about the miners so much, but uh, since we're not going up against much, put them as the back line, and these ones here as the front line. Okay, I can actually outrange their archers. So just stay there and shoot. Are they just going to do this again? No. What's he doing there? Okay, that's fine. It's weird. I've never seen the Total War Warhammer AI be this passive. Okay, now they're advancing. Okay, move up a little bit. Right, this guy here should be up front, taking the most amount of damage, because he's going to be the one that's sitting inside the sub. Look, they're only sending a couple of guys at us. It's weird. What are they thinking? I don't know. Doesn't make any sense. Always going for the hammerers. Good. Still got two more bombs left, but they've thinned out too much. Don't worry about it. Good. And yeah, occupy that. All right, and this is why I recruited him. Okay, if we have a look from here, you'll notice that I can't actually reach the high place next turn. But if I send Thorgrim, I can reach it next turn, like this. So he'll be able to launch the attack. I, I don't think that Skarsnick will be there. I don't think he'll be there. Alright, I got enough money for some more Dwarf Warriors. Or should I get Miners with Blasting Charges against all of these Goblins? Yeah, that actually might be better. 
Hang on, let me just think again. Uh, Sammy Ratilianen became a new member. Thanks, dude. Appreciate the support. No regiment of renown yet. No. No slayers. Alright. Stay right there. Okay. Alright, we got this here, which means we don't need it there. Yeah, leave that one there. Okay, get rid of this one. Don't kill Skarsnik too quickly. I know, I know. I think he's going to occupy a World's Edge archway next turn. Then I'm going to take the high place. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Alright. Oh yeah, ammunition for the hero's army. That sounds good. And over here, he's already, he ranked five after one battle. Okay. And next turn, this guy just needs to come and help out. Uh, do you know what would also be good? Having another rune lord, because we don't have any rune magic. It is increasing our supply lines, but we just need to throw everything that we can at them. And more heroes, the better, because that's the only one I can get. Okay, cool. And then commandment over here. Let's see. Uh, Vink became a new member. All right, thanks, dude. Appreciate the support. Who's the best vampire coast? Legendary Lord? Noctilus. Yeah, let's go with this one here. Okay, and any diplomacy. Let's see. So we're going with a pretty aggressive start. Okay, let's move on. Is there a way to restock unit abilities like you do ammo, such as the bomb... Bombers bombs? Not that I'm aware of. Why not? Kill Skarsnet quickly. There's a grudge that you need to beat his army five times. If you kill him too quickly, then you can only... Then you just won't get the uh, grudge sorted. It'll get cancelled and you miss out on a rune of spite. He usually is there still on three. Okay. Okay. And this is why we recruited the... Otherwise, if we didn't recruit these lords, we wouldn't be getting here this turn. Before you says anything. Bloody evenly matched. Hmm. Yeah, well, I haven't met the mutinous skit, so we're just going to have to go for it. Alright, here we go. Fighting against Garsnick. Can you still do the rune cheese? The rune crafting cheese? I believe so. I'm not really focusing on it. Why not demolish the extra barracks? Didn't I do that? I did. <laughs> you guys make me second guess everything that I do. Dave became a new member. Alright, thanks, do appreciate the support. Okay. Also, Skarsnik's not recruiting anything here, so maybe he's recruiting over there. Not sure. Not sure. Oh, I should have done this before the guy left. Oh well. Um, yeah, get the growth going. And we don't really even need this here now. Uh, we'll just do it anyway. I declare war on them. All right, we don't want to order resolve it because any damage done to our army in the next fight is going to really come back to haunt us. Why does the AI retreat, Skarsnik? Shouldn't he be holding ground in a settlement? I cannot tell you why the AI does something. I don't understand the AI. I mean, I, I know what it does most of the time. I just don't understand the decisions it makes.
I love you, W. You'll be crafting the Rune of Spite before completing the Grudge, so you get two instead of one. I'm pretty sure you can still get two, even if you get this Grudge sorted first. I don't think that stops you. Alright, there's nothing we've really got to worry about here. Keep the units that are damaged from fighting. So these ones here. Keep them back. Because we really want to make sure we're in really good shape against Skarsnik. It's always really embarrassing when you, like, lose a battle by, like, one or two men. Or dwarfs make all the difference. Uh, Dave did a ten dollar super chat. Uh, hard to catch you these days, but always love your content. Keep up the amazing content, man. All right, no worries, dude. Appreciate that. Yeah, I know it's uh, the schedule's all over the place these days. Don't really need these guys until the next fight. Okay, good opportunity here for some bombing. Let's do it. Good enough. It wasn't amazing, but it didn't need to be. I'm interested in giving them an extra round of that stuff. Looking forward to any new game releases? Yes, I'm really looking forward to Starfield. Alright, we walked out of this one with basically no damage. Yeah, there's always the possibility that Starfields will be hugely buggy on release. That is, it's Bethesda. You, you're really rolling the dice with that company. Are you going to make huge piles of gold bars in Starfield? If I can, I will. Absolutely. Opinion on the trait system they showed in Starfield? I haven't really looked at it. I'm not following it that much. I'm going to play it, but I haven't really been like watching everything they're releasing. Probably missed it, but Baldur's Gate 3 is coming out earlier, 3rd of August. I don't care. Probably not going to play that. Dwarfs are getting a rework this year. Apparently. At the end of the year. Apparently. Legend, if you get ally units, what will you get? That depends on who I ally with. Uh, but Bretonia is pretty good to get some cavalry. Usually, like, get Knights of the Realm from them. Or Grail Knights, even. That'd be good. Uh, yes, we want to occupy that. Alright. Think again. Armed and ready. My axe thirsts for war. Alright. Good. Good, good, good. Something wrong with your red. We like Still says evenly matched. God damn, he's ranked seven. He's only fought two battles. I fought four or five. All right, what do we want here? Thorgum doesn't have that meaty of a skill tree. So even if we put points into Axe Lord and then end up not 
having these units later down the track, it's fine. Because I usually don't bother getting all the stuff over here. It's not that good. Lord of the Derps. No. Nah, no, nah, I don't need that. Extra armor is not going to matter right now. Whereas four melee defense for the majority of our units will come in handy. Only recruiting that because that's all I got. We just got to keep pushing. Right. We don't have money to build this stuff up. So I'm going to demolish this. Because I can't afford any more units anyway. Um, we could always rebuild it later. But I need to get that money to build some more income so that I can actually upgrade these settlements. I know that part of the reason why our, our finances are a bit of a problem is because of the clan loyalty. But we've got to make sure we've got enough troops that we can actually handle Skarsnik. Alright, looks like we'll be in pretty good shape for this. We've got just as many troops as him, if not a little bit more. I don't think he's going to launch the attack. He's just out of range here. I don't think he'll launch the attack on this guy. I hope not. I don't think he's got any other forces. He might jump in the underway over to here. If we have a look at the grudge, let's see, Crooked Moon over here. Uh, win five battles against the following race, Crooked Moon. So we have to fight him five times, but we could just sack the settlement over and over again, which I intend to do at World's Edge Archway, which is why I want one of these guys here to launch the attack next turn and sack it, and I'll leave them with a few units as Thorgrim goes towards Mount Gunbad. Anyway, let's just see how we go. I hope Starfield is good. My Bethesda modding is pretty good. Yeah, I hope it's good too. Alright. Ooh, they have got extra troops. Ooh! Okay, so I reckon the reason that it says Valiant Defeat is because of this garrison here. But this garrison allows us to not control our... J Does that really matter? Hang on. One, two, three, four... One, two, three, four. That doesn't really matter that much. Pretty funny if we lost this in a not a good way. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go. I yeah, okay, here we go. Watch him have a wire now. No, he didn't, but that, yeah. So, there are a little, few more units here than I thought, and also these guys aren't coming from a favorable location, but I'll just move them over here. It doesn't matter if they show up late to the battle, because these guys are going to show up pretty late as well. He got fanatics. That's okay. That's okay. I'm not blobbing up. Alright. AJ did a $31 super chat. Thanks for the content, mate. You're a legend. Alright, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Alright, if I come over to... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, you dick. Okay, five minutes. Shit. Alright, well, it's going to take them a few minutes to get here. They're going to probably wait for their reinforcements. Maybe. So they would. We're definitely going to have to hold high ground here, up here. Kind of wish I had more missile units. Blob them up and cap and bob them. Mm, the problem with that is that if I blob up, they'll they'll get me with their nasty skulkers, which will do, do more damage. I think we'll be fine, just a standard formation. Yeah, they're waiting for their reinforcements as well. Okay. There's a... Ours unfortunately came from a pretty bad angle, but I think we'll be okay. I'm going to harass them a little... He doesn't have a Doom Diver, does he? And he doesn't have a... Sp Spellcaster, I think. Hang on, is that a spellcaster? I can't bloody... No, it's not a spellcaster. Okay. Stop us! More 
No, no. Alright, well, the better we can harass them. Good. Hit the spooder. Uh, not with this. Not with this one. I'll need to do that with the quarrelers for sure. Alright. Yeah, they're not coming here within two minutes. Alright, we're not really getting good shots in there. They're being stupid. They're sending a bunch of units up ahead like this. That is fine by me. God damn, this one's not doing much damage. Hmm. What are they doing? Did I not control large armies? I must have not controlled large armies. I thought I'd turn it back on. <laughs> Got Alzheimer's or something. Um, mm. It won't be too long before these guys here get wiped out. Yeah, I meant to control large armies. I guess I just forgot to switch it back. It's alright. Um, so that means our guys here won't show up to begin with, but as soon as one of these, two of these guys here get wiped out, it should be fine. I didn't? Oh, okay. Yeah, the Alzheimer's. What are they doing sending these two units out at us like this? Alright, let's get the quarrelers up ahead. A little bit, because... Alright, I'm going to have these two get wiped out at the start. Because I don't want them running back over there. I don't know what they're doing. But if we can take out that nasty skulker at the beginning, that's really going to be helpful. Okay, now they're advancing now. Yeah, don't keep him too far over here. So what I want is for these two here to get wiped out so that they can come in. But I also want them to get wiped out in range of these guys here so I can shoot these Nazi Skulkers. Taking them out really early is going to be such a big advantage for us. This army here is not advancing as quickly as this one. Okay, they're almost within range. Just because we want them to die doesn't mean I want them to die too quickly. That's it. Okay, 
Okay, one of our dudes came in, that's great. Okay, them losing that unit nice and early, that is very good for us. I need this one here to go and die. Keep drawing this one in. That's not going to be of any further use to them. Okay, good, this guy acts as a good tank. No, 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 come back, come back, I wanted to kill you. Otherwise you're going to be a nuisance later down the track. Alright, they don't want to do that anymore. You need to move back. Back over to here. But I'm to our two guys over here. Did they shatter? Yeah, they did. Oh, God. Whatever. Tell you to shoot. Search! Oh no! For the cutters and go! Move! Don't really want this guy coming back. Where's the rest of their army? Is it all stalking? It's all bloody Nazi skulkers. Thorgrim doesn't start with the Grudge Thrower? Not anymore. No. Use a bomb on them? They're not clustered enough. Don't fire at will like that, dude. That would really suck. Doesn't look like a very large army, but there's a lot of stalking units in there. Oh, if those guys here could just leave the battlefield now, I could really use that rune smith. Rune of speed is pretty good. Good. Get him over here. Alright, what's going on with the rest of their army? Okay, there it is. Fine. Acting a bit like Skaven there. Draw them in slowly. That's it. You fire at will. Okay, you can fire at will again now. There's the fanatic, yeah. Hang on, don't fire yet, don't fire yet. I would love it if this unit here never makes it to the front line. That would be bloody great. He's already got his prodder, does he? Yeah. Good thing Thorgrim's anti-large. Oh, and he's also large. Uh, get him in there. Alright, 
Looks like a good bombing opportunity is showing up over here. Let's move Thorgrim back a bit. Alright, so hopefully, what we're going to see here... Yes, there I was going to say it, is the Nasty Skulkers... Oh, what's it called? The um, Fanatics using it then, which they did. And these are over here as well. I think we're doing pretty well so far. Oh, they hit us with that. Luckily, it's only Dwarf Warriors. Oh, it's actually those are long beards. Yeah, that hurts a bit. What's going on? Why aren't you moving? <laughs> Move, bitch. Okay, let's move him back a bit there. Keep units in reserve. Good, they're killing a lot of their own units. Skarsnik's fucked. I think we got this. A guy over here is doing just fine. Yeah, you can stay back, that's fine. Okay, these ones are coming back. Let's pop that down. Okay, we got him on the run now, I think. This guy's is in bad shape. Getting some reinforcements in there. Let's make him back. Okay, cool. Alright, we got this. We got him on the run now. And there's the army losses. Good. How much damage has the range hero done so far? He did 3,700. Not heaps, but he's only low level. It's more about restoring ammunition with him. I didn't even need to use the hammerers that much. Ready to get a close victory? Oh yeah, definitely. Either that or Pyrrhic, because one of our armies got completely obliterated, the garrison. So it could be a Pyrrhic victory. It doesn't matter anymore what type of victory you get. It doesn't make any difference to the amount of experience you get. Because if this guy here dies so we get more loot money.
There we go. Cool. A large portion of his army gets away, though. There you go. Didn't go so bad. No, it went fine. Yeah, bit of damage, lopsided damage, but... Skarsnick took way more damage than we did. He lost his Arachnorok Spider. Can't replace that. I lost 300, he lost 1,500. Why'd you hold so much in reserve to give archers time? Yes, that, and most of our units are defensive, so they don't do much damage in melee, whereas theirs are offensive, so they do a lot of damage in, in melee. So in that sort of situation, when the enemy has off offensive magic, that's magic, melee, you want to delay the fighting as long as possible, because charging head first with a straight line will only benefit them. Not that many units actually got wiped out. Got the Rune of Courage there. Garbage. I'm going to take that. That's a lot of both gold. Well, that's our second victory against Garsnick, and he didn't move away, so we can get our third victory, fourth. Okay, if everything goes according to plan now, we will we'll get the uh, the Rune of Spite sorted. Killing a whole army is ideal. Hunting enemies down after rat is ideal. Yeah, but I, I couldn't I couldn't do that. We can't outrun them. Legend, why don't you have cavalry yet? It's already turned four. Alright, cool. So Skarsnick's defeat trait will be especially useful for dealing with Tretch, which I imagine that's gonna be fairly soon. Alright, cool. These guys don't appear to be backing each other up, so that's even better. That's good. Get even more battles out of it. Okay. So we want increased mobility there, and extra ammunition. Oh, flash bomb's pretty good. Yeah, get flash bomb. And we want. I think that really helped. Um, but we may not need any more. Then let's get. Let's get him leveled up a bit. Master of Runecraft. Let us begin. Yeah, this guy's not commanding an army, so... Yep, that's fine. Okay. Alright, now, I would like for this guy here to go and get Skarsnake's defeat trait, so let's move him up to here. I'm not sure if this guy's going to be able to squeeze in there. Thorgrim might just be taking up too much space. Yeah, I don't think I can get him in there. That's fine. I'll cast the runes. Okay. Get in there. Good. The other army doesn't show up to reinforce. Good stuff. Alright. This needs to be fought manually. So if you have answered this question already, haven't watched the full stream yet, do you plan to have a scaven stream soon? Uh, there are no live streams ever planned. They're just spur of the moment sort of thing, so... Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Like, I play... I, I like Skaven, so they're actually my... Well, they're my favourite race in Warhammer 2, but I, I gotta say, Scar, uh, Scarbrand is probably my favourite race now. Warhammer 3. That or... Believe it or not, the Warriors of Chaos. They're... The rework really grew on me. I wasn't a big fan of the rework at first, but that being said, when I first played it, it didn't have confederations. But yeah, the Warriors of Chaos are actually a lot of fun. Skaven just feel a little bit off in Warhammer 3. Line of sight issues, the way that food works. They're, they're, they're not as good as they used to be. Well, they don't feel as good. They're still super strong, but they just don't feel as good. Um, Alright, I need to find out what they're doing. Alright, these three here should stay out of combat. We're not up against much here. 
This is a good defensive position. If we can get them to come to us, that would be ideal. And this guy here should be able to outrange any of their units. So we'll see if we can get them to discharge at us. Problem is they can't see our units. Are they just going to sit there and let me do this? Yeah, it seems like it. Okay, I'm going to have to advance then. Oh, nope, nope, here we go. Uh, this guy here has taken a bit of damage. Let's move him to the back there, yeah. Your Nurgle campaign guide really helped me, thank you. No worries, I'm glad it helped, that's what it's there for. It'd be good if we get him, we get loot money for it, otherwise we won't. I don't think that guy's coming back. I think that should have missed. You have 3D models turned off. Yes, I didn't think it would be such a contentious thing to do, but apparently a lot of people are having issue with it. The reason I turned off the 3D uh, portraits is for one, it has no impact on the game whatsoever. I'm hardly ever looking at this. And two, it actually has a big performance hit, having 3D portraits instead of 2D. And since I was noticing that there was a lot of stuttering going on in the, in the map and there were just some issues with performance, uh, that it would be better just to... Um, Turn her off. Shot on Skarsnik. There we go. Good stuff. Cool. That'll be worth a lot more loot money. That's a stupid question, but do you know what is the time today between you and the viewer? Probably about 20 seconds. 5 to 10 seconds. 20 seconds. I'm not sure. Okay, and let's get uh, Am I gonna keep this guy active? I might Yeah, so it would be good for the province Arm 
Oh, I was hoping he'd reach there. He didn't. Let us begin. Throw banners. Let's march. Onward. I guess only Thorgrim's going to be able to reach that. But then... That gives them time to get sorted at Mount Gunbad. But it might be better for me to go to Mount Gunbad first. My anger burns bright. I definitely won't reach Mount Gunbad this turn. But if I come over here, then I'm just going to piss off Tretch. Hmm... I think I know what I need to do. I need to split my forces up. But if you could just stand there first. Yes. Should Thorgrim? No, it doesn't matter. Just yeah, have him hit this. And looks like we can get away with an auto resolve. I'm worried that these three units here are going to get smashed in auto. No, we were okay. I probably would have taken less damage, but that's usually the case. Okay. Okay, we've got a student. Nice. Ready. Isn't going to make much of a difference at this point. I've got multiple students. Uh, Maxime Lozarch became member for 12 months. Cheers, Legend. Glad to catch a stream live at a reasonable time. Sorry, reason. At a reasonable in my time zone. Also, 12 months woo. Alright, thanks, dude. Appreciate that support. Thank you. Okay. Retake the realms. Hmm. I reckon I could get both of these next turn. Depending on how I go about it. Thing is, there's 11 units in here. I don't know what. For war. How am I going to go about it? To war. Cause yeah, I can easily capture this this turn, but then I definitely won't get there next turn, and that's more important. There's eight units over here. Okay. If both of these lords stand over here, I want this one here recruiting some miners. Those will be at full strength next turn. It's pretty easy stuff. With two heroes, two lords, we should be able to manage it. Thorgrim should be able to handle 11 units here by himself, no problem. You're going to need a force march over to here. You're going to launch the attack next turn. If you say so, beardling. And then you need enough troops that you're actually going to succeed. So we've currently got four in your regiments of renown. Uh, Simon Stephenson did a 65 SEK Super Chat. Hey Legion, two quick questions. Best traits for Chaos Darby heroes, and what heroes hold the front line the best for late game? Uh, thanks, Super Chat. I don't know about the best traits for the Chaos Dwarfs. Some of their traits don't work. <laughs> um, I think Malevolent might be the outright best one. Of course, it depends which hero you're recruiting. Um, as for best frontline for the late game, it depends on what army you're building. So, it's going to vary. You've got lots of really good options. So, the Iron Sworn are great options, or you can go with heroes. It's entirely up to you. There's no wrong answer. Alright. Thorgrim needs to transfer. So, we've got four, four over there. What are we going to need for this fight here? I'm probably not going to need the archers. Or actually, I might need the archers. I don't know what the map looks like. Uh, okay, leave these behind because they are damaged anyway. I want them to get replenishment. So that's five units. Then that one as well. Okay, so going in with 9 units to take on 11. Plus, they're probably going to put their Lord down there. Vengeful Rune Lord. Hmm. Lord of 
clan Borgrim. For the wisdom of Valea. I might need this guy here to actually go to Mount Gunbad. See, this one's got eight. Okay, I'm gonna need another lord. Give me another rune lord. <laughs> yeah, that'll be useful. Oh, I'm gonna be broke next turn. That's okay, because I'm trying to get both settlements next turn. Alright, that'll give me a tiny little bit of replenishment. I'm being real ambitious with this. Okay. Funny thing is, when you, when you do this kind of stuff, you run the risk of not getting both. Screwing it up. We'll see how we go. I've also got access to this, which I'm not going to recruit this turn. I should have access to him next turn. Uh, Thomas Carolla did a five dollar super chat. Hey, legend, been watching your vids for years. Do you think you'll be doing the new twenty turn guide series again? Uh, lots changed the past few months. No, I don't think so. Twenty turn guide doesn't really really work for Warhammer three. Twenty turn guide is like the entire campaign. <laughs> so no, I just don't think that that specific and rigid format format doesn't work anymore. But thanks for the, for the super chat. So what I do now is just called early game guides. All right, if we go with this, I should still have enough money <laughs> next turn. All right. Okay. And we have just one more battle we got to do. If I do this battle here first, I'll get the Rune of Spite, put that on Thorgrim or something, and that'll make that battle easier. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's going to take two turns and provide 200 income. I don't have any trade agreements yet, do I? I do a little bit. Um, let me see if I can get a little bit more cash. Okay, I can get a bit of cash over here. Alright, that'll cover our expenses. Alright, cool. Cool. I would upgrade this stuff here, but that'll possibly make me broke. So, not yet. Let's move on. 20 turn guard for, guide for Scarbrand. <laughs> yeah. The other guys have no siege attackers. That's right. Th Thorgrim has to be the one to attack it because he's the only one with siege attacker. That's correct. A quest has been issued, mighty lord. A great adventure beckon. My anger burns bright. Yes. Okay. It is time. So we're going up against eight units. Okay, it's not fully recovered. And over here, we can reach Mount Gunbad. I'm going to commit to both. Because I think I can do it. I've also got that lord there. Is that a wizard? Yeah. Wizard's a bit more trouble. Obviously, not do that one just yet. What about turn one to ten? I think just early game guide and not worry about the number of turns. What if you don't get what you need to, to do done within the first 10 turns? And also, it's really hard to follow a guide after a couple of turns because random things keep happening. So, do I have a plan for next early game guide? No, no. I'll make a guide based on what you guys are sending in with the disaster battles. Like if, for example, the reason I did... Kugath is because I had like a dozen disaster battles that were before turn 10 and it was clear that people were struggling with Kugath. Um, but I'm not just going to do one if nobody needs it. Warhammer 3 is so much easier than Warhammer 2. Most people just don't need guides. They're not as popular as they used to be and so they're kind of a waste of my time. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, okay. I thought I was going to bring in the other forces. Um, I guess not. Oh, wait, 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 just... Uh, yeah, we'll order that. Because that was actually a pretty good order. Wait, hang on. Let me just check to make sure both of those lords can arrive at Mount Gunbad. Otherwise, there's no point not bringing them. 
Why not take the minor one, launch the attack Mount Gunbad next turn by one lord? No, I'll do it this turn. Okay, you... Yeah, you can make it over there. Okay, good. Cool. No. Yeah, grudge removed. Okay, cool. So we got the Master Rune of Spite. We actually got it. And then we'll slap that on over here. I kind of feel like it might be better off on the Master Engineer. No. Okay. Then... Slap them up here. Yeah. Transfer these units into Thorgrim because he gives them extra melee defense. I don't want for the AI to have cheats. I want it to use tactics like High Elves using Checkerboard with only Archer Armies. What do you think? Um, that's great. And I would love it if Soft Drink came out of my taps. You can want a lot of things and it just not be feasible for it to happen. Asking Creative Assembly to make the AI actually use tactics... I just don't think that that is... <laughs> I don't think that they're actually capable of, of making that happen. If you don't want them to have cheats, just play on normal battle difficulty. I get that the AI is stupid, but this is all we've got. Yeah. Directing these complaints towards me isn't going to do anything. Alright, we can auto that and no units get wiped out. Hang on, let me just think about this, because it'll damage our army a fair bit, whereas... Let me just think about this for a second. We're bringing in... We've got four heroes... With a Rune of Spite as well. I reckon we could just do it with the heroes. Just hero hammer them. Alright. I'm going to fight that manually. None of this is really that important, but pop it down on Thorgrim, I guess. Why not just use the superior AI from other older Total War games, such as Shogun 2? Okay, so... Things to keep in mind is that the AI in Shogun 2 knows how to play Shogun 2. If you just copy-paste that into, into Warhammer 3, then they're not going to be able to do it. <laughs> okay, it's different. Shogun 2 and Warhammer 3, as far as the AI is concerned, vastly different games. In Shogun 2, the maps are mostly flat, without many terrain obstructions, with very few unit types, with very fast-paced combat. That is the type of situation where the AI thrives. The AI in Total War Shogun 2 is not actually that good. It just doesn't have as many things to juggle, so it doesn't fall to pieces. Now, in Warhammer 3, the maps are way more varied. I'm not saying they're better, but they're way more varied. The maps are more varied. Um, the maps are a lot larger. Well, the siege maps. There's a lot more that the player can do to screw around the AI. The Like, when it comes down to Shogun 2 versus Warhammer 3, Shogun 2... Oh, hang on. Just put it back over there. Shogun 2 AI is definitely more competent at playing Shogun 2 than Warhammer AI is at playing Warhammer. There's no doubt about that. But you can't just copy-paste it over. It's kind of like, imagine if you got a famous soccer player, and he was, like, amazing at soccer, and then you had a basketball team, and one of your one of your teams was not very good at, at basketball. They're, just, they're always losing, right? Imagine taking that pro soccer team and then making them play uh, basketball despite them having no training in that particular game. It's just, it's just, you're not going to... Skill doesn't always just translate exact one-to-one -one over. But yeah, 
I'm not an AI expert, so you, you can't really ask me like, Hey Legend, why doesn't CA do this or do that? I don't understand why CA does a lot of what it does. My job's to break these games, not to fix them. Um, only lies in a bottle of shit at a 5 euro super chat. Please never call it soccer again. Okay, thanks super chat. Legend, why aren't you doing more to fix the AI? Don't you think it's your responsibility? Here come people being offended by soccer. Look, people go out of their way to be offended. It's called Outrage Olympics. It's just, this is this is the world in, in 2023. All right, I'm just used to it. If you say anything that could be strewed as offensive, it is offensive. It's just this is how it is. It's virtuous to be offended. I'm actually shooting at Thorgrim. It'd be pretty funny if I actually end up losing this battle. I don't have, um, yeah. Oh, this guy's rank one, right? Oh, my Jaro Bomber. Okay, let's get him over here. We're clear to climb up over the walls here. And Thorgrim is doing a bit, a fair bit of damage there. The trolls are hurting him a, a bit. So we need to focus on them. See, I would use it on them to speed them up a little bit, but their arrival is not super important. Does the Rune Lord have Rid of Wrath? No, he's rank 1. Yeah, he's racking up that damage thanks to the Rune of Spite. Yeah, it's doing damage. God, it might be quicker to go up this way. I'm a little bit concerned that Thorgrim is taking too much damage. Oh, 
Concern. Just a little bit. Not a one man doom stack just yet. Good thing I decided to actually use these guys. So that's good. Thorgrim's done 20,000 damage, but. I'm gonna have to pull him out of combat soon. No, 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 you get back over here. All of these guys here are getting damaged by the Rune of Spite. This guy can hang on just a little bit longer. He's only got a thousand health. If I put him up here, he should be safe. That'll give Thorgrim a little bit more time. Alright, we got incoming over here. Bomb the blob of the bomber. He's too badly damaged. I don't want to risk him getting wiped out. We'll, we'll be fine. If it if he wasn't so badly damaged, I'd totally do that. But he's, he's very badly hurt. Yeah, run them off the battlefield though. Start moving. We'll actually take a little bit less damage while still doing this rune of spite shit on him. Okay, this guy here needs to get out now. Yeah, well, I definitely wasn't able to just use the Lords to sort everything out here. And at least the Trolls have now shattered, so that's good. Thorgrim can't hang on here much longer. But he did 30,000 damage. So that's alright. Um, that's not ideal there. Hang on. You guys come over here and need some support. and Thorgrim. We're almost finished here. Oh god. I gotta, I gotta pull him out. I gotta pull him out. He's too badly hurt now. Come on, Thorgrim. Oh, God damn it! Imagine if he got wounded. Damn, these guys are obstructed. Why? Oh, 
Get Dorgrim out of there. He's had enough of this battle. He's had enough. Here, just get rid of this freaking unit. Oh, they did a fair bit of damage, mostly to miners, though. Alright, these guys are done and none of them got killed, so that was a very close call on Thorgrim, but he did 35,000 nearly in damage. So, that's not too bad. But yeah, having him sort out the entire battle by himself, not happening. Do missile resistance and missile resistance? Sorry, do missile resistance and fire resistance block sisters of Avalon? What type of damage missile resistance block? Yeah. Okay. So for sisters of Avalon, if you want to block their damage, you need either missile resistance, fire resistance, or ward save. Any one of those, adding up to ninety percent, will block up the maximum amount. So, for example, if you've got 90% ward save, that'll block 90% of their damage. Sorry, yeah, 90% ward save, or 90% missile resistance, or 90% fire resistance will all block it. Resistances all add up. You don't need, for example, all your resistance... Oh my god, we just can't fucking like, get through these fucking goblins here! Why are you having so much trouble? Can't get around them. For the Karas Encore, these damn goblins holding me back. We're just trying to get around them for fuck's sake. Push through it, push through it. God damn, this did not go the way I wanted it to. Probably about the same results as auto. Uh, I don't want to send him by himself, he's not going to cap it. I wouldn't be surprised if the army loss just came in right about now. What was that? Maybe not. There we go. Yeah, that's probably about as good as what Auto Resolve would have yielded. No, I think Auto Resolve gave us a close victory. Damn. I think it's because it took so much damage on the single entities. Oh well. I don't think the battle went badly. Everyone got loads of kills. I think the Auto Resolve was just really favorable for us. I do genuinely hate attack on this map. Yeah, there's nowhere to hide your units. But anyway, that's the end of Skarsnik at least. And none of our units got wiped out. So as long as they recovered a fall, it didn't matter if it was Pyrrhic or Decisive or whatever. Stupid question, but have you watched Naruto? No, I haven't.
Alright. And that is the end of Skarsnik. Cool. On turn five. Okay, so after that, we can probably justify getting rid of both of these lords now. Temporarily. I imagine that the World's Edge Archway is probably going to come under attack. These guys here are actually stronger than us, but of course we are a little bit worn out. Yeah, let's try to take these two settlements here and help out Ongrim. Let's sort out our frontier here. Okay, cool. Alright, some more health would definitely... Hang on, High King. Effect range 50 meters. Yeah, right, it's pretty good. And now our finances are in much better shape. I think that's the 10th time someone asked a stupid question, but if you watch Naruto... Yeah, look, people ask those kind of questions all the time. It's just... It's just it just happens. Just go... Whatever. Not get bothered by it. Alright, we've got 11 units there and 8 units there, so... Nearly a full stack. But no good units available at the moment. We need to get some more money together. And growth over here is not too bad. Let's go with more growth. And yeah, let's get gold. I think since we saved up nearly two points here, it might be best to upgrade Karazza Karak before we upgrade either one of these. Not exactly rolling around in cash. Okay, that was have to do. Getting Godric and Felix could be good. Alright, let's have a look in Diplomacy and see what we can do. Oh yeah, I never got that Slayer as well. I guess I didn't end up meeting it. Okay, so... What are these other ones that need to be sorted? We need to win five battles against Clan Moors, capture Karak Asgirl, we need to capture the Black Crag. That's not too bad to do, but I'm just not there at the moment. Right, so after I've taken these two settlements, I'll head down to the Black Crag. I don't think the Skaven are going to attack us between now and then. I imagine that um, the Bloody Hands will be an issue very soon. They're probably going to confederate these guys any moment. Okay, let's move on. Are you still playing? You're joining Anno 1800? Yeah, I play it whenever I can. I love that game. Get rid of the rat. I think I need to sort out this green skin army up, faction up this way, because that'll relieve Ungrim. He'll like us for it. We'll meet him, so we get another trade partner, and that way he can focus on Azhag, and maybe support him there. These guys here are relatively passive, so we should be fine just to leave them alone. They're just not a threat right now. We've also got... Tretch over here. If Tretch captures the World Edge Archway, it doesn't matter that much. But if we have a look at him... Clan Rictus, yeah, it seems pretty likely that he's going to declare war on us. Pretty likely. But me just keeping my army here isn't going to be able to do anything. We need to come at him with everything that we've got. Decisions, decisions. Yeah, look, if we take this out, then we secure a frontier. If we go down over here, we'll be fighting forever. So we might lose a bit of ground to Clan Rictus, but I'll just take it back because all this is low tier anyway. All right, you need to get up here as quickly as possible. So that's the quickest way. Do it. I'll get on it. It is time. Mm. Grimnir's axe 
thirsts. Retake the realms. Now they'll see. <laughs> Most of what we're going up against here is just going to be trash. But we need time to replenish. Uh, okay, I'll just stay exactly where I am in encamp stance here. They should be... Hang on. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to reach Fallen King Mountain next turn, but I don't think I should. I'm going to need to wait for these reinforcements. I think I'm going to need to recruit some more trash. We just need frontline. Yeah, the more frontline units we got, the better, because we do have the Rune of Spite. Okay, and I'm not exactly rolling around in cash. Considering getting this, because public order is deteriorating a little bit. Then it would also be a good idea to save up money, because that's going to cost a fair bit of cash soon. Okay. At least this guy has got the Rune of Wrath of Nuin now, so that's good. Alright. Yeah, that way, if they come over here and attack us, I'm pretty sure I can back off. How does armor work in terms of various attacks? Like fire, magic, physical attacks? Armor doesn't take the element of an attack into consideration. Every single attack in the game, that's either like a... Oh, did Ungrim just do that? Oh, okay. Um, okay, well, that's good. Maybe I'll back off then and go to Tretch. Um, every single attack in the game has armor-piercing damage and non-armor-piercing damage. Armor only affects non-armor-piercing damage. It doesn't matter what element. If it can be magical, fire, physical, missile. It doesn't matter. I am Iron Fist. Some call me a king. Okay. I thought that Ungram was going to take a little bit longer to get here. There's nothing wrong with this whatsoever. Although if I capture this and sell it to him, that could be good. But since his strength ranking is so high and he's not at war with Azag, I'm going to assume that he doesn't actually need my assistance here. So I'm actually going to jump back here. <laughs> I'm going to jump back. And we're going to go to war with Tretch. We're going to try to get the jump on him. Because Tretch is definitely going to declare war on us. There's no doubt about that. So let's... Let's... Try to get ready for that. Alright, we can get further in Force March. Alright, let's do that. Okay. Because, yeah, I don't think these guys are going to declare war on me now. Okay, he should... Give us a treaty soon. Alright, over here. Let's upgrade Mount Gunbad because we need the money. But how are we going over here? Hmm. Two turns. Okay, and how was Tretch coming along? Most of Tretch's army should just be trash. Oh my god. Man, that's some serious bounce of power there. Just play the same campaign, and Kedrin does not capture Grand Peak that easily. Okay, that's fine. I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. So, low value in capturing Grand Peak now. So, I, I gotta deal with Tretch. <laughs> I can't do everything. You just don't have the resources to do that. This is just no longer that much of a threat. Alright, let's grab that. That'd be good. And... Alright, we're good then. Let's move on. It's also quite possible that he will actually capture it quite easily. His bounce of power is way higher than theirs. It doesn't matter if he takes a little while to do it, as long as he does it without any assistance. Should Engineer get a gyrocopter mount? Um, I think that'd be good. I think that makes a lot of sense. Do you think a major accuracy buff on all ranged units and unit count increase on artillery would work to fix dwarf's viability on short term? I don't think that that's needed. I think they're perfectly fine. 
That that'll cause massive power creep. No, we don't need that. Okay. Now is the best time to go after him while he's fighting someone else. Okay. Seems like these guys are not doing too bad either. That's good. If I go down to Black Crag, it's very useful settlement for sure, but... These guys, I think they're at war with... Let me have a look. Yeah, they're at war with the scabby eye. That's fine, just let them, let them be. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Mount Silverspear. Okay. We need to go down very carefully because Tretch has obviously very high ambush success chance. Um, going down there in underway stance should be okay. And then this one here, going in camp stance. On my way. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> Didn't realize it was in that stance. Um, oh well. Dumb! Yeah, we got enough units. It's fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna need money next turn to upgrade Karaza Karak. What? I... How's this coming along? Good, they got smashed and he's doing fine. Okay, that's that's good stuff there. The, that's not good. Yeah, it shouldn't matter in the long run because I'll just jump from here down here. Thorgrim will be able to launch the attack, so it's it doesn't make any difference in the long run. Being in encamp stance here or there, it doesn't. It's not gonna matter. Sometimes you can make a mistake and it mean absolutely nothing. The only way it could possibly mean something is if Tretch Craven Tail attacks me right now. Do not sully my presence. <laughs> Nah, he's running away. <laughs> I was worried there for a second. <laughs> it's alright. I kind of wish he left an army in here. So that we could smash it. That's fine. Good. As long as he can make the attack there, that's fine. Um, if this one jumps down and gets caught in the underway, that's obviously going to hurt. Uh, let's have a look at Tretch's strength ranking compared to us. It's pretty severe. We just have to watch out for ambushes. Um, how do you go with Force Marching? Not very well. Alright. Well, I want you to go down there. Alright, well, we see what's there. It's a lot. Okay, hang on a second. Okay, um, this is a little bit of a situation. There's lots of force in here. Most of it's trash. I declare war on them. There's a lot that can go wrong here. 
a lot that can go wrong. Leaving an army outside the settlement can be really bad for us. So what I want to do is have Thorgrim capture the settlement and then jump this guy down in the underway, transfer as many units as possible to make this a full stack, and then get him out of there. Just disband whatever's left. If I jump down the underway right here, I shouldn't get intercepted. Destroy them. Time for a slayer? Uh, maybe, actually. Maybe. Auto resolve or manual? Uh, auto should be fine. Yeah, that's fine. Don't forget small stack went south too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Can I help you? Okay, now... And Thorgrim just stand here for a moment. You jump into the settlement. Good. I was worried I was going to get intercepted. Okay. Then we transfer all the good units into Thorgrim's army. 17. Yeah. Okay, we can make some more transfers. That's fine. Merge. Where we can. Because I expect to get attacked over the end turn. The garrison in here allows us to not control large armies. Now, the AI are cowards. Really big, stupid, fucking cowards. So, as long as... Like, Thorgrim's army is stronger than any of the armies that's coming at us. I'm going to need somebody up here. Grimnir. Or, no, get another rune lord. Yeah, you'll do. To start recruiting more trash. Okay. Send me to vengeance. Got any equipment I can put on him? It's not gonna do much. Okay. The High King acts. Okay. Mostly melee infantry, but Thorgrim does have a point put into them. The quality of our units is better than theirs, plus they might not even do it. Okay. Craft some rooms. Uh, I'll have a look. I don't think there's anything that's going to make any difference here, but let's have a look. Let's just see what we can get. Um, firstly, having a look at his weapons. He's used up his fences slot. Sorry, weapon slot. I'll have a look at character runes first. That could be good. Hmm, it's alright. <laughs> we can get another Master Rune of Spite. It doesn't stack, so I don't think I'll do that. 25 extra melee attack. That'll be good for taking out heroes. What do I need for... Hang on. What do I need for the... Um, I don't think I'm going to get it, but let me just check. Regen. Where is it? Um, I just can't remember where it is. I don't think it's armor. Old Guard Tankard. Requires wine. Only enabled when out of melee. Enchanted item. Where is it? Need 200. I don't have access to pottery. Let's see if I could get pottery. Probably not. Carrot Kedrin. Yeah, give me that trade agreement. Oh, yeah. You, I'll offer to go to war with the Warherd of the One Eye and get some cash out of you for that. On it. Yes. One rack. And that. Yeah, I don't have enough for the enchanted items. It's fine. Grimnir's axe first. Hmm. 
I'm pretty sure I can put this on Thorgrim. So that'll give him some ward save. Send me to vengeance. And then I want to give him that melee attack one. So that if he comes into contact with any of their heroes, he smashes them. Cool. That's got him really high melee attack. Then... Rune of the Adamant. Give him as much melee defense as possible so he holds out as long as possible. And that gives me one Oath God left. <laughs> let's, let's hope this made a difference. Okay, all the character rune slots used up. Okay. And now we see what the Skaven are going to do, because I think they're going to hit us pretty hard, or they're going to just totally run away. We'll see. We'll see. Alright, I didn't end up having enough money to build this this turn, because we spent it on other things. What do you want? The High King acts. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, it says non-character. Don't forget the game lies to you. Okay, no, he's coming in. He wants to send in everything he's got. Oh, he didn't launch the attack. That means I get to be the attacker. There's no way that other guy's going to be able to assist, though. We definitely need to launch the attack. Waiting isn't going to help. This guy's not going to be able to assist. And just wearing yourself out over time is not good. I was hoping that Tretch wouldn't be the one to come in first, but he is. At least he doesn't have regen yet. I wish I had a potion it. <sighs> what? <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, you can put that on him. Oh my god, dwarves are so good in order resolve. Holy shit. Losing my Slayers is not that big of a deal. For wiping out everything that they have. Oh my god, the Dwarves are so strong in order resolve. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, that hurt. But I didn't really lose anything that bad. And I got all the Oath Gold back. <laughs> Well, whatever. Why why risk it? You just lost everything, I think. He didn't, actually. He still got more force. Well, obviously Thorgrim's not in great shape after that. Good thing I did get those slayers. Got some more slayers in reserve there. Uh, we lost one of our long... I think it was a dwarf warrior. I could start making my way to Crookback Mountain, but there's probably an army waiting for us there. And some time in recovery may not be the worst thing ever after that. Leadership when fighting against Skaven. Eh, leadership is not really an issue for dwarves. Let's get um, more hit points for uh, Thorgrim, make him as much of a one-man doomstack as possible. Missile strength, actually Sapper might be... Yeah, getting the Pounders would be good. 
Okay. Good. And that gave us the money that we need. Hang on, let me just see. I think our lord over here, Grimnir, no, no, Grogni, this one here. If I recruit him, we can see that this costs 4,500. But if I recruit him just for now, it then costs... Oh, please don't tell me it's local region. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> fucking idiots. I recruit... I built in the wrong fucking region. I thought it was local province. Man, I don't know my dwarves very well. Alright, whatever. I could load, but, you know, whatever. It's cheese. It's cheese. It would have saved us, like, 500 or something. 600, 600, 750 or something. Whatever. I just want to show you. <laughs> I'm in the wrong fucking region. Alright. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, that shouldn't matter. Alright, at least we got that being built. And we got good money coming in. The High King acts. Definitely want some time to replenish after that. But then again, the Skaven will recover really quickly. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. Alright, I, I need to get to Crookback Mountain. So if I stand here and in camp stands... Because sure that's where they're going to recruit their best units. You just jump in the underway down to here. Oh, piss. Um, hang on, let me just see if you can get here if I tag you out for this dude here. With that tiny little bit of extra... Oh, piss. Doesn't make it. Let's be careful around Skaven. Good. Grimnir's axe thirsts. Hmm. Master of Runecraft. Alright, well. Out of money again. Oh, yeah, what was that about? Ah! Oh, um. Ungrub takes forever to take out Grum Peak Legends! <laughs> Look, it's really hard to predict this kind of shit. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. My kin, the Anna. Onward. All right, military alliance with Zafbar would probably be a mistake. It's just going to draw me into problem there. I think I can confederate them. The moment I confederate them, though. We will get immediately attacked by Sylvania, and I won't be able to handle it. Uh, Luca Wa did a ten dollar super chat. Got to love a Darwin live stream. That's cool. I'm glad you like it. Thanks for the super chat. Appreciate it. All right. All right. All right. Oh, you know what I will do? I will recruit another lord here. No, I won't. I'm out of lords. <laughs> okay. Send me to vengeance. Yeah, because I don't know what's sitting in here. All right, let's move on. You could confed. Yeah, what's the point, though? If I confederate Zafbar, I will get immediately declared war on by Sylvania, and I will just lose those territories. And then I'll just have um, penalties from the confederation. It'll be completely worthless. Sell their provinces. Hmm. I could do that, couldn't I? I always forget to do that. All right, I'll see if I'll see if my economy can handle the public order penalty. But you're not wrong there. I could sell those provinces to um, to Karat Kedrin. And what can the Dowie do for you on this fine day? Oh, I didn't check public order. Dumbass. Okay, um, it's fine. Alright, well, thanks for the free lord, I guess. You got any items on you? No. Okay, get rid of this. How's this settlement looking? Alright, Ungrim should buy that for a good amount. I'll have your words before you take my ale.
All right, getting a military alliance, I think, with him. And getting five grand. I think that's a good call. Yeah, that was a good idea, guys. Good, good thinking. All right. Good, and I can give him Karag Dramar as well. Because I'm not going to be able to hold it. And ask him to go to war with Clan Rictus. Which he will. Cool. I confederate, and then basically what I did was force a confederation for um, for Ungram there. Hmm. Wolf Paul did a 20 euro super chat. Uh, cheese hammer cheese. Alright, thanks dude. Appreciate that. Uh... What do you want m most? Sorry, what do you most want to see in the upcoming Zinch versus Cathay versus Kislev DSC? I, I don't have a, like a wish list. I'm not even really thinking about it. Just en I'm happy with anything, but I, I don't know what I'm looking for. That minus forty relations with dwarves is not going to matter because we just got like a hundred or uh, eighty because we sold the settlements to him. Uh, it'll matter with them though. Who cares? They're going to get wiped out eventually, and then. Public order here is now a little bit more of a concern because of Confederation. It says it's going to last eight turns, so we actually should be fine. And I did say that I wanted to build a public order building, which will give us Gotrix and Felix to show up. And let's upgrade the Pillars of Grug... No, let's do this one here so I can get a, a growth building. Money seems to be okay at the moment. All right, how is it going with Rictus? Alright, he hasn't done anything. So I'm assuming then that the forces at Crookback Mountain are not really that much of a concern. Whatever they are. Problem is I can't see. Just gonna have to guess. That's <laughs> a lot. That's a lot of rats. Um, uh, that's a lot of rats. Alright, any chance that you could possibly arrive? No, not this turn. Oh my god, am I actually going to do something that I say never to do? And not launch the attack, but just keep it under siege? Thing is, I didn't know what they had. See, if we wait one turn, this guy can come and reinforce with, you know, not much, but better than nothing. And I could also bring in another Lord. Yeah. They might sally out, but that'll actually make the battle easier for us. Okay, so we got that. Now let's get some extra control. Public order is a bit of an issue. Siege a turn. Yeah, I don't normally like to siege, but oh, slayers. Um, actually, that's not a bad idea. If I get these three units, I could probably launch the attack now. And I don't like waiting around. Make the sneak item and sneak cap it. That is an unreliable way to win battles with the dwarves now. If, if this was launch Immortal Empires, I'd totally do that. But they, they react to that stuff pretty quickly now. Alright. That still didn't change the order resolve. But... Okay, let me have a look at this map. I mean, I know what map it is. What level is this settlement? Wipe out the trespasses. Bring them. Shouldn't be high-powered towers coming at us. Because we've got the Rune of Spite, so I'm just thinking about sending Thorgrim in there to just wear them down like crazy. He'd be able to kill so many of them on his own. I agree. 
Oh, I'd kill for some pottery. <laughs> um, do we have any other equipment that we've? No, I got I got this. It's not gonna do anything. There you go. All right, I'm gonna do it. How is he going to siege without Artie to break the towers? Um, you don't need to worry too much about that in Warhammer 3. Can you make any runes? I've already made a bunch of runes. He's not going to get any better. Right now the meta for sieges is two horse heroes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and dwarves don't have that. Yeah, if I have gold, use it. On what? He's already he's already been kitted out. It's not going to make any difference. There's nothing that I would be able to get that would make any difference here. Okay, they're going to use a few minutes below. I'm going to charge in the front here. Good, it's just low tier towers. And we're going to use the Rune of Spite to just cr do crazy damage. I hope. Mm, I'm actually going to go up this way because... The, oh god. <laughs> Shit. What's this? Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Gotta watch out with night runners. Because Thorgrim's quite large, he is quite vulnerable to getting shot. It's good thing we've got this Master Rune of Grugni in here. He's got 35%, no, 45% missile resistance. Oh, this is going to be a friggin' problem. Oh, what are you doing over there? No, 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 no. Oh, menace below are a pain. Look at them bloody kill slayers. Okay. There is no way that this guy here is going to be able to duel Thorgrim. Not even close. And he's exhausted, so that's that's going to really come in handy. Could have been a consideration to bring the hammerers over here for that physical resistance as well. Problem is, they'll just get targeted by missiles. Alright, I don't think there's going to be that many menace, uh, menace Belows. This time, when a blob does form, we'll bring this one in and drop the bombs down on him. Jonathan Moore did a five dollar super chat. These are the battles I watch Legend for. Good luck. All right, thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Um, we're just playing our music, so that that gives us a little bit of hope. All right, I want this guy here shooting at this. That's about as good of a blob as we can expect. What are they doing? Oh, a menace below here is bloody useless. So this guy's ammo needs to be specifically on that one. It's the only unit that I'm slightly worried about. Thorgrim is barely taking any damage. All that extra melee defense is really coming in handy here now. There we go. Shoot him. It. 
I just wish that Thorgrim had some regen. That would make this whole battle so much easier. Good, that's it. So Thorgrim's already done 5,000 damage. So Rune of Spite's good, but it does take a little while to do the damage. Oh, get out, get out, get out. That didn't seem to slow him down very much. Okay, that's it. Okay, good. Playing a game of rat and mouse. Rat. Okay. Justin B became a member for 24 months. I love your videos. Thanks for the great content. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you for the super chat. Nice. If we keep this up, we'll kill him without Thorgrim having to go into melee. So this here reduces their melee defense, but I'd much rather save it for the duel. If that does actually end up going down. So far, so good, though. Thorgrim has now done 10,000 damage, and he's lost about 500 health in total while fighting all these rats. I just wish he was smaller. Let's lose some weight. Alright, I'm bringing this one in. I'm gonna bomb. He's lost about 800 health in total now. And he has done 12,000 damage. Do we attack on the army? They're not doing anything. The menace blows are over. I'll pop that down on him. Extra physical resistance would be good. He's not going anywhere now. Shoot him. Yeah, good. No shoddy contraptions here. Come on, come on, you gotta move quicker. He's gonna hit you. Oh, I think he's gonna hit you. Okay, he backed off. Alright, Thorgrim has now lost over a thousand health. So he can't keep this up forever. This guy's doing a good job so far. there for a second. Jaro Bum is doing really well here. Right. That'll do for a bit. Go go back off. Alright, Thorgrim's approaching 25,000 in damage. You know, a lot of forces here. Yeah, can't dismount Thorgrim. I definitely would have done that if that was possible. This guy here's trying to dodge our ammo. This guy seems to just be running back and forth, and that's fine. Come on, you need to move quicker. Thorgrim's 
Thorgrim's nearly lost 2,000 health since he started fighting. That guy's on us now. I need to get over there and help him out. Thorgrim, get back over here. You're gonna need to actually duel him. You move. He was doing a good job up until now, but now he's actually catching us. We gotta stop this. You just delay him a little bit. Talk him, get over here. For the carriage and core. Kill Baron Hall. He's almost broken. Thorgum's now done thirty three thousand damage. Move, 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 move. Oh good, we broke him. Alright, Thorgrim, you can keep fighting then. Alright, Thorgrim's still okay. Alright, we got him. He's dead. Alright, I got one more bomb with you. Come on. Make sure you hit him. Nice. Good. That's going to make their fighters or their trash fight even worse. One last bomb here. Alright, Thorgrim started the battle with about 7,200 health, so he's a bit, almost at halfway health from what he started. And he has killed 400 of them. Now, I know I haven't really been advancing. I didn't expect him to be able to win the entire battle by himself, but I, what I was hoping for was that he would just do tons of damage, which he absolutely has done. That way, the rest of these guys here should be able to finish the job. Not too worried about the enemy towers. Connor Van Devender did a two dollars should Hey Legend, any tips on a Ryan Isha cloak battle? Oh man, I haven't fought that battle in ages, so I, I wouldn't know, sorry. Thanks for the super chat though. Oh shit, what are you doing in there? did 20,000 damage with those bombs. Bring the blasting charges mine where they're all blood. Yes, actually, that is a good idea. Let's do that. Hopefully they make it over here without getting blasted. But yeah, that would be a very good idea. And you know what, let's bring the quarrelers over as well. Thorgrim is now below half his starting health. Can stock ammo on the gyro bomb. Yeah, it won't replenish this. It'll just replenish his basic ammo. We're going to replenish ammo as best used on the Quarrelers. Or maybe even the Ekrand Miners, maybe. Oh, 
Okay, Thorgrim's nearly up to 50,000 damage. Oh god, what was that? Yeah, they still love the students over here. Oh, the glory of the dwarfs coming in there, slow. Connor Van Devender did a $50 super chat. Been binging all your stream VODs, great stuff. Oh, thanks dude, that's really generous of you. I'm glad you've been enjoying the VODs. Sorry I couldn't have been more help with the previous super chat, um, with the previous question. I, just, I haven't fought that battle in ages, and I don't even remember what it is. And I don't believe there's any sort of trick to it. Just bring a strong army and beat it. But yeah, it's very generous of you. Thank you. Alright. And... God, the battle's going to be over before they get here. <laughs> Melee attack debuff on Thorgrim. It reduces their melee defense. That's not going to keep him in here for longer. It's not going to do anything. His melee attack is so high right now that this will do nothing. It'll just be a wasted click. Like, I'll do it. Whatever. It's just, it won't do anything. We need to be reducing their melee attack, not their melee defense. Come on, guys, you can do it. Get over here. Alright, Thorgrim's still got a bit of oomph left. I think we got this. Same thing with this one here, it just reduces their melee defense. Which, it's already basically zero right now. Here we go. Let's see how this does. Man, I'd kill for an Iron Drake right here. What's the potion do? Makes him unbreakable and gives him charge bonus. Totally useless in this situation. It's okay. The guys are here. Connor van der Vender did another 10 little super chat. Yeah, it's the one where the entire army turns into Spawn of Slanesh. Spawn of Slanesh? Oh, right. They used to be Spawn of Chaos. Uh, when you defeat the initial Wood Elf army. No worries for not remembering. You fight a lot of campaigns. I don't think I've actually fought that battle in Total Warhammer 3. But yeah, thanks for the super chat. Okay. Yeah, that was a good idea bringing these guys in. For sure, we would still win without it, but... That's some, that's some really nice damage. I can't wait till I get myself some pottery. So draw them in more. And back off a bit. Running low on ammo, no problem. <laughs> I reckon one volley from them is worth more than several volleys from them. FF Dragon Knight did a five dollar super chat. Cheers to the most dedicated content creator on the platform. Hope you're staying safe and healthy. All right, thanks, dude. I greatly appreciate that. I'm doing fine. So many of them, though. Okay, next batch are coming in. Alright, these two here, I would like them to move up a little bit and try to shoot at the ranged units that aren't going to be able to be reached by these guys. Oh, 
It's doing pretty well for us there. Hey, what are you doing? Back off. Actually, stay. Because while they're shooting, they're not going to try to dodge their ammo. <laughs> Thorcum's pretty worn out now, though. Good. Oh yeah, this is doing really well. We're getting a lot more value out of him. Oh, even if I put them on guard mode, it's not going to stop them from charging in, is it? Thorgrim's done 67,000 in damage. Thorgrim can't handle much more. Oh boy, this guy here is providing us so much value in this battle because of all that extra ammo. Look at this, 40,000 just with those those shots. But, there's just so much trash in this army. That's one of the big problems with it. Thorgrim's getting pretty low. Yeah, but he's he'll be fine, he'll be fine. We can probably pull him out at about 400 health, he'll be okay. <laughs> really, uh, he's, yeah, he's getting low. It's fine. Thorgum's done 72,000 in damage. That's great. Let's move these guys back a little bit. Try to get a better angle. Because they're not shooting at a great angle there. Alright, this is our last one. Oh, I've still got these ones here. <laughs> He's down to his last 700 health. Come on. This is our last shot of this, with this unit anyway. 
Oh yeah, on the night runners, that'd be great. Come on, hit it. I think they were just passing by. Stop, stop. Yeah, we didn't actually do that much damage to them, they were just passing by. Victory's in our grasp, that's great. Alright, get him out. If the Night Runners decide they want to shoot at Thorgrim, that could be the end of him, if we're not careful there. Now, I can still use this guy a little bit to tank, I suppose. Thorgrim, just go stand over there and chill. You've done well enough. Alright, let's get ready for these guys to have their turn. They're only going to get one volley in. Uh, once we start running a little bit lower on ammo, um, all that attack, what else can we do? But Thorgrim nearly got a thousand kills. Not too bad for level 10 Lord. They seem to be less concerned about charging into him. Okay. They're not really getting good shots in on that one. Let's go for this one here. Alright, here we go. Now they're fully done. You're up. Use the potion so it doesn't rout. He's not going to rout, and it only lasts for 30 seconds. What, what for? You actually lose balance of power by using the item, especially when it doesn't do anything. Sometimes you're better off having those items and not using them. It just preserves a little bit of balance of power. Alright, you're done. Your turn next. How are they going? Climb the wall with archers. If I climb the wall with the archers, they're going to be there waiting for us. Come on. Have you never played this game before? As soon as any of my units will climb up on the walls, they'll put units up there, especially archers, to intercept them. They do that 100% of the time. <laughs> That's all of our missile units used up, but we've completely freed this position over here. Time to charge. With everything that we got, charge in. Should just need a little bit more damage inflicted on them and inflict the army losses. Most of their forces are gone now. I need to pull this guy out. I definitely don't want to put Thorgrim back in any danger. He's, he's done for this battle. You can have a little bit more. Okay, pull him out. Oh, shit, 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 shit. <laughs> I thought I could get it in there for a few more seconds. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Nope. Too vulnerable to pebbles. Get him out. Engines filled with pebbles. Come on, we got you. Alright, decent damage on the Corollas as well. Alright, well, you're technically a melee unit now, so go on. And this is where using the Oath of Vengeance would help because these guys have low melee attack. Alright, 
I'm gonna climb up over the walls because even though it'll make our units tired, if we bunch up around the gate, they're just gonna it's just gonna take forever. And if we end up losing the slayers, oh well, that's what they're there for. Maybe have these guys here, these ones, just not in attack just yet. Uh, Powerpuff Soldier to Fatal Super Jet. I know you are hyped for Total War but I hope its release won't lead you to a ban of Warhammer. I understand the appeal of Chariot Doomstacks. <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't think you have to worry, but thank you for the Super Chat. Yeah, the plan was definitely to um, abandon Warhammer in its entirety so that I could play Troy 2. I mean Pharaoh. Anyway, I don't really want to get into a long conversation about Pharaoh today. So these guys here are distracting them, so that these guys are getting a chance to get up on the walls. So these guys here are good against gates. These slayers could come over here and hit them in the rear. I might actually be able to save these guys. Guard mode. Uh, Rex Teresi did a 15 MYR super chat. I really hope Pharaoh's siege battles are enjoyable. Troy's were so unbearable. What was the last sort of war game you find siege's battles enjoyable? Probably Attila or maybe Thrones of Britannia. Thanks, super chat. Appreciate it. Alright, pull this one out. Before it gets wiped. Actually, no, it's a regiment of renown. If it gets wiped out, who cares? I know it did a great job in this battle, but whatever. those army losses coming. That would be good. Ah, oh, damn it, this guy's out of ammo. I need this guy to do a little bit more. Come on, Slayers, hold that just a little bit longer there. If you get trade with Border Princes, does that give you pottery? Only if they have made their pottery resource. Sometimes they don't do it. <laughs> if they don't, yeah, obviously sucks. Is that army losses? Yes, we did. Alright, good. That is hopefully the effective end of Clan Richters. Yeah, fair enough.
God damn, they made me work for that one. Well, we didn't take that many casualties. We, we took a lot of damage on Thorgrim. He was near full health, but given what he did, I think that was worth it. What are your thoughts on ways to bring the Dawi up to par with, in Warhammer 3? Um, they should get Goat Riders. I don't know. It's not my job to fix this game. I think they're fine as they are. Any, anything that they are given will benefit them. Something to improve their replenishment rate would probably help the most. And maybe their recruitment rate. Uh, Alright, occupy that, excuse me. Alright, he is out of this, that's good. He's finished. Good, 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 good. Alright, that is looking real good. And we can start get seeing some more blasting charges again. That would be good. Especially against this key. Oh, I guess we don't need this anymore. Yeah, I guess I didn't need you after all. How about that? Oh, right, the movement bug. I was like, hang on, I already moved this turn. <laughs> right, yeah, the movement bug triggered. Um, if you are if you recruit and then fight a battle manually, you'll come back and the game will remember that... Sorry, won't remember that you've used up any of your movement. So I won't move again, because that's, that's... That's a cheese! It's not allowed. It's not allowed. <laughs> that's the thing is, that, that exploit is so absurd that you can actually do it by accident. Which is how I found it. You do find it by accident really easily. All right, we're going to want more increased mobility, I think. And Thorgrim with two ranks up. Uh, what do we need for you? Ancient bloodline. Mm, all of this stuff will be good later down the track. I can't even recruit these heroes yet. Just do it. What do you want? Have you seen the bug where force marching removes your movements if you're garrisoned? Uh, no, I don't think I've seen that one. Yeah, there's this game's very buggy. Very buggy. Yeah, the Brightstone Mine, that'd be good. Gotta get to tier 3. I think this is a pretty good job for turn 11. Deliver your yeah, see, they don't have pottery. They didn't build it. So, even if I got a trade agreement with Border Princes, I wouldn't get access to their pottery. Oh, I don't need military access if it's gonna cost me money from the deal. Agreed. This one rug. Mm. The Empire. I will hear what you have to say. Of course. What? Come then, messenger. Spit out your horse bound. Yes. An ecumenical matter did a twenty dollars which said, Hey legend, are there blue line skills for Cathayan or Chaos War caravan laws that you generally go for first? Um yeah, anything that increases their money and supply that they can bring first. That's usually what I go for first. And then I try to reduce their ambush, um, increase their ambush defense chance because that can ruin your caravan. Those are the first things I usually go for. Check Averland. Approach and make your they do have pottery. But I make no promises to my ascent. Yep, they do have pottery, but I wouldn't have been able to trade with them anyway. We need to do something about this. Yeah, they've got pottery. So, all right. 
Well met, dwarves. Hmm. What are your demands? I don't know. Uh, I can't really do much with any of this at the moment. Alright, I got a little bit of cash. Yep, that's all fine there. Uh, one more turn until we hit tier 3, so let's do that. And I think I need more money. Yeah, keep that cash coming. Do we have any um, Grogny dudes available? We got Grimnir. No, no more Grogny dudes. Okay, I think that's me done for the turn. Double check this. Yes, on. All right, cool. Craven tail. Is the archer AI worse in Warhammer Three? I feel like they perform worse than two. Yeah, I feel like they're really bad with archers in Warhammer Three. Really, really bad with them. Oh, fuck! Oh, hang on, that could keep them distracted. Thunder guts of these guys down here. Now, defeating Drazoath the Ashen could be very useful for us. It does give us extra income. Uh, from our settlement buildings, which you have a look. We go 80, 120, up to 240. So getting 10% extra would certainly help, but the Lord has to be active in order for that to occur. So it's better for the Lords that don't incur supply lines. All right, let's move on. This is no dwarf before me. Here we go, it's the Claire's War. Yeah, okay. They were willing to join against Rictus? Were they? I thought it was minus five. I'll ask them next turn. Did they add Chaos Dwarf debuffs to any Dwarf items? Dwarfs, I think, remain mostly, mostly unchanged. They barely even recognize that the Chaos Dwarfs are there. New Dwarf Diplomacy lines. How was it? I didn't notice. Okay, Gotrick and Felix have shown up probably over here, yep. But we don't need to recruit them right this very second. They're just there in an emergency. So you're saying that Averland was actually willing to join war against Rictus? Oh, you're right. What about Legion of Asgore? No. Okay. Well, that helps a little bit. So yeah, good catch, guys. Fuse tier 1 crafted items for Potion of Healing. Ah, oh, no, that's... Super tedious. We don't need to do that. Alright. Well, I am a little bit concerned that Drazoath the Ashen is just like waiting over here for us to... Hang on, let's have a look. Yeah. He's got four settlements. Okay, he must have an army sit uh, over here because he didn't have that last turn. So I imagine that's where Drazoath the Ashen is. If we have a look at Darkhold, we can see the military presence of eight. So multiply that by three, because I've got three settlements. I've got 24 units stationed over here. That means they could have a, a full stack there, but they do have forces elsewhere. And even if so, you can't get from Darkhold to Mount Greyhag in one turn. So if I launch the attack here, I should be okay. I think just auto that. I don't think I would have lost that many men. <laughs> okay. Then, just occupy it. Or should I raise it? No, occupy it. Okay, Rictus is down, 
But now we have a very dangerous... It's, it's probably mostly just laborers. They really heavily spam them. Yeah, okay. Keep them coming there. I really don't think they're going to launch an attack on us this turn. See, even I can't reach them, and I've got maxed out movement with Tom Phillips then. So we've got a little bit of time. A little bit. We may have to back off from here. I'll see if these guys here are willing to buy it. Hmm. Yeah, they kind of want that sentiment. Don't forget students. I've already, I've got two students, but I've only got one hero, so I can't do anything with them. It doesn't matter. Greetings. Okay. So he's got a mission for us. All right, this will give us an idea where all their forces are. So, Pitzral Asgal is there. Sithras the Father is over here. Drazoath the Ashen is here. So, I don't know who's down here. But let's keep an eye on Drazowath the Ashen. That makes sense. He'll have the best army. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that this region here borders this settlement, so they can pop their Dreadquake Mortar down on us, which would not be good. So let's try to avoid that. If it means abandoning Mount Greyhag, that's fine. Uh, Garrett Ratchford did a photo of Super Shed. After playing Dwarfs for a while, it seems like they really struggle with counter-battery. Dwarf artillery tears up Dwarf War Machines. Um... Yeah, I think it's a skill issue, but okay. Thanks, Super Chat. I, I didn't find that, that the dwarves, sorry, that the Chaos Dwarves struggle in any way against dwarves. Okay. Alright, let's upgrade Crookback Mountain. We still got good money, I just can't recruit that quickly. I thought that was supposed to be done last turn. Oh well. Make sure we save up that 4,500. Yeah, I want to upgrade this, but I know I'm not going to have enough money next turn for this stuff now. I think our home province is more important. Alright, well... Yeah, there's no way that Drazowath is going to arrive here. Unless there's another army, like, standing right here and it besieges and then just spam reinforces. Alright. Because, yeah, we should be able to win as long as we're fighting each army one at a time. If we have to fight their entire army all at once, that's going to be a big problem. Problem here is I just can't see what's going on. Alright. Can you get a Thane for Thorgrim? Not yet. Does the Dwarf Construction Cost Reduction Spam still work in Wormy 3? Yep. Honestly, he's not roasting people. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to roast. Roast. I just I've played a fair bit of Chaos Dwarfs, and I didn't encounter any issue fighting dwarfs at all. So I don't know. I just disagreed with what he said. Sorry. <laughs> For some reason, disagreeing with people is worthy of a huge play. Whoa! Whoa! Oh my god! I can't believe you disagreed with someone on the internet. I don't even think the guy who originally said it would have cared either. Um, the Legend Gibbo became member for 17 months. Aye, good to see you, Legend. Good to see you too. Thank you for the super chat. Ah, membership. Okay. 
So, they they don't appear to have moved at all. But that other army from over here might be moving around this way, I just don't know. We can lure them into a trap. I haven't suffered a defeat yet in the campaign, but what we could do is lure them to capture Mount Greyhag. And then if they put multiple armies in there, then you besiege with one army and attack with the other, obviously. Um, that's very effective, because we could also really use some more time to recover. Alright, we're starting to catch up a little bit, but I think we're still very much behind. Plus, as we go into here, Chaos Corruption. We've stripped away all the Skaven Corruption from here. It's good it's all green territory. I wonder if we get a nice item, um, landmark at Zarnagrid. I would assume so. He's just gonna starve that out, is he? If I cancel a trade agreement, I could get I, I could get a trade agreement with Averland, but I also don't have enough Oath Gold yet, so. Let's just figure something out first. If we can just get some more trade resources of my own. It is time. Hmm. How's our public order? I haven't really been paying much attention to it. That one is not great. It's fine. We're fine over here as well, thanks to building this. Yeah, that made a big difference. Um, the grudge stuff is fine. I think we're in here. Control 2. Yeah, we're in this one here. Hmm. I think we need to set up a trap. Alright, I'm going to put Thorgrim Grudgebearer out here. And I'm going to send this guy over to Shmau. Ah, oh, fuck. Mavengrim Angrimas Multash. Who knows how many fucking armies he's got? Okay, I got an idea. I got an idea. I'm gonna stand right here in ambush stance. My plan here is not to necessarily ambush Drazowath, right? But for Drazowath to actually launch the attack on this guy here, and for us to just reinforce that position. Yeah, he does have the Dreadquake battery. Reforge other item to get more oath gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't have a lot. I don't have a lot. The problem here is that he just might go straight for Mount Greyhag, and then he might actually cause enough chaos corruption here to give us attrition. Plus, if we're in the region here. Um, Hassan Nasrallah, official vivo, did ten dollars chat. Is there a law reason why the Chorps don't build Dreadquake more to Doomstacks and conquer the whole world? Are they stupid? Um, law stuff is just Games Workshop. Logic doesn't really apply to any of that kind of stuff. I would, I would imagine that you could argue that they just can't make enough of them. Take that up with Law Master of Sotek, not with me. But thanks for the super chat. <laughs> like, I can't answer that kind of shit. Alright, let me have a look over here. Alright, I'm going to try something else. Alright, this region here is Crookback Mountain. Right there. So, I'm standing here so that if Mount Greyhag falls, I can still get some replenishment. Now, this guy here, I want him to force march to here. Because I think that Drazowath can still reach us. But if he can reach us, anyone standing over here probably isn't. So I want him to possibly get ambushed from there. Now, if he occupies Mount Greyhag, um, that's fine as well. I'm also going to need another Lord.
Yeah, you'll do. And get some more of these. Um, Murray, Murray Hell did a 5-hour super chat. I bought the game yesterday sale. I can't wait to get home and play with the Empire IR Bretonia against Demons of Chaos. It's cool. Um, thanks for super chat. I hope you enjoy it. Speaking of which, guys, um, there is currently a sale going on at Games Planet for Warhammer stuff. I think it goes on for another couple of days. So if you're, if you're not, if you haven't got everything that you wanted from Total War Warhammer, um, you can go and have a look there. I think there's a sale going on. All right. So I want Drazoath by himself to attack this guy. I just don't know if... Yeah, it's hard to say if he's got enough movement. He should have a similar amount to us. Yeah, look. Look how far he can move in in camp stance. He is definitely going to be within range. All right, let's move a little bit further back, actually. Yeah, he's in fucking in camp stance and he can reach us. Let's keep moving back as far as possible. Okay. Now he has a choice. He can either capture Mount Greyhag or he can attack this guy here. So that's up to him which one he decides to go for. Yeah. Alright. Okay, let's check what's going on here. Okay, that's all fine. Uh, let's see here. Alright, let's move on. Do you have an outpost to boost your recruitment capacity a bit? No, I'm a little bit broke. When are you going to do the quest battles? Doing the quest battles right now would be the dumbest thing I could do. It would damage my armies right when I'm about to have some fights. Okay. So Drazoath the Ashen apparently doesn't have access to his Dreadquake Mortar. That's good. Uh, Dreadquake Battery. We can Auto Resolve win, but that's a terrible Auto Resolve win. He's on foot. We have an opportunity here to get his defeat trait twice. Most of his forces are just orc laborers, which are basically nothing. The only unit here that's of any real concern are these two. That's it. Alright, this shouldn't actually be a problem. Okay. Zombies crap. Well, it's only it's only early game. Alright. I just have to hope they don't rush at us too quickly, because it'll take us a minute 43 to get here. But I'm just glad he doesn't have the Dreadquake Mortar. Yeah, he's going to rush at us. Okay. I just want to say something as well. I've noticed a lot of this lately, that people are just generally way more irritable than they used to be. I can't fucking say anything without somebody basically chucking a wobbly. So if you're going to be like that, just fuck off, okay? I don't have time or any patience for that. All right? If you've got the sensitivity of a five-year-old girl, then you can go, okay? Because I'm not going to pander to you.
Not that five-year-old girls, of course, would be any more sensitive than five-year-old boys. <laughs> look at me, look at me double back in, on what I just said. Religion being sexist. All I was trying to say was that people are being overly sensitive these days. I can't say anything without somebody chucking the shits. And it's really frustrating. Like, seriously, fuck off. I'm not gonna pander to you. Oof. Yeah, I gotta keep that one out. Oh, what kind of spells we're looking at here? Just the direct damage spell, for the most part. It's not just a Total War community. Oh no, I know that. It's not just a Total War community. I'm just saying that I'm seeing it, and I'd like people to stop being so damn sensitive. I'm not- I have not said anything that is particularly upsetting today. So, if you're upset by anything that I've said today, you need to have a long, hard look at yourself, and grow some thicker skin. Because it's fucking pathetic. That's all I'm trying to say. Just, it's getting really ridiculous. Okay, we need to focus on the Kadai Fireborn. What's this? That's fine. Um, Malignar did a father super chat. There are definitely a lot of people who can't handle simple disagreement with other person these days. Great to see you stream, man. Love you. Alright, thanks dude. Appreciate that. Thanks super chat. Okay, I need these guys to shoot at the Kadai Fireborn. They're gonna be the biggest concern, I think. Uh, Perry Doris, Doris Stein, the Nintendo Super Chat. My uncle's name is Wobbly. How dare you chuck him? I'm a fan. <laughs> Thanks, Super Chat. Look, if it's an obvious statement like that, it's fine, obviously. It just seems like there's a lo lot of legitimate friggin' outrage over fucking nothing. Legend, what's your favorite color? Red. Ah, oh, I can't believe that! Ah, I'm out of here! That kind of, like, ridiculous level hair triggered bullshit that I see constantly. I can't believe he disagreed with me. Ugh. Fuck off. Oh, damn it. What the fuck was that? My Jaro Bomber. It just lost a whole heap of health. I was going to go bomb this over here. Damn it. This guy here is doing a number on us. Okay, we got blunderbusters shooting at Thorgrim. Obviously, we want to put a stop to that. I need to concentrate now, guys. Oh, yeah, you bring him over here. Bring Thorgrim. Him, bring Thorgrim back. Okay, you've got Rune of Wrath. No, you don't. It's a different guy. Got to concentrate on this battle. Okay, those blunderbusses are shooting at my hammerers, need to move back. Uh, Connor Van de Vender did a $5 super chat. Uh, could you imagine these people watching you six years ago? You've always been Legend of Total War and Verbiage. Yeah, I know, right? I know. If you had heard me f six years ago, god damn. But thanks for super chat. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Uh, okay, Thorgrim, go and fight. Okay, you should be fine with that. I need someone to stop these blunderbusses. They haven't done that much damage yet. I put these guys back because they're quite vulnerable now. Yeah, time for one of these. Can 
Elmerside became member for 23 months. F for Bomber. Forever remembered. Thanks for the stream legend. Alright, no worries, dude. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, membership. Okay, that's all looking pretty good there. This guy here needs to pull back. Uh, Thorgrim seems to be beating Drazoath up. That's good. Alright, let's restore some ammo. Man, F for my poor Jaro Bomber. Okay, I need to stop these Infernal Guard. They are actually doing a fair bit of damage. Okay, now we don't actually want Drazoath to get wounded in this fight because we want to beat him again with um, Thorgrim and get his defeat trait because it's really good. So let him go. Let him go. We've definitely won the battle. Escort him off the battlefield and be done with it. What am I saying? F. What? What's? What? What died? My gyro bomber. Yeah, I know about the gyro bomber. Okay. Wait, did I get him? Wait, what? Ah, oh, fuck! I got him. <laughs> Yeah, we kill. Okay, look, it's not the end of the world. He'll come back, but uh, okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's, fine. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really not that bad that we killed the general. I just wanted his defeat trait a second time. Ah, legend, you suck. You killed the legend, enemy lord. Ah, damn it. Yeah, this battle could have gone a bit better. This guy, on the other hand, kill him. guy out, it's badly damaged. Same with this one. Maxis, Maxius Light did a five pound super chat. All right, thanks, dude. With the face with tongue. All right, thanks, super chat. Appreciate it. Yeah, that battle could have gone better, but at least we won. Sucks to lose the Jaro Bomber, but it was kind of not really doing much in the past few battles. It's really good in the early stage of the the campaign, but it was getting shot a fair bit now. Then again, it was really important in that battle against the Skaven. Oh well. Shit, I, I could have sworn it had like a third of its health left. Somebody must have done a special shot on it. Alright, Thorgrim's actually faster than this guy, so it would be good if we could actually kill him. Uh, if you could catch up with him as well. How fast are you? Tom Phillips, and pop that down on him, that'd be even better. Slow him down a bit. If we can get him wounded, it'll slow him down even further. Uh, but now Thorgrim's in there, so it's gonna slow him down. I guess I'll just get him in the next fight. I don't have any units that can possibly run them down. Even the Slayers aren't going to be able to catch him. Get yeah, Blunderbuss? I'm not sure. It just, it just lost a ton of health almost straight away. It may have gotten shot by Blunderbusses or something. I'm, not, I'm just not sure. Uh, Bourbon Born did a twenty dollars super jet. Hey, dude, loving the shorties. All right, uh, have an awesome stream. I right, think dude, thanks for some chats. Like shorties, I don't do shorts, and it's like, oh, of course, the these guys, they're short. 
Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get at him. He didn't do that much damage. No. Okay. What happened to the gyrocopter? I'm not sure I blinked and it died. Jai runs in the Quarrel fight. The Quarrelers would not have done that much damage to them. That would not have been the Quarrelers. Uh, TFU Condor did a five pound super chat. What if I have sensitivity of a five year old panda? Um, it's fine. Thanks for super chat. Uh, Gwilherm Gwilherme Theodoro did a 10 R uh, super chat. And that's his first super chat. Thanks, dude. Uh, appreciate that. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. sometimes units die. It's war. I'll take that Oath God because that'll give me exactly the right amount needed to. Oh, God, you ran back a long distance. Alright, at least I'll be able to pursue them and finish them off. Of course, in that area, they've got the Dreadquake mortars, uh, bomb it, battery, whatever. Yeah, it's fine. I am the High King. I wonder if that was actually a bad call bringing Ungrim into this. Hmm. Because what was he going to do? Traverse over their territory to get to me? Uh, Shackleton, Mangrum, did a five dollar budget. In-game crisis right now are boring. What mechanics could make them more interactive on the players and to force more hard choices? Thanks for the dude. Appreciate that. Why is it my job to fucking fix this game? I don't understand. Do <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. War declarations are plenty. Um, look, I'm not a developer. I don't know what you can do to make it more fun. I just don't know. Oh, come on. Why is everyone declaring war on me now? Yeah, I just I just don't know. I don't know. But thanks for super chat. Okay, well we just ended up in a lot more wars there. Because you are smarter than me, lol. Uh, being smart, look, I'm not. I'm not going to make that claim. Okay, I'm pretty damn stupid in in many areas. Um, being look, being good at playing a game doesn't mean that you would be good at designing a game. So, do, do you know what the annoying thing is? People come to me and ask questions. Legend, how would you fix the game? And then I explain to them how I would fix the game. And then another person would say. All right, Legend, how dare you? You're not a developer. You, what makes you think that you ha have any say? People fucking ask me, you know? It's like, damned if I do, damned if I don't. This is the situation that I'm in constantly with these damn live streams. If I answer your question, people get upset with me. If I don't answer the question, people get upset with me. Stop getting so fucking upset. I'm so fucking annoyed. Now, it's Creative Assembly's job to fix the game. Let them figure it out, okay? I don't want to talk about how to fix this game anymore because nobody listens to me at all. You know, Creative Assembly don't listen whatsoever, so all of my opinions mean absolutely nothing. So, it just doesn't matter. Okay, so we should wipe this out just so that we can get rid of these two units here and this guy. We don't want him getting immortality. We're still pretty far out from being evenly matched with them. What do you want? Onward. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll we'll take with this. Actually, I might be able to get another mission from them. 
to find out where their other armies are. Alright, there is another army around here somewhere, but I'll take that one, because I can do that straight away. Uh, Spud Life 2010 did a $5 super chat. I forgot to add a message last time. I understand the anger with that stuff, but also thank you for all the help and tips. You're doing amazing work. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, look, it's only a small number of people that just decide that they just want to give me a hard time about every bloody little thing I say, and it's really frustrating because um, I'm torn between not saying, like, just not answering questions and just playing the game, which I know will upset people, and doing what I normally do, which also upsets people. I don't want to be upsetting anyone. So it's very frustrating having to read chat with like really bitter people whinging about nothing. It's just, it's really frustrating. And it's been constant for like two years straight where I can't do anything right by some people. So I would just, like if you're one of those people that I just piss you off no matter what I say, could you just do me a favor and fuck off and don't come back? Just unsubscribe and fuck off if, if you're one of those people. Because I don't like you and I don't want you here anymore. Make my job a lot easier if some of these people would just leave. Okay, so they've got a Dreadquake battery, so we need to make sure... Actually, two of these, so we need to make sure we uh, spread out and make sure when it comes down we try to dodge it. Do my best to dodge it, but it'll be tricky. Got to keep a constant eye on it. The army itself is nothing, but they can delete one of my units if I'm not careful. Alright, this one shows up in uh, two minutes. I'd actually rather bring it in after the Dreadquake batteries come in, because if it comes in and they pop down the Dreadquake battery right on top of them, I can't dodge it. Okay, they're not trying to dodge us, that's fine. Shit, maybe don't be on that phone. They do have the Dread Quake battery, right? Uh, Grant Albury did a tool. I only use a Dreadquake on static enemies, FYI. Mm hmm. Yep, that's why I'm standing still. Thanks to the chat. They don't have it? Oh. That's weird. I thought they would have it. Never mind then. I thought they'd have it. Okay. Alright, I'll trust you guys and, and so if they if you say they're not they don't have it then Alright. That's good enough for me. Okay. What am I doing right now? I thought they were going to use a Dreadquake battery, so I spread out and was sort of waiting for it to dodge it, but apparently they don't have it. Uh, 
What's that guy's range? Okay. Yeah, we need to get our revenge on him. That's well out of range there. Uh, well, no, that's not what I meant. For some reason, oh yeah, there's a hill in the way. I can't aim for it. All right, this position here is not great. I need to move over here a little bit because if they run through the trees, this is going to give them cover. Formations play dog shit. But most of their units are just utter trash. Get this one back, they'll aim for him. Should you get this or Three Kingdoms? It really does depend on what style of game you want. They're very different. Uh, I would say that Total War Warhammer is more popular, and Three Kingdoms wasn't really left in the best state. But some people prefer Three Kingdoms over Total War Warhammer, so it's just a matter of personal preferences. Okay, they're having a little bit of a skirmish there. Is the copter dead? Yeah, it got shot down or something in the previous battle. By the way, why do you hunt down Drazoweth that early, some particular goal? Uh, no, it just sort of ended up this way. So it, it, the campaign went like this. Fort Skarsnik. As soon as I defeated Skarsnik, I had to fight Tretch. Fort Tretch, which put me on a border of Drazoath. So then he declared war. So I'm in the defense constantly, so... Um, it's just, this is how the campaign went. If I didn't go here, I would have gone somewhere else, sort of thing. And we haven't lost a single battle yet. We've lost some units, but we haven't lost any um, battles so far. The war against Drazoath, Drazoath is so far going alright. I just need some time to recover. Our army hasn't been full strength in a while, and I'm still rolling around with pretty shitty units. But then again, it's only like turn 15, so you, you can't expect... How come he doesn't have any organ guns by now? Okay, at least we managed to keep the damage fairly spread out, and those that were in good shape were the ones that were fighting. This one here, speed 32, speed 34, okay. Uh, Matt Murray did a £2 super chat. Alright, thanks, do appreciate the support. For Chorfs, do you think Lore of Hashud is better than Lore of Fire? Not necessarily. It depends on what you're going up against. Like, everything in this fucking game. Um... Not necessarily. Short short answer there is not 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 necessarily. 
Uh, no, it doesn't seem like I can catch him. Are dwarfs stronger than regular dwarfs? Oh, yeah, for sure. Easily stronger than dwarfs. Yeah, their late game snowballing gets out of control. Like, dwarfs are okay. They're not the weakest race in the game. They're in the bottom half, I would say. But... Chaos Dwarfs are in the top half. In my opinion, the strongest race in the game is Corn. But of course, you've got to know how to play it. You know, you're going to have some people come out and say, Err, I played Corn and I couldn't even get past turn 10. Skill issue. Err, that's upsetting. It is, it's just true, okay? Corn is the strongest race in this game. <laughs> then probably Beastmen slash Warriors of Chaos, Norsk are very strong, Skaven are very strong, High Elves are very strong, Dark Elves are very strong. Um, Lizardmen are quite strong in Total Warhammer 3. Empire is not very strong. Vampire Counts are insanely strong. They're one of the top tier races. Tomb Kings are not very strong. Vampire Coast is sort of mid tier. Slanesh is very strong. Zinch is kind of strong. Zinch is weird though. Uh, Nurgle is the weakest race in the game, in my opinion. I will take... It's not that much Earth Gold. Yeah, I'll take it anyway. Wood Elves. Wood Elves are mid-high. Mid Kislev is kind of mid-tier. Cathay, mid-low tier. What is, in your opinion, the weakest race or faction? Oh, Nurgle. Without a doubt. It's easily Nurgle. Demons of Nurgle are... Shit. They're absolutely bottom tier race. What's your view on Norska? Not sure if you said... As muted on stream, Wolken. I did actually mention Norska. Norska's very strong in Warhammer 3, actually. Bretonia? Uh, Bretonia is sort of a mid-high tier. thing is with Bretonnia is that they're just not popular. They're actually very strong because they don't have supply lines, which is very good. They've, they've actually got a... If you're good with Bretonnia, you can get really good results. But they're just not a popular race. That's all. And that's sometimes... I've always got to quantify this stuff because I'll say something like, Bretonnia strong, and then somebody will say, I hate Bretonnia. It's like, that doesn't invalidate what I said. <laughs> you know? Uh, it is time. What would I do to make Nurgle better? I don't know. <laughs> I don't... Ready? I don't design games. I don't know. I don't think about it at all. Uh... Let's see here. Research rate plus 7% probably won't provide anything. I don't have any artillery yet. I think some missile resistance would be good while going up against the Chaos Wolves. Okay. We're still not in favor, but I know that one of their armies is around over here, so we... It's not too... Oh, I could probably just go over. Okay. Let us begin. Um, I can't read that. Did a 20 euro super chat. Thanks for the dwarven stream, mate, from the other side. No worries, thank you for the super chat. I'm sorry, I just I can't read. Greek? Don't know. Sorry. Um, Murray Hell did a $5 super chat. Can you give me some advice regarding battles? I play normal slash normal, but I wanted to go to higher difficulties. I usually play campaigns until the end. Okay, um, have you tried making better decisions? <laughs> yeah, sorry, man. I'm not really good with that kind of advice. Like, here's, here's the thing. What makes me good at the game is understanding every single situation that I'm in. I only really start to, like, panic when I'm, like, unfamiliar with the situation. 
And so what I always try to suggest to people is just play the game. You'll get better because you become more familiar with the situations. If I say something like learn your hotkeys, that's great, learning hotkeys, but that is probably one of the least important things for you to do. And I know some people, especially multiplayer people, will be like, oh, what are you talking about? It's like the most important thing. You don't need to know any of the hotkeys to be good at this game. You actually don't. You can play this game one-handed, with just one hand, and you can be good at it, okay? So you don't need to learn the hotkeys. What you need to understand is what units work well when, and what units don't work well when, and also understanding how the AI behaves. Understanding how the AI behaves is the most important thing for winning battles. Because if you look at an enemy army and you think, Oh, that's strong unit, I'll use this unit, that's B tier player. But if you look at the, uh, uh, the enemy army and you say, Oh, I know they are going to do this with their army, so I'm going to do that. That is top tier level player. Okay, attack their tactics, not their army. Their army is just a bunch of different units. Um, Domangus12 did a CZK200 super chat. Hey, Legend, thanks for the awesome content. Learned the game from your from you and been enjoying it for two years now. Just a question: Thorgrim skill line lets you recruit Thanes everywhere. No, so you could get a Thane for Thorgrim. Good. Grimnir's axe. No, that rec increases the recruit rank for Thanes all provinces. It doesn't mean that I can recruit them anywhere. Yeah, thanks for the chat. Yeah, it just increases the recruit rank. And the recruit number. Alright. Now, also, I just want to quantify that as well. I am not saying that you should not learn the, the hotkeys and stuff, okay? It does help. But I'm just not saying it's like the most important thing. <sighs> okay, I'm just going to go back to Mount Greyhag because that is nothing and we need some time to recover. And this guy here, I'm going to put him in ambush stance behind the army. The reason for this is so that they don't know I'm there, so that they actually might launch the attack. I'm also going to transfer these units in and move him back a little bit and continue recruiting. That's all I got available at the moment. Tea or coffee, whatever you prefer. So it's both are useful. Alright, now that we're at tier 3 here, uh, let's, yeah, let's get some heroes going, that would be really handy, so let's get this one, and, oh, hmm. money, at least it'll generate some oath gold. Probably more important that we get the growth going first. I'll just hold off on that for now. Ah, oh, crap. Four thousand five hundred. Just a little bit short. Oh, did he say short? Um, room no, no, I need the grogny dude. Okay, I need a little bit of cash from a friend. Oh, that's that works for me. Approach and make your offer. But I make no promises to my ascent. <laughs> the app. Oh, right. he's at war with Averland. Approach us, friend. Oh, now we've really lost the friggin' trade. Uh, these guys here... Oh, they lost their pottery anyway. So, Karak Hirn might get the pottery. Who calls? Hang on. What do you want? They've got it. I've got the pottery. I've got it. <laughs> All right, fuck Everland. For the wisdom of the layer. Yeah. Melee defense plus five, liquid fortification, heal for Thorgrim. That's a big deal there. That's going to really come in handy. 
Okay, might be a good idea to focus a little bit more on improving our basic units. So, militia training over here. It's not terrible. Then again, the extra growth and diplomacy with... Sorry, not growth. Public order will be handy as well. Yeah, we'll be fine. The stats are not that important. So... Approach and make your offer, but I make no promises to my ascent. Empire's blessing. Well, I could have got a trade agreement, but I'm already selling off all my goods anyway. You have a proposal? We are on it. One. Ha! Hornet am I. Alright. Alright, and uh, yeah, we'll just uh, see what he does here. If he launches the attack, these guys here will come in reinforcements. And now, Hour of Cheesing Oath Gold? No, I'm not going to do that. No. I really don't find the need to cheese and exploit on the campaign map that much in Warhammer 3. Especially after doing that Blitz campaign, which was just like full of that stuff. I just, I just don't really want to do that anymore. To, to like the tedious stuff. Do you think that in Warhammer 3 you can make the most of the units work on higher difficulties compared to Warhammer 2? You can definitely make use of a wider variety of units than you could have in Warhammer 3. That too. Absolutely. I will hear you back. Hmm. Hmm. Buildings. Yeah, whatever. I was low on money anyway. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> I can't be everywhere at once. Uh, public order is a little bit bad in some areas. I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, damn it, I just can't be everywhere. I was hoping these guys would be a little bit more passive. Unfortunately, they're going for the Pillars of Grogni. Luckily, that's a settlement I didn't invest into, so this will probably be our first defeat. I can't imagine that six units of dwarves are going to be able to overcome that. They're not going to besiege Karaza Karak. They just won't. Um, there's no way I can get out of this, unless we have Slayers. I don't have Slayers. So yeah, there's no way I can overcome that. Weren't they at war with somebody else? No, need my yeah, they were, but anti-player bias, they're focusing on me. Yeah. Hmm. Caught between a rock and a hard place here. Alright, well, cancel this, because we're definitely not going to preserve that. There's no way I can keep it. But I can maybe recruit an army at Mount Squighorn. And try to defend Mount Squighorn, maybe. That will never get built in time. Yeah, not this guy. I need him. Uh, Grimnir will be good. Actually, get a Rune Lord. They're good. I'm ready. And I can recruit two of these, and that's it. This will never get done in time. I'll recruit that next turn. And we don't have very high chances of any of them showing up. Man, that is not going to make much of a difference. <laughs> Shit. This is a big problem for the dwarves, not being able to respond to these sort of emergencies very quickly. Even if all of these units here are full of trash, that's a problem, that one. Hmm. Alright, how's this going on? Okay, we're evenly matched against them. So we're winning over here, but I'm stressed over there. Alright, I need to see what's going on. How about you deposit these units? 
And I'll just use you as a bit of a scout. Because I need to see what's going on. Okay. And then disband him. Cool, at least we got an idea of what's going on. They got an army over here. I'm going to press the attack on them so we can finish this war off. Recruit in the province next to Karazakarak. It's a good idea. Good thinking. Yeah. Um, I want to build that, but money's going to be tight. Okay, uh, get... Yeah, get him. Yeah, good thinking, dude. Yeah, having a few extra units. And if we're lucky, they might just sack the settlement as well. Yeah, there's no getting out of that. Hang on, could you possibly... Help me? No, they won't do it. Alright, I can't reach Darkhold. I think it'd be best if I go into Ambush Stance here. Put this one here going to Regular Stance. Yeah. And see if we can draw that army out this way, so we can fight it. Because if we can level up Thorgrim a bit quicker... Nah, this one here ranks 16. I don't see myself getting that next turn. That'll never get built in time. Crazy crack will be fine. Well, at least I can build this now. Okay, let's move on. It is time. Make your proposal. Yes. Yes. Who to war? So I'm actually rooting for them to win, although I don't have any more Oath Gold. Uh, what could I do to stop this? Nothing. Oh well, let's just move on. Get some global recruitment anyway, you could cancel it and maybe get the two turns. Uh, I, I doubt it. It's a waste of money. This went off, and thanks to Skarsnik's defeat trait, easy ambush. Okay. Alright, so here's the thing. They do have the Dreadquake battery this time, and they can use it. 90 second cooldown. If I auto-resolve this, that's probably going to yield a better result, and plus it will wipe all of this out. Spread out casualties, but that uh, that definitely hurt them more than it hurt me. And I will take that. Cancel gem building in Karaza Karak if you're going to lose it anyway. Dude, I said I wasn't going to lose Karaza Karak. <laughs> I'm not going to lose Karaza Karak. It's got it's got a large garrison. It'll be fine. I said the other settlement, the Pillars of Grogni. They're the ones that are going to fall. Probably. The AI usually doesn't like besieging your major settlements, especially if you've got a large garrison in there. They'll just go around it and they'll go for your minor settlements. The AI is... You can always trust the AI to be a bitch. Oh, God. Stupid. What was he thinking? Well, hopefully they can't catch him still. Oh, they're... Okay. Okay. Well, Vlad was the one that was stupid. Okay, good. Why is Public Order so bad? Is the campaign difficulty? Yeah, Public Order is really bad in the early stages of any Legendary difficulty campaign, with a couple of exceptions. Yeah, minus eight Public Order is difficult to overcome in the early stages of the game. It, it's a very silly system that they implemented in Total War Attila, and I don't know why they've kept it for so long. Oh, they didn't attack. 
I still think I'm gonna... Maybe you're right, maybe I should have globally recruited. Oh, for fuck's sake. I already have little. Of course. <laughs> God. Game like, you do too well, must declare war. Alright, well... Crookback Mountain's got 11 units. These guys are fucking at war with these ones as well. <laughs> I'm too much of a threat now. On turn 16, all the AIs are going for me. I did too well. I should have done worse. Mount Greyhag. This guy's got us in a bit of a rough position because he, he can really just decide wherever he wants to attack. Because we could go chasing after this guy for ages and not catch him. That's a That was a very good spot for him to come and sit. The other option is just ignore him and keep focus on this guy here who's never going to uh, get peace. Or, since these guys declared war, we back off from these guys. They're probably not going to do anything for a little while. And we go for these guys and swing around this way and go for the Tower of Gorgoth. Darkhold is a factory, so that's going to be a minor settlement siege. I might be able to order resolve it with this, though. The High King acts. Hmm. What if I come down here with just this army and I blow this up? Just blow it up. Hang on. Okay. Try and find out where their guys are. Yeah, take this army, come down over here, blow this up, and then just disband this army. It's easy to replace. And Thorgrim, come and stand in ambush stance here. This guy will probably launch the attack because he won't see us, and we get rid of him. Lure him into a trap. Especially if I put a Lord in there and get him recruiting. Alright, but this guy here has to win against this. On his own. That's gonna be a rough one to win. No, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. It's iffy. It's iffy. 50-50. But the Dreadquake batteries are counting towards balance of power. If I dodge that, then I can win. They're probably not going to advance on us right away. Taking out their Lord is going to mean nothing. We need to take out the army because these guys here are anti-infantry. And all their other stuff are infantry. Um, his fireball attack is... A little bit of a concern. I can't really dodge it, except if, if he charges on the um, single entity. Yeah, army lost that dude. So what we want to do? Spread out wide, and we want to dodge these first two shots. And I want you to get over to here. Because I'm going to Rune of Wrath and ruin them. Okay. At about 40... Uh, no, I think 90 seconds. No, 45 seconds is the first one. Um, get these ones here to back off. Actually, turn this way. First one should be coming down any moment. Oh wait, they can't see us. They need to see us. Yeah, they're not going to pop it down if they can't see us. Where did they put their lord? Hmm. 
<laughs> they're hiding there, Lord. I think he's hidden over here. This guy's speed 32, same as us. So what I'm trying to do here is try to use the Rune of Wrath and Ruin. Just on... Just on whatever. Hmm. Short range. Alright, their fastest units are just laborers, so shouldn't have to worry too much about that. Pretty happy with that for the first shot. All right, you lot come over here. I need you to get detected so they'll drop down the bombs. This guy's only done a tiny little bit of damage there. Hide all but one unit. No, no, no. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just bring in the regular miners because these ones here are obviously better. There it is, there it is. Move, 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 move. Okay, that's number one. Let's see if we can get out of there in time. Ooh, tiny little bit of damage. Okay, considering what that was, that was not much. That's good. So, I think it's a 90 second cooldown now. Spread out. Okay, the next one will be coming down any moment. Fully dodged. They didn't get a single kill with that. Alright, awesome. We did more damage with that one blast of Rune of Wrath and Ruin. Good stuff. Alright. Battle's not over yet. They've still got a Blunderbuss unit that we need to deal with. That's going to be a little bit tricky because our units are slow. Okay, for some reason it just changed to Chaos Dwarf music. If they're going to keep reforming around like this, this could be a good opportunity to get them. Does this have armor piercing? A little bit, okay. Alright, if we want to lure these guys over here, these shots... Does a little bit of armor piercing. This is two units worth. Wasn't a huge blob, but some damage. Okay, these are Chaos Dwarf Warriors, so they're high value. Oh, now you decide to back off. Let's 
Let's move quick. Maybe we can catch him still. Had to back off. Uh, need a question. If I only buy Wormer 3 without Warhammer and Wormer 2 or any DLCs, which races will be available to play? Sorry for the English, not my native language. Oh, English is fine. Um, okay, so you would get the demons, the, the five different demons of Chaos Faction. So Korn, Nurgle, Slanesh, Zinch, and Undivided. You get Kislev, Cathay. And you would get access to Bellacor from the Warriors of Chaos and Bretonia. Everything from Bretonia. That's what you'd get. What is AO doing? Not sure. Not sure. They've been particularly stupid today. Yeah, weird. Alright, well this guy's done 8,000 damage, that's pretty good. Still playing Chaos Dwarf music, so I'm a little bit concerned that the Balance of Power is still in their favor. But yeah, that's, they, for some reason, they like just sending one or two units at a time to harass now. Not sure why. And get Cathay. I said Cathay. Seems like as soon as they get into range with them, <laughs> they run off. The Alright, these guys here aren't going to be that much of a concern now. What do you think about Dwarf Economy and Troop Replenishment? It's just a bit basic, like they don't have super high replenishment, there's not much you can do to augment it. Um, their replenishment can be increased very slightly through various factors, uh, but nothing major. Uh, it's lore friendly that they shouldn't replenish very quickly, but it is frustrating in terms of gameplay. And their economy is just very basic. A lot of people look at the Dwarves and think they're the richest race in the game, but it's just so fucking not true. They're just sort of a mid-tier rich faction. Just because everything is very linear and uh, very easy to understand. Hmm. Let's keep advancing. I mean, with a unit of Chaos Dwarf Warriors essentially eliminated, that's a big deal. It's essentially for free. Okay, so now, biggest concern is still, obviously, the Chaos Warp Blunderbusses. They want to bring in their best units like this. That's fine by me. Let's get this guy out of the way. High Elves are rich. High Elves are potentially the richest. Potentially. Depending on, of course, the player. Everything is always dependent on skill issue. I know that seems mean to say that kind of stuff. Or it's a skill issue. But, you know, at maximum potential is usually what I rate something. Not at its minimum potential played by somebody that's never played the game before. Or somebody playing on normal difficulty and really... There's nothing wrong with playing on normal difficulty, but... If you don't know what you're doing, I'm not going to rate that situation. Ancestor gods! No muffin 
No, cancel. Okay, we'll be able to do it again quicker, having um, essentially cancelled it. Oh, they're kind of dodging my shot there a little bit. Hmm, those shots didn't really do very much. Greasers is the richest and the fattest. Uh, ogres can potentially be very rich. They've actually got a, a way of... It's very slow, but they do have a way of continuously increasing the amount of money that they make. But it's very slow. Whereas the high elf way of doing it is a lot quicker. The dark elf way of doing it is a lot quicker. The skaven way is a lot quicker. But there are some races in the game that don't have a way of augmenting their income to kind of ridiculous levels. Alright, at least our miners are armor-piercing, so that helps. This is going really well. I just don't understand why the AI is so dumb. They... Might have still had a chance of beating me if they just rushed at me, especially with those blunderbusses. But they just insist on doing this stupid shit. Okay, it's dead unit. Okay. Pop it down on those archers just because I think it'll kill more than the blunderbusses. And these guys here will probably run away from us when we charge in. Whereas the blunderbusses are slow. Sometimes going after a high value target isn't necessarily the highest value decision. If you can go after a lesser value unit but absolutely smash it. Careful, careful, not yet. Careful, not yet. Let's try to surround these guys a little bit so that the, uh, the blunderbusses have nowhere to go. Because that one unit has enough ammunition to kill every last one of our troops. Obviously, we'd have to be pretty stupid to let them do that. Why is it still playing Chaos Dwarf music? Hello Jim, what are you doing now instead of streaming? Um, I'm currently streaming. <laughs> I get what you meant. Yeah, what, what did I do as a job alternative? Um, a lot, what a lot of people don't understand is that I was essentially working two jobs uh, for several years, I was doing YouTube videos and YouTube streaming, and I was working ridiculous hours. And after several years of doing that, my willpower, I just gave up out. Like, you can only burn the candle at both ends for so long. And so when I said I was giving up streaming, a lot of people thought that, oh, he's quitting his job. What a baby, he can't even handle doing YouTube and easy job in the world, right? <laughs> um, which it's not. But what ended up happening was I only quit one of my jobs, okay? I still spend a lot of time every day going through emails, sorting out disaster situations. Because the thing is, you might watch a 20-minute disaster battle, right? 
and think, oh yeah, he just works on that for 20 minutes. It sometimes takes me several hours to find that save file because I have to sift through uh, so many emails. So oftentimes just doing YouTube is several hours worth of work, not to mention, you know, collaborating with, well, just talking with other people and stuff. So quitting streaming did not give me capacity to go get a full-time job elsewhere while I'm still making videos. And I think, yeah, I think a lot of people just didn't realize that I was essentially working two jobs. Because, think about it, look at the other Total War YouTubers. Who of them makes a video every day and live streams every day? None of them do. Not a single other Total War YouTuber does it. They either make videos or they live stream. Ah, with one exception, Lionheart. Different for Lionheart because his content is like Let's Plays, which is like ridiculously easy to make. And I'm not throwing shade at him, it's just that I've been a Let's Player and it is very easy to be a Let's Player. And also he doesn't stream for anywhere near as long as what I did. Ugh, that hurts. Like, live streaming was a really good job for a very long time. But what ended up happening is that what made it good basically just expired. So just just explain it again. Um, yeah, Lionheart's probably the closest. And Lionheart's very successful, by the way. Um, the the like the golden age of streaming, Turin. Uh, Turin Turin like makes like he does a lot of live streaming and does a lot of videos, but he kind of does one or the other kind of. Um, He's not, he's not doing five live streams a week while also making seven videos a week. That's not what he's doing. Um, also, his live streams are also shorter. So, what was I saying? The, the, like, the golden age of what made it possible for me to live stream and make content, it ran, it ran dry. Um, the community sentiment where everybody was being really positive and it was... A, the, one of the things that made it possible for me to do it was something that I called momentum. It was like this huge positive momentum. And when Warhammer 3 came out, it fucking ended. And it ended really hard. And it was very difficult for me to come to terms with that. Um, it hasn't recovered. It hasn't recovered. If it ever came back, I might consider to, to do that. But the conditions that allowed me to, to, uh, to do streaming and making videos that they, they don't present anymore so I can make a live stream once every once a week maybe once every two weeks that's fine but like every day five days a week no I can't do that um, new, become a new member thanks do appreciate the support Italian Spartacus does both too. Okay, cool. I'm not super familiar with what Italian Spartacus is up to. You're so close to 500k too? Yeah, well... Warhammer 3 just like completely stopped channel growth. It's just like put a complete halt on it. Alright, we got this. Um, Sard did a 100 SAR super chat. Thanks for your effort, Legend. Really, really enjoy your content. I oh, know, I appreciate that. And, like, I'm still making content. I just, I just can't make as much as what I used to, that's all. You know, there isn't, like, I don't get enough disasters sent in. We've covered pretty much every Doomstack. I'm at the point where I'm going to have to start rehashing old videos. Because, <laughs> like, just the, the ideas, they're just not coming anymore. You know, I can't run a live stream for a week. I, have, I can only run it for a day before people get bored of it. You know, the, the situation is just different. Got him. Cool. Like, I'm sorry? Sorry about what? Pharaoh would fix everything? No, I really doubt it. Like, I don't want to spit, sit here and 
shit talk Pharaoh anymore. I mean, I haven't played it. But it's likely that Pharaoh will actually make the situation worse. I'm actually quite dreading the the release of Pharaoh. Andrew Matthews did a two pound super chat. You taught me a lot. Thanks for what you do. No worries, dude. My pleasure. Thanks for super chat. Um, code name did a fifty SEK super chat. A good way to sorry, a good day to see Legend stream as always. Hope you're doing better. What games are you currently playing? Um, what I'm playing at the moment is um, Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom. Really good game. Really, really good. I can send him infinite amount of saving disaster battles. Okay, that's another thing as well. I get sent in a lot of disaster battles that I reject. So I don't want people to send in more disaster battles. I want people to send in better disaster battles. And the disaster battles that you guys seem to respond best to are situations that don't occur very often. I see plenty, of, like for example, yesterday's disaster battle did shit, right? Um, because it wasn't particularly interesting, but that's, that's all I had. Um, yeah, I remember back in Warhammer 2 days, I used to probably get about 10 save files sent in every day. I currently get one sent in every day. <laughs> I'm actually burning through my backlog. So, I'll be right for a little while, but eventually, some content will dry up. Just hoping the next DLC comes out before then. Why not bring some Stellaris to the channel? Uh, because I don't want the channel to die. <laughs> no, I'm quite happy just covering Total War Warhammer. It's just... All I was saying is that the situation isn't as good as it was back in Warhammer 2. Like, that was really... That was a golden opportunity, and I'm very grateful for the two or three odd years that I got to have that. Very very few people get to have that opportunity in a career. But I cannot just create that situation again. It's not currently available. You know, for something like that to happen, there needs to be, like, this huge wave of positivity towards a Total War game, which there currently isn't. Did he cover any T3 Kingdom content? Three Kingdoms content? Um, Three Kingdoms was not one of those like Golden Age Total War games. Um, I didn't cover much Three Kingdoms. It wasn't doing better than my Warhammer stuff, even when it first came out. I'll grab that. Why not some Hoi 4 or Victoria 3? Because I don't want my channel to die. I've Look, I've done Paradox stuff on the channel before. And it always performs vastly worse than Total War stuff. Master of Runecraft. It's fine. Look, I'm more than happy to just keep staying on Total War Warhammer 3. All I was saying is that the golden age of it has passed. That's all. For the, at least for the channel. Do you think the situation will improve a bit as Warhammer 3 ages and gets more polished, if it ever gets polished? Um, it is possible, but I think the thing to consider is that it's been over a year now, and that, like, the player count today was, like, at one point less than 10,000, um, and that Creative Assembly are doing a pretty bad job of patching the game, and it does seem like they've got one foot out the door. Like, they're going to keep making content for... This is what I think. I think they're going to keep making content for Total War Warhammer 3, but I don't think they're really putting a lot of effort into patching it, because patching it doesn't make them money, as far as I think what they're concerned. So, I think what they're trying to do is just maximize whatever money they can before they move on to the next project. So, I, I think Creative Assembly is essentially one foot out the door with this game, which is not, is not what I wanted, but... I guess I should be grateful for what I got. Alright, so here's what we want to do with Thorgrim. Come up over here. I'm expecting him to attack us. See, once they launch the attack, it'll pull us out of ambush stance, but they can't just back off at that point. I don't want to put it ambush stance in front of the settlement, because I'm not trying to ambush him. I'm trying to guarantee that he launches the attack. He can't reach Mount Silverspear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a Lord here. Yeah, this guy. Have him start recruiting. 
So if he does end up going around this way, maybe Thorgrim can catch him in the rear. Maybe. Alright, we were pretty lucky with this last turn. Hang on. You should make your way a bit further down here. Did we get any... No, we didn't get any of those. Okay. Let's put another Lord over here. Yeah, let's put the Grugni dude in here. That'll be good, because I would like to build more stuff here. And I'm going to get him to go and pick up Gotrick and Felix. <laughs> when they finally decide to occupy Pillars of Grugni, we need to throw whatever we can at them. Uh, Casey Sparks did a $5 Super Chat. Hey, Legion, I apologize if you've been asked this before, but do you think you will pick up Pharaoh just to play for yourself? Um, I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do for Pharaoh, but I can tell you that I'm not interested in Pharaoh at all. Like, if, if I wasn't a Total War YouTuber, like, I haven't said whether or not I'm going to make content for it. I'm not looking forward to it, but I haven't said whether or not I'm looking forward, um, going to make content or not. But if you took the YouTuber aside and just me as a person, I would not buy Total War Pharaoh. I would not buy it. As if I was just looking at it from a pure game perspective, Creative Assembly has burned us a lot lately. It's clearly just Troy 2. I didn't really play much Troy 2, even though it was free. And I'm just not really interested in play paying $100 to play that game. Especially considering that um, Starfield is coming out a month beforehand. I am probably still going to be playing Starfield when Pharaoh comes out. I just can't see any situation occur that makes me excited about Pharaoh. Nothing. Now that's not to say that it's going to be a bad game. But I think you have to keep in mind that that this game doesn't exist in a complete void where there's no other games in existence. Other games are coming out from other developers that just excite me more. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I would like more triangulation. Uh, Sphinx Juice did a fifty dollars super chat. First time I caught a live stream, but I've watched countless hours of your content. Thanks for what you're doing. Have a great stream. All right, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. It's very generous of you. Yeah. Another thing as well, guys, is that I don't like to bullshit you. I don't want to tell you lies. Um, I know some people would probably prefer it if I was a bit softer on CA. But I'm just being honest about how I feel about it. I just wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy it. I'm just not interested. Uh, Wolf Paul did a 100 euro super chat. Dude, you're so generous lately. <laughs> I greatly appreciate it. Um, thanks for that. that. That'll actually buy me Starfield. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Appreciate it. Ja Ja uh, did a ten, um, membership for 10 months. What did you choose between high severity for Slayers? And low severity for research, control, and minus building cost. I usually prefer to stay in this area here, for sure. Um, especially when you're playing legendary difficulty, you kind of don't want that control penalty. And diplomatic relations with dwarfs, that kind of hurts. Um, and you still get slayers in this stage here. Um, but I guess this is where, if shit hits the fan, this helps your disaster campaign out a little bit. So I did a 10 SAR super chat, but legend, what about hippos? <laughs> They're only going to be, like, visually in the game. They're not actually going to be playable. You're not going to have hippo riders. Okay, I think I'll get this, because I think I might get the... It is time. This one here. A little bit cheaper now. Oh, man. I shouldn't have called him into this. He might actually want to confederate. I am Iron Fist, uh, so not yet. A king. You are welcome no, here. not yet. Red Bells Gate 3? Oh, it's not on my radar. I, I have no... I I've never played a Baldur... Actually, that's not true. I think I have played a Baldur's Gate before. It's just, it's just not on my radar at the moment. Do you still accept Warhammer 2 campaigns? No, I only accept Warhammer 3. I yes. Last time I covered Warhammer 2, post um, Immortal Empires, it was not a good idea. 
Like, there's still a decent number of people that play Warhammer 2, and I recognize that, but most people have moved on to Warhammer 3. Okay, I think I'm done here. Let me just double-check this, if there's anything I can squeeze out of someone. No, have I got any money left? No. Alright, so if we're lucky, he'll try to besiege... No, he'll launch the attack on Mount Greyhag, and that'll fuck him up. We smashed up Drazoath, but he'll be back. And I'm kind of on the defense at the moment. When this is Total War Challenge with Nurgle, you know, I really tried to ignore that question. You just ask it over and over again. So I just kind of want you to stop. I'm not doing that. Why don't you stream other games if you play them? Yep, I'll explain that. This channel is a business. Okay, I, I enjoy playing Total War. I'm good at Total War. No, 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 you're not. Um, turning, variety, turning a dedicated channel into a variety channel is the quickest way to kill the channel. The quickest way, apart from me like just dropping down the N-word right now. Um, so just because I play other games doesn't mean I, I should live stream it. It's a bad business decision to do that. And I know this because I have done it before. So this channel has to be, the best way to operate this channel is a balance between business and pleasure. And the best way to do that is to stay on Total War Warhammer 3 and just do my best to actually enjoy it. That's, that's where I, I need to be. And I know that's difficult for some people to understand and that's fine, but that's where it's going to stay. And nothing that anybody says in the chat is going to change anything about that. Do you think it would be a good idea for CA to add caval cavalry to units for dwarves, like goat riders or some fantasy stuff? Probably not, because that's not law friendly. Come on, dwarves. Come on, dwarves. Order resolve win. Come on, order resolve win. What if you start another channel? Starting another channel is oh, they did win. Is a pretty exhausting amount of energy. Um, and we did that. We actually do have a sec- I've started- I've started multiple channels. So, I've got a secondary channel that I abandoned about five years ago. That's got a whole bunch of variety, Clinic Paradox games. And me and my wife started a Valheim channel about- what was it? December- G December, January this year. And that's basically dead, but that's mostly our fault because we don't- we ran out of energy for making content. Um, there was a big gap in- content updates, and we got distracted with other things in life. So it was good for a hobby, but it was a poor business decision. And I think people need to understand is that I cannot just spend my entire life sitting here playing games for everyone. There's other things that that life are calling me to do. Um, yeah, we don't stand a chance. That's the first defeat of the campaign. Finding that battle manually would have done nothing. Alright, they've occupied it. Alright, they're going in. They're going in, and... They're done fucked up. Okay, we need to order resolve it so they get wiped out. Oh, oh my Ekrand miners. Well, I'll give them 10 turns to recover. See, if I fight it manually, they're just going to run off. Yeah. How long has this channel been going for? Ten and a half years. Was Valheim with the missus at least fun though? Oh yeah, for sure, it was fun. It made us... It wasn't a good business decision. Because, like, it, it didn't grow at all. It decayed almost straight away. And it uh, just goes to show, like, if I say, oh, yeah, guys, I'm going to... If you guys say, oh, Legend, I'll watch you play no matter what you play, that's just not true. The vast majority of people won't do that. And that's fine. I've made my peace with that. <laughs> but I know where I need to be. And I, I, It's so weird. So many people trying so hard to get me to abandon Total War when that is the only thing that you actually want to watch me play. 
And I know this because whenever I deviate from it, you don't watch it. And I don't have a problem with that. I just don't understand this weird behavior that happens. Okay. Well, I don't expect them coming back again for a little bit. Over here. Yeah, I need to get the Tower of Gorgoth. I don't think they're going to bother me for a little bit. The Skaven occupied that settlement. We need to get... Okay, let's have a look here. Let us begin. I've got 10 units here, plus 12, 13, 14, 15. That's mostly miners. My anger burns bright. Ready. We march. Aye. Heading out. Got them. Bench for Ridlock. And then you can go in and camp there so they can't ambush you. That then gives us... Time for a reckoning. 17 units. Still probably not enough. 18, 19 units. If they launch the attack there. We'll make a slayer out of you yet, manling. How should I put this? An adventure-filled nightmare, or a nightmarish adventure. Who actually wants him to ban this game? Oh, look, that's what it feels like sometimes. Or maybe it's a case of that people want me to do this in addition. I just don't have time. I'm, I'm maxed out. I'm always maxed out. I don't, I don't, I don't have enough energy to do more YouTube. It's too exhausting. And I get that a lot of people be like, "Oh, how is playing games exhausting?" When you do it as a business, it is. Okay. If you just if you just want to create a channel and put a video up and it gets one thousand views or a hundred views, that's fine. But that is that is a gigantic waste of my time and energy. My axe thirsts for war. Okay, so what we want to do here, I'm gonna put Gotrick and Felix in the settlement. And this guy no actually Gotrick and Felix stay outside the Yeah, no no, you stay in the settlement. You're gonna to need to be disbanded. Monster Slayer. Yeah, you need to be disbanded. Let me just. I'm not going to build anything this turn. Let us begin. Okay, and then have them recruit. I don't think that this army here is going to do anything. Because there might be another army sitting around over here. That's why I disbanded him. These guys here are usually pretty passive. Um, yes. And I need this guy to actually come back over here <laughs> and keep recruiting. We're not ready to launch the attack on the Pillars of Krogni yet. Alright, Thorgrim's getting really worn out. He needs some time to recover. So I'm just going to sit him in the settlement here for a turn. He just needs a replenishment. Before we launch an attack over here. And, yeah, money. I don't have unlimited at the moment. Yeah, I need that public order still an issue. Yes. On guard. Uh, actually, I think I'd prefer to trade with the High Elves. This will be master. Harmony. This an ad. City command. If you could follow the rules and not be overly negative, that would be great. You're bringing my move down type to get my eating ticket. Oh, God, fuck off, man. And you guys, people are relentless. Get Legend to break. You guys are relentless. I, I swear. Yeah, so relentless these days. I don't know what it is. It's like, you guys are absolutely driven to get me out of, of this channel. <laughs> Actively work. You guys are doing your best to keep me away. And you're doing a decent job of it too. Okay. Let's do that. Alright. I think I've still got enough money for one. Nope. No, no, I don't want that. Alright, let's move on. 
Uh, Malignard did a five dollar subject. Is it true that if you make a type of content and develop a following and then shift to another content, it damages your success in the algorithm? Uh, yes, <laughs> big time. It depends though. There are there are some small instances where you can transfer from something that's of similar interest and retain a lot of your um, a lot of your uh, viewership. So, for example, if I switched from Total War to to Paradox, there's a fair bit of overlap there. And so the algorithm can tolerate that a fair bit. But if I switched from this to Call of Duty Modern Warfare, it would destroy my career so quickly. It's not funny. Yours is the only channel worth watching. Stop, don't stop doing Warhammer content. I don't intend to stop doing Warhammer content. I'm just saying, you guys make it tough for me sometimes. Relent, absolutely relentless. Well, the vast majority of you guys are, are really good, but my God, some of you just will not quit. People are toxic, don't let it get to me. I oh, don't let it get to me. I'm just saying that it's it's there. I can see it. It's annoying. Alright. Let's come over this way. Why no Thanes yet? It's only turn 18. I, I can't recruit them yet. That doesn't matter. Alright, so... Let's see if this made any difference. Ooh, okay. I was hoping to auto resolve that because most of it's miners. Uh, I don't have any regiments of renown. Four units. Oh, geez, they don't have much movement. Ah, shit. Okay, how many units have we got? 18, hang on. Yeah, 18. I'm actually outnumbering them. But the quality... They've got a spellcaster. That's a big problem. They've got a lot of winds of magic. God damn. Random friggin' faction got an armor of destiny. Those are a huge issue, those units. Let us begin. These ones here are iffy. Those are a massive problem. Is this guy here Rune of Wrath and Ruin? Yeah, he is. Their blobbing ability is stronger than ours. Playing Total War is simply exhausting. Playing Total War is not exhausting. Playing Total War while talking to chat that basically just wants you to quit and leave, that's exhausting. Get an arty unit at least. I, I would like to, for sure. I would like to. Um, maybe I should have built that instead of that. But money is a bit restrictive. Um... Like, having an artillery unit is not going to solve all my problems. I've got two lords. I outnumber them by one unit, but all my units are trash. Two of these guys here. That's not going to be able to handle those warp fire throwers. If they lay siege to us for a single turn, we lose 10% of our forces. I can't recover that in a single turn. So very vocal minority. Well, look, I'm just, I'm just telling you guys that I come onto these streams sometimes, and you make it not fun for me, okay? And then you tell me to, hey, don't let it bother you, but it does bother me. The thing is, if I said something that bothered you, you would just leave, okay? So when you guys say stuff that bothers me, which you do, 
I leave. So just keep that in mind. I'm not a robot. You guys piss me off quite often. If you want me to do more live streams, stop pissing me off so often. It's pretty easy. You guys do it deliberately. Demons. Yeah. I don't think I can sally out and win there. I just can't. What? One Could wait for more Regiment of Renown. I need to get another rank up, but I just... March. I know that he's there, but he's out of range. My axe for war. Ah. Udi. The High King acts. Time for a reckoning. Yes. I'll set up an ambush for him. If I stand here... And then force march to here, that might work. Retake the realm. Part of the charm is that legend is grumpy. You guys make me grumpy. Just letting you know that. I was fine before I started the stream. The axe for war. Aye. Why do I keep checking this? Thing is, here's the thing. If I don't sally out and beat them now, I know that it's just going to get worse. But I can't recruit fast enough that it's going to make any difference. But this is an army that's very difficult to overcome because of all of these units in here. And I can't cheese it. But I have to, I have to fight this battle now. I don't have a choice. I just have to win. Because if I don't win here, then it's only going to get worse. Swap some items, maybe? No, that I don't want to risk losing the items. I don't have that many. Alright, if we're lucky, they'll just sit around and wait for us, because we're on the attack, and we, we lack missile units. This guy here at least has Rune of Wrath and Ruin, so that might be my key to victory. Maybe. It all just depends on whether or not they're going to advance on us. But I think we're in for a tough one here. Okay, it looks like they're going to sit there and wait. Alright, that's good. Uh, Patrick Brahio did a $15 super chat. Sup, Legend. I start my mornings with your videos to the point where my wife says out loud, Legend of Total War here. Haha. Uh, you're the best. Sorry, you're doing the best you can. Love your content. Don't ever change. Alright, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. It's not all chat being annoying though, not even close. Yeah, oh my god. Fucking hell. Jesus Christ, relentless. No, of course, it's never all everyone. And you know what, usually with my live streams, I'm not usually in a bad mood in the whole of the live stream. It's usually just a very short portion of it. But you guys don't let anything go. You gotta got let this go now, let's move on. But you won't, you won't let it. Have you tried the new Mountain Blade? No. No. Alright, got need this guy here. I think Rune of Wrath and Ruin's my only bloody hope. Cause I just lack missile units. Maybe maybe blobbing up is a mistake. Maybe we should be going wide in this battle, because we do outnumber them. We've got one additional unit than they have. Problem is our units are trash. So are theirs. Mm. More of our units are trash than theirs. I don't think that one unit is going to make much of a difference. The biggest concerns are the warp fire throwers. We have to somehow make sure that they do nothing. And the warp grinders. Because this ability in Warhammer 3 is very powerful. Put this 
one on the flank. It's quite possible that I'll pop this down and then just they'll sort of sit there and stare at me. The warp fire throwers are the highest value unit. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That's even better if they're gonna do that. Double whammy, cool. Alright, bit of damage. That's in heaps. Okay. Like I said, we need to go wide here as much as possible. Blobbing up is not advantageous to us in this battle. Okay, so guys, I'm not going to respond to any more of those type of comments. I'm just not going to not going to respond anymore. Okay. Ask questions about the game. Let's focus on the game. No more no more of this stuff derailing the streams. Okay, it's I've had enough of it. Everybody's had enough of it, except for the people that are deliberately trying to piss me off. You're going to be ignored from here on out. All right. And if you start seeing yourself get timed out, just know that bands are coming. Because I'm well and truly sick of it. Well, the AI is once again being stupid. I don't know why I assume that they're actually going to fight the battle coherently. They're so stupid. You think Thorgrim is the best faction? In the game? Oh no, hell no. Definitely in the bottom half. Oh, that's not gonna do quite as much. Oh, hang on. No, they walked right into it. Cool. Alright. Look, free 6,000 damage, I can't complain with that. Everything that we can do to soften them up. Can a miner beat a warp fire thrower if they get into melee? Yes, I think so. Because warp fire throwers have terrible melee. But the problem is, they're actually quicker than miners. That's the problem. I'm going to have a hard time getting them into melee. No, they're coming now. This is why we have to go wide, try to s uh, split up their units. Because in individual fights, our guys actually do pretty well. As long as it's... Their missile units are the biggest problem here. So I've, I've got to make sure they don't do anything. So if they use one of their units to pin down one of our troops, and... And then shoot us, that's really bad. Malignar did a 5 dollar super chat. It's Quarrela plus Grudge Throw still the Dwarves' best units. Last time I played them was when Worm 2. Um, no, they're definitely not their best units, but in the early game, they're, they're very good. Thanks for Super Chat. Alright. If he just wants to stay in there and get a whole blob of them going, that actually works for me. Because he's very tanky, as long as that Lord doesn't come in here. And he's essentially... You know, he hasn't done his worth yet, but he's getting pretty close. Those units over there are going to be a problem. I can't really do anything about them. I would overcast it, except it'll do damage to our own units, and... You guys can run up this way. That's actually working out really well there. And increase the cooldown as well, I was going to say. So we need to pull back over here, pull back over there, just try to get them to spread out as much as possible. Don't engage just yet. Where possible. Alright, if we can prevent these warp fire throws from getting over here. This guy can hold out for a little bit longer. But he's done 20,000 damage so far. Man, I should have put a rune of spite on him. The Slayer unit can maybe catch the warp fire throwers. So the AI is not as branded as they were in the Chorf battle. 
What's the twelfth battle? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're still being pretty bad. We got this, I think. Yeah, keep that warp fire, uh, warp grinder out of here. All right, we need to be shooting at the. What are they doing? Shoot escape instead because they don't have shields. Good. We've got two of the most important units caught in a fight that they shouldn't be doing. Good. That's, that's really improved the odds for us. In for them night runners, that's good. This guy here has definitely done his worth. Oh, oh no, he's gonna break. Let's see if I can. No, I can't, I can't pull him out of these. He's completely surrounded. Alright. Oops, 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 oops. Good, they didn't hit. Oh, hang on. This looks. Oh, good, the flame didn't reach. Okay, charge in now. They're all. This is our chance. Get rid of this now. This unit here is going to get wrecked, but it's only a minor unit. These guys are fine to just charge in there. Ugh. Yeah, I told you the warp fire throwers were a pain. But, looks like we got these warp fire throwers, so that's good. Totally fine over here. All right, good. That warp fire thrower is doing nothing. All right, you come up over here, get rid of this. Nineteen more seconds. Not sure if he's going to hold out that long. Good. That warp fire thrower could have done a lot worse. It did get one volley off on it, it's doing a lot of damage, but. Wasn't so bad. Overcast it. Last one. I don't think he's going to get another chance to do it. Ugh, he miscasted. But. Gave him one hell of a hit before giving up. And then not probably going to pursue him. Oh, I'm pissed. <laughs> God damn, that hurts. How much damage did that do? Mm, not as much as I thought. Okay, this is good here. They've been flanked. They're getting wrecked. They're giving up on him. I, I think we got this. I think we got it. I think the worst of this battle is over. They've really only got one more warp fire thrower that's really in play. Alright, need to focus on that warp fire thrower. This over here is not important. Warp grinders are coming in, they need to be shot because they are extremely dangerous. Yeah, miners easily beat warp fire throwers in melee. Our lord over here is getting smashed. How much damage did he end up doing? 
Uh, that's high value damage, but he didn't do tons. Oh, uh, the... Uh, they backed off. Good slayers reckon they're Gracia. Nice. Yeah, we got this. The worst of this is over. Lord of Black yes. Alright, right, this is broken now. Alright, yeah, worst of this is over. We lost him. Yeah, kill him, because I want to pursue and finish this off if we can. And killing him will be... Oh, I don't think he's going to be able to catch him. No, he's too quick. Well, just run down whatever we can. Because some of the army here is garrison. They're not going to be able to pursue, but... It, this went really well. I wasn't even expecting to win this. Rune cooldown so long? Well, that's because I overcasted it. Yeah, he's not going to catch them. When they're broken, they're even quicker. So we're not going to catch any of them. Maybe the warp grinders there. Maybe. If I can use the rune of speed on these guys, maybe they'll catch. Catch them. Nah, too close to the edge now. Dwarves are shit at running down units. Just can't manage it. Does the AI use Warp Grinders abilities in Warhammer 3? Yes. In Warhammer 2 they didn't for some reason, but in Warhammer 3 they do. It's one of the very few instances where the AI is actually better in Warhammer 3. Do you think the dwarves are okay despite the enemies around them? Dwarves have never really been a top tier race. And I think a lot of people that like the dwarves want them to be have a time in the sun, even for a short time. Short. Um, but they've never really been a bottom race either. In my opinion. That's a good amount of both gold, I'll take that. Uh, they're standing within their bloody reinforcement range as well. Ready. I think we can beat them. Funny thing here. Uh, okay, it doesn't matter what we get wiped out. It just doesn't matter. Just win. <laughs> just get this freaking settlement back. Alright, cool. Well, I ended up not needing Gotrick and Felix. How about that? I'll still keep them in the area. And it might be good to actually leave some defenses here, given that um, I don't really have the resources to launch the attack. So we should at least try to protect what we do have. This could make all the difference in this settlement. Uh, but then I got no money. Can I help you? Okay, get rid of him. He was really useful, but... Garage. He's done. Of 
I don't expect them to make an attack again for a few turns. Okay, cool. Good, that's an okay amount of money. Okay, I'm going to back off on that because I don't think they're going to attack in the next couple of turns. Let me just check. Yeah, it seems unlikely. I want to get the Pillars of Grogni built up. Get these defenses built because I expect them to keep making attacks because I don't think anyone else is going to wipe them out right now. Alright, and then over here. Yeah, just need these guys to launch the attack down here and see how Thorgrim manages that. We're going to recruit another lord over here just in case this ambush gets foiled. If he force marches over this way to try to attack Mount Silverspear or World's Edge Mountain, I need to make sure somebody can launch the attack on him. So... You'll do. Yes. On my way. And grab another one of those. Uh, garrison building is more important the higher difficulty of the campaign. No, not necessarily. It's more it's more situational. I think the situation kind of calls for us to get some defenses. But a lot of the time I go through entire campaigns and don't get any defensive buildings. Alright. Mm. Alright, well they're allied with Sylvania, so... Got too many trade partners, so that's not really super valuable. Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting a, another ally. This this guy does seem to get his... He's getting his ass handed to him. Affirmative. <laughs> One gold, whatever. Come, come, kin. Let us feast and draw rides. Did that not give the money? I thought I clicked it. Whatever, doesn't matter. Would have only been a little bit. Good. Uh, yeah, no. No, just get the money off them for it. No point getting unlimited trade agreements when we've already sold all of our goods. Ally? Yeah, I get allies in Warhammer 3. I, th I feel like it's fine. Sometimes it backfires, but it's it was nothing like it was in Warhammer 2. That was actually kind of ridiculous how bad having allies were. Alright. Uh, the uh, World's Edge Archway. Let's try to get that one maybe defended up. Because I'm stretched thin at the moment. But our income is not horrendous. Okay, let's move on. Are we getting the Monkey King in the next DLC? I'd say that that's likely, but I don't know. There's also a small possibility that I might get early access to the next Total War Warhammer DLC. I had a chat with Creative Assembly uh, two days ago. But things are looking better. Boy, you never know. Sometimes, sometimes I have a conversation with them and I think it goes one way, and then everything that was said during the meeting doesn't end up happening. So we'll we'll see. I'm not getting my, my hopes up. Uh, Connor Van Devender did a two dollars super chat. What countries provide most of your viewership? Um, America is the biggest, USA, uh, that's roughly 25%, but about 30% of my audience comes from Europe, which is why I prioritize Europe over America. Also, I'm almost certain that the vast majority of the viewers that annoy me are American, <laughs> that are from the USA. I'm fairly sure. Not all. It's not unanimous. And, you know, most of the viewers from the USA are... Perfectly great, but I'm sure most of the trolls come from USA. Anyway, so yeah, 25% come from USA, and then, yeah, whatever. And then 30% from Europe. Mm, 
Would you say that Thorgrim's dwarfs in general have an easier start in Wormer 3 than in Wormer 2? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Oh no. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, my ambush failed. Oh god, these guys are at war with each other. Fucking assholes. <laughs> well, maybe that's what he's trying to do, trying to hunt them down. Yeah, they're not friend Oh, I can catch him. I can catch him. Alright. Alright, well that's good. If I can catch him, I can push him out of the way. Assuming I win. And then this guy here, we could attack this because... Yeah, alright. Well, that's a nuisance, but at least that's doable. France fails hard in the USA? Eh, I don't notice it. You call yourself out when you call it soccer? Well, that's just what it's called in Australia. Uh, Connor Van Der Vende did a $2 super chat. Silly Americans also much love from Miami. Well, alright, thanks dude, thanks super chat. This is an issue because as soon as he takes Fallen King Mountain, he's got a way into Mount Gunbad, so we're probably going to need to build defenses here. He's got a war going on because I really can't afford another war going on. Uh, Malice Man 77 did a CZK 500 Superjack. Greetings, Legend. You already answered patch mod question, uh, but have you considered making like Legend Suite where you would also cherry pick good AI mod? Also, you're doing great. Thanks for the entertainment. Thanks for the chat. Um, I, I try to decide, uh, I think about all these things before I start a stream, right? I do think about all this stuff. There's a lot of great mods out there, but what I like to do with this channel, and I try to be consistent with this, is show the game without modifications, and if we encounter issues, it actually shines a light on them, and there's a better chance of... Uh, there's a better chance of it being fixed if I point it out in um, in the stream. <sighs> there's there's lots of things to consider when when considering whether or not to cover mods. Most of my mod streams have not done super well. Um, I did notice that the latest Nagash Nagash is back for Warhammer Three. Um, I was considering doing that. Maybe I'll do that next time. We'll see. Alright. Come over here and Thorgrim launches that attack there. Okay, he's standing and fighting. His army's not complete rubbish. <laughs> Complete rubbish. Uh, this guy here is... Oh, damn it, he's not a runesmith. Um, order resolving... Yeah. No, I'm going to fight this manually. And because Thorgrim has the Iron Warden tanked, I'm going to try something. Robert S. became in for one month. Nagash round two would be fun. The war... 2-1 was cool. Yeah, it, that one did really well as well. So, I'm considering it. Uh, Tyler, Tyler Liverpool did a 5 to What faction would you like to see added to Warhammer? Uh, Indian Kuresh, I think, uh, sort of the next on the um, to-be-done list. And then maybe Araby. Um, yeah, those those are the ones I think are the, the next three. Do you dare to order this? No, because I, I need my army to be in okay shape because they've got another fight, another fight to do after this. Alright, Thorgrim's just going to go in by himself. They do have a blunderbuss. they got two blunderbusses. He's got a Runa Spite and Regen, plus loads of missile resistance. Hmm. I might end up regretting this. Let's just try on the flank to begin with. 
I might regret this. But yeah, we, we do have an Iron Warden tankard, and that'll make all the difference, I think. I always forget about Dogs of War. I just forget about that. It's the Southern Realms as well. Yeah, it would be good to add Tilia, the Border Princes, and um, Estalia as separate races, because they're not... They're all quite different. And... Hmm. Yep, this is what I wanted to see, and we're inflicting damage. But as soon as the blunderbusters start shooting at us, then I gotta be real careful. But luckily the AI is brain dead, and they don't think to do that. Okay, now they're just advancing and they don't even care about Thorgrim. Now, save that for somewhere else. This is this is gonna be fine here. Like, they're barely even tickling him. And he's already dished out 8,000 damage. That's good. Good, good, good. Yep, this is all just going fine. Do you think they'll ever add Nippon? Um, I think it's a possibility, but I think... With Warhammer 3, the game needs to do better. It needs to have a higher player count. It needs to sell better. Alright, so let's have a little bit of discussion about that, because um, that's actually a really good question. Nippon. It is possible for Nippon to come into the game. It is possible. Any, any Warhammer race that existed in any of the lore, it's possible for it to show up. Don't listen to anything that Creative Assembly employees say, okay? Because everything is up for grabs. But it all comes down to what's likely and what's unlikely. And Nippon falls under the unlikely category, right? Because Warhammer 3 is not doing as well as was projected. Um, it's still doing fine. It's still the most popular Total War game. But it has fallen short of expectations. Arr, it's short, right? So... In order for Creative Assembly to extend what they have planned, it needs to exceed its expectations. So Warhammer 2, for example, exceeded expectations, but also set the bar for Warhammer 3. Uh, I, I heard that the original plan for Warhammer 3 was just to have the four Chaos Gods and that Kislev and Cathay weren't even going to be a part of it. Now, because Warhammer 2 did so well, you got those extra races, and that was great. Unfortunately, they fucked it up big time with the launch. So in order to get these other races, Warhammer 3 needs to pick up the player count. Now, what, there are certain things that are hurting that right now. One, the state of the game is not in the best shape. It's very buggy. There are issues in this game that have been around since Total War Warhammer 1, and there are numerous new problems being introduced constantly. Uh, a lot of these fixes... A lot, of, a lot of these issues can be fixed with this database fixing, which they just need to get somebody and actually just fix up the database. Um, the fact that they're not doing that leads me to believe that they're not really putting in as much workforce into this as they could, which leads me to believe what they're trying to do with, with Total War Warhammer, which is pretty typical of what Creative Assembly does do, is they try to cut costs and just try to make the most amount of money off like a shoestring budget. Um, Connor Van Der Vender did a five dollars ship. Was there an ideal target when you wanted to go after before Chaos Dwarfs got involved? I pretty much knew I was going to have to go after them. Um, 
So no. Thanks to the chat. So in order to get Creative Assembly to change their mind, you, you enter a catch-22 situation where you need their developers to actually fix the game so that the player count increases. But the problem is the player count has... If it increases, they increase the price of the fucking DLC, which means that fewer people are going to buy it, which means fewer people are going to play it, which lowers the player count. So you've got this constant struggle where the the developers are doing the best that they can to prop up the player numbers. And then the executives are bleeding that situation dry by pushing stuff out before it's ready and by constantly raising the price. And then you've got your, your forum idiots that make excuses for Creative Assembly doing it. Creative Assembly could sell this DLC for a quarter of the price and still make a profit. Um, I'm not saying that they should do that, but they're constantly increasing the price is hurting the game in the long run. But they don't care about that because it makes it look better on their bottom line. It's a business decision, works for them, but it's bad for the game. Um, these things need to change if you want to see Nippon. You're just not going to see Nippon if Creative Assembly continue to increase prices. There's no, there's no way that they're going to reduce prices unless you guys actively don't buy their stuff. Um, which is why I re I'm actually really hoping people don't buy Total War Pharaoh on the basis of how expensive it is so that Creative Assembly can get the message to put more effort into their games, but also make the price a little bit more reasonable, especially considering they make these games on a shoestring budget and they're mostly just reskins. So you, you enter a bit of a situation where you've got a lot of responsibility as the, as the consumers. And the problem is most people are not going to do it. I, I, I have no power to do it. Um, you ha If you want to see better from Creative Assembly, you have to hit them where it truly hurts them, which is their money. You have to actually not buy their stuff, which is understandably difficult if you actually want their stuff. Because, like, I just, I just want them to do better. I just want them to do better. I have no problem as well with profit as well. I'm all for them making billions upon zillions of dollars. No problem with that whatsoever. Once again, my problem is, is that Total War is a niche game. It appeals to a relatively small number of people. I really want Total War to reach its reach everyone but that doesn't seem to be what creative assembly wants they you know make it as inaccessible as possible <laughs> so we've got two different business business methods when it comes to me versus creative assembly i'm the make it cheap and make it make it for everyone where creative assembly is make it expensive for the few people that we can gullibly milk until they're bled dry and I don't like that method of, of doing uh, business. I don't like it at all. I think the Creative Assembly could potentially hit such a, such a much wider range of people if they would just make these games more accessible. And that is the case of price and also craftsmanship. Some of, this, some of these games are very poor craftsmanship. Very poor. Like, for a massive developer, some of this stuff is, like, absolutely embarrassing. Especially when, if you play other games, you can see other developers that actually do a good job. And it's embarrassing, you know, to be part of the Total War community where a developer just clearly gives so little of a fuck. Sorry, when I say developer, I really do mean executives. Gotta pin this guy down here. And that's the, that's the big, big challenge. The executive versus the developers. I'm on the developer side. I want them to have more workforce. I want them to have more time, more resources. And I want the executives to take a fucking pay cut. And I want them to back off and give them more time to to do this stuff but unfortunately whenever I say stop this CA people often think I mean 
go after the developers. I'm on the developer side. I want I want them to get more resources. Does any of the confeds yet have other dwarfs? I confederated Zuffbar, but what we did was actually a really good idea that you guys come up with. Um, I confederated Zuffbar and then immediately sold all of their lands to Karak Kadrin. But then outside of that, no, I haven't had any confederations. So I'm doing my best here to make sure that the blunderbusses shoot as little as possible. Thorgrim did a great job here. Less being sent off hyenas. Yeah, fuck that game, seriously. Fuck that game. I think that went pretty well. We only really took some damage on the melee infantry. And even then, only just a little bit. They're not on Force March, so they're not going to get wiped out just from this loss. But we try to run down whenever we can. Alright, stop shooting. Probably going to get some friendly fire there. Cool. Thorgrim walked out of this battle pretty much unscathed with 30,000 damage. Uh, what is the best new feature that was added in Warhammer 3? Uh, probably the outpost system is the most used. A lot of people say item fusing, but I actually very rarely use that. Hyena's going to fail so hard. Maybe. Hyena's is, is, is a weird situation. It's not going to resonate within the Total War fan base. obviously. They're not making it for the Total War fan base. Um... The big question with Hyenas is, is, is it going to pick up a fan base that is going to enjoy it? And I think one of the issues here is that most of us aren't aware or well informed about what that particular genre of games is like. Apparently it's massively oversaturated. So it kind of feels like Creative Assembly and Sega went, what game genre popular Cool, let's make that game. Without any real understanding about how difficult it would be and how much competition it is. Or maybe maybe Hyenas is truly a, a game of passion, passion project, although it doesn't look like that. Hard to say. Hard to say. Time will tell with that one. But when we look at something like Pharaohs, um, that is most definitely the most recycled garbage effort type game. And nothing against uh, Sophia, I'm sure it wasn't their idea to basically just reuse the same assets over and over again. But yeah, they're stuck with that sort of situation. Because they're not the ones that get to decide these things. Somebody else decides for them what they're going to do. And then they just have to make the, make the best with it. And I think they do a good job with the resources that they get. I just don't think they get enough resources. What happened to the gyrocopter you started with? Uh, I think I got sniped by something, I'm not sure. It, it definitely died. I saw it go down. But it had about, I don't know, 25% health, and then it just instantly lost it, and I'm just not sure what did it. People said I got it with friendly fire, but I don't believe that for a second. There's no way that Coralus with a full rank aiming at it would even take that much health down. Uh, what game in series disappointed you the most? For me, it was Master of Orion 3. It was Art of Dogwater. For me, that was Empire Total War. Empire Total War. I was I fell in love with Total War from Rome Total War. Like, I liked Total War at Medieval 1. I liked it. It was like, yeah, this is a great game. But then I fell in love with it with Rome 1 and Medieval 2. I was obsessed with those two games. And then Empire Total War came out and I was just like, wow. This, this franchise is dead to me. 
But I came back to it, obviously. And that's why I think it's really important to not have bad launches. Like, Empire Total War could have been absolutely amazing. But my god, the shoddy craftsmanship of that game. Craft craftsmanship. And I really gotta wonder if Creative Assembly putting such a shoddy effort in on that one was really worth it for them in the long run. This might even be an order as well. Jara got sniped by fire glaives. Yes, that would that would actually make a lot of sense. Oh, two of my dwarf war. Mm, experienced dwarf warriors. All right. Oh, I got two black orcs in this one. Surely this is their starting units. There's no way you would have recruited them by now. That tier four unit. Um. They'll probably wait for our reinforcements. They lack good missile units. Thorgrim can kill them by himself. <laughs> I need to keep my army alive. If I keep order resolving, I'm going to have no army left. Hyenas has to compete with Fortnite, PUBG, and Valorant. I don't like their chances. Yeah, I don't like their chances either. I just don't know. I just You just never know sometimes. What if some no-name makes a strategy like Warhammer without its flaws? With all the flaws the game needs so much, but no nice graphics, would you play it? Bit of a weird question. So, you know, let's just let's just rephrase that to what if Total War was to make a... Comp what if there was to be a Total War competitor, right? I would love it so much if there would be another company out there that would just make a game with the exact same formula that Total War has, which... And call it whatever you want. Call it... Epic, epic wars, whatever, who cares? Epic, epic conflicts, don't care. Um, and they were to make turn-based strategy, real-time battles. The problem is, is that um, Total War has been developed over a very long period of time. Every single Total War game is built off the back of the one that came before it. So if you're going to start now, you're basically going to where Creative Assembly was when they started at Shogun 1. Because that's... Shogun 1 built the foundation of Total War. And that's where they did probably the most amount of AI programming. So... For companies these days just looking for a quick buck, you got to keep in mind as well that Shogun 1, Medieval 1, and Rome 1, and Medieval 2, were not super profitable. Even Rome 1, as awesome as it is, it's not super profitable. So it seems unlikely that someone's going to put in a huge amount of effort to go up against a juggernaut, which is Creative Assembly. They're just unlikely to do that. But I would love nothing more than for somebody to do it. Paradox probably do it. Paradox has got the turn-based... Sorry, t t um, Paradox has got the strategy aspect down pat, for sure. Sometimes. Um, but Paradox has absolutely no programming whatsoever when it comes down to real-time battles, and the real-time battles is the, is the tough part. Making a map game, like the strategic aspect of Total War, that's easy. That's very easy. Um, I fucking, I could do that in Flash. Um, and I have no programming skill, really. And even I could do that, make a map game. Map games are very fucking easy to make. Um, making a battle simulator like this... That is, 99% of the work is this. And this is what put Total War on the map, it's the battles. Like, I love the campaigns, and I think the campaign is important. But it's the battles that put Total War on the map. And that's where Creative Assembly has dominance, because as much as their AI is stupid, um, they have the only one. There is no other... Um, battle AI out there. Let's you, you know look at Total Battle Simulator, Ultimate Battle Simulator. That's just non-existent AI. Excuse me, non-existent AI. All it has is pathfinding. That's it. It's 
So on one hand, you've got to be very grateful that Creative Assembly actually developed this AI as for all of its flaws. But also, to keep in mind, that the AI hasn't really been innovated on since it's, like, since Shogun 1. Not really. See, I've been on that throne for way too long. Yeah, well, they get, they get comfortable. And another thing, and this happens with really big companies. This is why I think people need to stop making excuses for mega corporations. Which they definitely do. Um, every year, like when you've when you're um, when you're making games for profit as opposed to making games for the, the love of games, right? Um, the problem is every year you have to keep making more money than you made previously. You have to keep growing the business. Or else you've got fucking hell to answer to. You know, there's the I don't, I don't know exactly how Creative Assembly works, but you know, if they one year make half a billion dollars, and then the next year they only make a quarter of a billion dollars, you know, a lot of you guys will be sitting there saying, "Oh, but a quarter billion dollars is still pretty good." But yeah, they'll have shit to answer for. You know, the CFO, or whatever, they'll have people to answer for. So when they enter this sort of situation where they cut the market kind of doesn't dictate that you're going to make a lot of money you just don't have a product ready to go um what they can do is reduce costs and up the price and that's kind of what you see with creative assembly where they they fucking got their um budgets constantly it just keeps getting lower and lower And they just keep reskinning the same game over and over again. Alright, Thorgrim, you go by yourself. You have to show profitability to Sega? Yeah, well, I, I don't know the exact details, so I'm just trying to be as vague as possible because I don't have an intimate insight on what Creative Assembly does with their financial reports. I can only give you a rough idea. And I know that as a sole trader, I know what it's like to earn a certain amount of money uh, one year and then earn less the next. It feels like shit. So I can imagine if you're a corporation and people are looking at you and your entire job is dependent on you growing the business, uh, that can be very difficult. And so very ruthless decisions have to be made and it sucks, but that's just sort of how it works. And then what ends up happening is you get a game filled with bugs. One man Doomstack, right? Okay, I think this guy here is doing the most amount of damage to him. But Thorgrim's winning the fight. <laughs> right? Yeah, he's winning the fight. If this guy here is gone, Thorgrim will be fine. I know there's some Black Orcs in there. But this guy here, yeah, he's the one doing damage to Thorgrim. And he's going down. Yeah, we really kind of made Thorgrim a one man Doomstack now. Kind of. See, he needs to spend a lot of money on new AI breakthroughs. CA doesn't need to do anything. Um, the current system has been working well for them. Like, look. See, what CA needs to do is just keep making money. That's all it cares about. If it released complete dog poo and you buy it, that's your fault, really. <laughs> that's not their fault. They, all they want to do is make money. If you buy it, that's on you. So, the Creative Assembly is going to keep doing what works for them, which is to keep making cheap games and raise the price. As long as it keeps making them profit. The moment it's not profitable for them to not... The moment it's not profitable to do that uh, is where they'll actually stop doing it. They're not unreasonable, you know, the, the executives. They're not malicious people that are just like putting their hands together being like, eh, I can't wait to scam them. You know, it's not like that. 
You just have to not put up with their bullshit. What's the ward save on Thorgrim? 26%. Which, you know, that's not nothing. That definitely helps. Yep, that's doing just fine. Nice. Oh, I don't want you taking any more damage. Ninety-five melee defense. Yeah, he's got a rune that's giving him lots of melee defense, and he's a dwarf, you know. Oh yeah, great AI. Two units of archers on top of each other. Do you do you remember when they did that patch where units sitting on top of each other could just shoot, and people were showcasing how um <laughs> like Skaven, not Skaven, um Cathay and Crane Gunners. You would blob them all into one spot and they would still keep shoot because there was no line of sight issues. It actually made the AI kind of competent in using these units, but they had to roll it back immediately because it was so unpopular. But it was such a band-aid solution as well. Not, not particularly creative. Does Warhammer 3 worth buying? Played Warhammer 2, but it wasn't that much fun for me. Oh, if you didn't like Warhammer 2, you probably won't like Warhammer 3. Why Why didn't you like Warhammer 2? What was wrong with Warhammer 2 for you? I don't know, maybe, maybe the issue that you had with Warhammer 2 was actually fixed in Warhammer 3. You're going to have to tell me a little bit more. Why didn't you like Warhammer 2? Because in my opinion, Warhammer 3 and Warhammer 2 are pretty damn similar in quality. Yes. Alright, let Thorgrim regenerate a little bit. As a professional, I want to say better AI needs a new team, money, and time, which is impossible for a gaming company. Such big models need academic research. Yeah, look, I don't know. You do not like Warhammer 2 sieges? Well, the Warhammer 3 sieges are different. They're not better. <laughs> they are different, though. They are, they are not better. If you didn't like the Warhammer 2 sieges, I don't think you're going to like... Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't realize I did that well. I don't think you're going to like the Warhammer 3 Sieges. The Siege rework is one of the biggest Total War failures of all time. Just absolutely, like, stupid design. Like, even... They should have seen the flaws in the design of the, um, the Sieges before they had programmed it, but... I don't know, man. I don't know what happens over there. It's like... So, people don't like our sieges in Warhammer 2. Alright, so uh, let's make the maps bigger! Okay, cool, so the AI is gonna understand how to pathfind? Nah, they're just gonna be programmed to stay at certain points and stay there. 
Right, so they're gonna defend the key points, right? No, they're gonna they're gonna defend the walls. Right, and how important are the walls are to defend? Not important at all. In fact, you could win the whole battle by capturing this one point here. And how much does the AI prioritize holding that point? Not at all. <laughs> so, we'll create a system where we expect people to just throw their armies up against ridiculously well-defended walls when the other way of going about it is just sending two characters on horses to cap every single point without any any challenge whatsoever. It's like the difference between playing the battles as intended and playing the battles as they are efficient is so ridiculous it's almost impossible to find an analogy that's comparable. Take the realms. Armed and ready. Ready? Forwards, my axe thirsts for war. Uh, oh, no one gets wiped out this time, but I just. Thorgrim's army hasn't spent any time in recovery. It hasn't been recovered in a really long time. If I order resolve this, we're going to take casualties. <clears throat> but I know people are bored with these battles. Still, we've got to. I've got to fight it manually, because we just take so much fewer da damage. Sounds like half the problems would be fixed if they got rid of cap points and just went by army losses. For sieges, um, yeah, that would... Um, yeah, that would that would probably do something, for sure. Um, thing is, though... Yeah. Yeah, that would actually give the... The, the cap points give the defender a disadvantage, not an, an advantage. Yeah, getting rid of the cap points. I remember back with Rome 2, uh, when they had cap points in every single battle, which I don't know who thought that was a good idea. Um, you know, it's probably the same people that developed <laughs> Warhammer 3. <laughs> They're just like, somebody at Creative Assembly is obsessed with capture points. They're just obsessed with it. They're like, how about we put some capture points in? Fuck off, man. Stop suggesting capture points. Everybody hates it. Oh, we'll put them in Rome too. We'll put them in a field battle. We'll put one in, a little one in the center of the map, and I'll have a thirty-second cooldown. And whoever captures it wins. No, stop that. Go, go back to the basement. And then they bring him out for Warhammer Three. Okay, so we'll put like five capture points all over the map, all over the sieges. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Kedic Cubism did a five pound super chat. Yo, Legend, just broke it with my girlfriend while watching the stream. Glad you were there for me. Uh, well, I hope you were a gentleman about it, but thanks for super chat. Alright. Yeah, I've been using variety in this thing. Hey, Legend! How come you only ever recruit one unit? Giga Johnson, ISK500 Super Chat is... Saving Private Grumbrindle? Nah. Nah. Thanks to each other. You as a gentleman about it? Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, sometimes relationships don't work. There's no point sticking in a relationship if it's not working for you. But as long as you're not a dick about it, then that's the best you can do. 
Mm, yeah. So, we got these blunderbusses, right? And they're really good at shooting. Yeah, and what's the AI do with them? They throw them into melee. <laughs> I swear, battles are easier when you only use one unit. The game doesn't expect you to do that. So when you start doing it, they're like, Oh, let's throw everything we've got at it. I actually recovered in this battle. They had enough ammunition to kill Thorgrim, but they're like, Oh, I'm gonna go into melee. <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me. Shrimp is a great excuse for hiding inside from the wildfire smoke. Oh, sorry to hear you got wildfire. Not gonna use the cannon? Didn't need to. That required me to click. Too hard. Too hard. Clicks are hard. Uh, I think we can get another Iron Warden tank and give it to Tom Phillipson. Who, whenever I'm going up against the dwarves, I always make it a point to kill him. <laughs> uh, not because I got anything wrong with Tom Phillips from CA. That's actually their uh, QE... Uh, what was it called? It's called Player Experience Team lead. Um, but this is a, like a pretty powerful hero. So I always try to get rid of him. Yeah. Yeah, you can save him. You can... Yeah, you can save Tom Phillipson. And you can recruit him again and again and again and again. And he'll retain... Oh, that's pretty good. You can retain this trait. Yeah. So you can spam extra research, essentially, from it. <laughs> it's... Eh, whatever, whatever. Eh. I didn't program it. Alright, transfer... What are we doing? These fucking green skins. They were literally in a war with each other. Like, ah, let's just drop it and go fight these dwarfs. Oh, shit. Uh, how about you go to war with Legion of Asgore? How about if I give you freaking Mount Greyhag? How does that sound? Because I don't need Mount Greyhag. I only took it because I hate Tretch. Um, let me just have a look to see if I'm developing anything there. Yeah. I mean, it sucks to get rid of a province. Maybe I should have sold it to them in the first place. Um... But yeah, if I can get him to keep them off my back for a little bit, that'll be really good. Probably gonna lose it anyway. Then go to war with Legion of Asgore, and let's be good friends. And also... Hmm. Hmm. You wanna go to war with someone else? Yeah. I will not fail. Cool. Alright, well, now I don't have to worry too much about the Legion of Asgore. They'll hopefully prioritize Imric for a little bit. If we have a look, he's equal strength to us. But Imric's stronger. Okay, so he might overcome it. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, then we need to get over to the Tower of Gorgoth. They're in shit shape. Alright. I'd much rather this guy take command to that and get rid of this one. And I said I was going to make another 
iron wooden tankard because they're really good. Yeah. Really, really good. And we'll pop it on him. Because he's he's constantly damaged as well. And giving him some extra melee defense is good. Yeah, I don't like going down this line here. If we go with this, we can make him stalk. That could be useful. There's no grudge against the uh, Chaos Dwarves. Oh, no, there it is. It is actually there. Uh, grudge against Chaos. Oh, okay. Okay. Nah. Why not delete Thorgrim's units? Oh, I don't know, actually. Maybe I should. <laughs> I don't know. It feels weird not having an army. Might have to build an army over here soon. Okay, we need to build extra defenses up here. Because I do expect to get attacked again from the Skaven at some point. Alright, we can finally get... Hang on, let me just see here if... Okay, that guy's there. And we can save a little bit of money and grab that. It would be good to start getting some artillery and guns together. Good. Yep. Yep, that'd be good. Get some iron, and I'm out of cash. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, let's move on. Yes. More important right now. Alright, things have calmed down a fair bit. You can spam all the non-legendary heroes if you import scum them. Itsy Bitsy from Tic Tac Toe is the strongest. Yeah. Oh, Ungrim just fell. No, oh, I want a moron. This one, both the same. Greetings. You no doubt have a request. I'll hear it now. Hmm. Ungram might actually want to confederate next turn. <coughs> Excuse me. Not exactly. <coughs> Not exactly good timing. All right, we got two or three turns before Azag gets here. Um, gotcha, get fucking moving. Hopefully those Skaven don't show up in the meantime. That's all I got. Get some of them in... Oh, God, I'm bloody low on money. Uh... I gotta defend this area though, so it's not that expensive. But then I was gonna build this, but that takes four turns. We're not gonna have four turns. Hmm. 
the Karazan Corps. From Beres, move! I unwilled. I'll cast the runes. Stop that! Okay. Yeah, trying to make our way over to the Tower of Gorgoth there. Why the hell did Ungram walk out this way? For the wisdom of Balea. <laughs> I, I don't understand why. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, trying to make sense of the AI, I just don't understand. City. The Empire. So. I, uh, I'm ready. At least Sylvania is not in amazing shape at the moment. So that's definitely good. Uh, let's actually have a little chat to Reichland. Hang on. See if we can get him to go to war with Sylvania. Ooh. All I have to do to go to war is the broken axe. Yeah, they'll never come over here. I don't need military access. I just want him to go to war with Sylvania. Very well. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. And these guys here. Yeah, whatever. Deal with that another time. These Skaven. Let me see if I can get out of this war. Oh, what the fuck? These guys are actually beating Karak Azul. Come, come, kin. Let us feast and drink. No. Yep. What? What? All right. Well, pretty uneventful turn, but that's fine. At least Orgrim's getting a bit of a chance to heal. That's good for him. Yep. And let's move on. Having a hard time this campaign? Eh. Like, if you explain having a hard time is that I'm not steamrolling then yes, but am I on the verge of losing? No. I think that's the thing with me, like, a lot of people will say that I have a hard time if I'm not just absolutely dumpster firing all over the, um, the AI, which, with the dwarves, it's kind of hard to do that. Yeah, I fucking knew it. They'd target me instead of Ungram, even though Ungram's in a way worse state. <laughs> Edgy player boys. Yeah, what are you gonna do? At least his early game army is probably mostly gonna be filled with um, orc boys, so it's not that big of a deal. Looks like Draco might be at war with the Bone Rattlers, and if that's the case, good. Maybe that might give Ungrim, uh, Ungrim, Azag an incentive to, uh, go back up north, although I doubt it. The AI very rarely packs up and leaves attacking the player unless the player brings excessive force to stop them. How are we going on this front here? Okay. These guys... Might be swinging around this way to fight me rather than deal with the guys on their border. That might be happening. It's hard to say. Oh wow, that's so useful for us. Okay. Onward. The runes are cast. Thag them. Ekwazak. Vengeful rune lord. And. Okay, Gotrick arrives just within the zone of control there, so if they do launch the attack, yes, he comes in and assists. I don't think these guys are going to get a chance to be recruited. 
We've got 11 units plus 3 plus 8. There's 8, 11. We've got 22 units. Wait, I should have some Regiment of Renown. I do. Ungrim shouldn't be able to launch the attack on Gotrek here. Because he, he can't bypass the zone of control just yet. Alright. We'll definitely need the Goblobbers. And we'll need some more of these. And... Oh, God. It's... Oh, no. You can have that one because that's Regiment of Renown. Okay. Yeah, do that. And he's got 22 units. Okay. Well, this is the best we can with that. Casting the runes. <laughs> I hope it's as good as done. I'm leaving. I could make another Iron Warden tankard. Ula of Makas. Ekwazak. Alright, let's do that. When is Valheim with Mrs. Legend coming back? Um, it probably isn't. Not for a while. What do you want? Yeah, look, some stuff happened in real life that, um... We just basically had to give it up. We don't- we can't justify spending any time on that channel anymore. Because, like... It's oftentimes really hard to explain why a channel we just like give it up um, without going into personal details, which we don't want to do. But yeah, it's not, um, we don't have time right now. Maybe we can pick it up later down the track. Um, because the thing is with the Valheim channel, it wasn't growing, it wasn't a viable business, and so it was just a hobby, and it was just something we had to give up. We didn't have a choice. Whereas this is my job, I, I can't give this up. <laughs> I'm sure as shit not d ditching the Total War channel to go make Valheim content. As much as I like Valheim, I just can't justify doing that, it would be... Probably among the stupidest decisions I could ever make. Alright. Uh, how about, instead of throwing our entire army at them, how about we just send Thorgrim? And the hero. Would you say it was just business? Well, the Valheim channel was never really a business. It was just a hobby. And we both did a Let's Play. And we both sort of finished it. Like, I haven't really been playing Valheim in my own time. Um, sort of just waiting for new content to come out. There wasn't really much incentive for me to just pump out content for Valheim. We weren't gaining subs. We weren't growing. There was no motivation to keep going. We were decaying in views. It just... It just didn't take off. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's just, uh, that's just what happens sometimes. I mean, that's kind of what happened with the secondary channel, the other one as well. You know, it just became more effort to sign in and actually make content that was only going to get a thousand views. It just wasn't worth doing it anymore. Any plans for the Nagash live stream? Maybe. Yeah, I might do that. Yeah, you don't need to be in melee just yet.
Why don't you guys just make a Legend of Games channel or something and just make whatever go you guys want to make? We we don't want to do this as a hobby. I don't want to. Like, okay. So, something to consider is that doing YouTube as a hobby is kind of shit. It's, it's a really fucking garbage hobby. Like, really bad. Um, if, if this... Alright, how do I put this without sounding like a dick? Um, let's just say you've got a certain amount of time in a day and you want to... You want to spend it doing, you know, the thing that you enjoy the most. I would not be starting a variety channel. I can't think of anything I would want to do less than that. So if I'm going to do something like that, it's either going to be a business or I have to really enjoy it. And I just don't. So I'm just, I'm not going to do that. Because there's other things that you can do with your life apart from YouTube. Like, I enjoy what I do here with Total War, but if I stop making money outright, I would not make content. Absolutely. And that is the case with fucking every bloody YouTuber. You know, I know a lot of people think that, Oh, I'm only here for the money and I don't do it. Sorry, I'm only here for the fun and I don't do it for money. But those, those YouTubers that do that don't make regular content. This one comes in here, we can speed up the killing with the Rune of Wrath and Ruin. But yeah, Thorgrim is practically unbeatable. All I gotta do is get that blunderbuss over here, but I don't think to do it. Can small-time YouTubers get some? Well, here's the thing about small-time YouTubers. A, a lot of a lot of the like the small-time guys, they end up quitting. They they don't have much staying power, so. Um, I've seen so many small Total War YouTubers just come and gone because they give it a go for a little bit and then they just give up. Which, I don't blame them for giving up because something becomes a hobby and then it gets boring after a little while. Like, imagine playing the same game or just doing the same thing over and over again for years on end. Most people don't do that. People, people go and do the same thing for years on end if if it's a job i heard about a guy that makes content has 300k subs and doesn't make money because it's his hobby really well there's, there's always some weirdos out there i guess <laughs> well if that's what he wants to do that's up to him but i'm telling you i tell you right now i would i would not be doing this if i didn't get paid like this shit that you got to put up with the misery that it causes, there's no way in hell I would be here just for the love of community. There's no fucking way. And I'm sure that that's not what people want to hear, but that is just the truth. There's no fucking way I would be here if I didn't get paid. If YouTube demonetized my channel tomorrow, that'd be the end of... that. I would just not make any more content. But that's not going to happen. I expect to be here for 10 more years at least. So don't worry about that. I'm just giving you guys an example of like the worst case scenario. I don't expect to leave. I do I do like what I do, but I I'm not doing this for free. No way in hell. And I I don't feel like I need to um lie to you guys and pretend, "Oh guys, I'm just here for the fun of it. I don't do this for money at all." I don't feel like I need to like lie to you guys about that. Because it's my job. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I don't feel ashamed by that one bit. Like, do you go to your job and whatever that might be? Like, let's just say you're an electrician. Electrician, Would you do your job for free? Or are you a lawyer, right? Would you, would you like, be a lawyer but then just not take payment? All of a sudden, you just weren't allowed to make money. Or, you know, you just... For some reason, your paycheck, just they just stop paying you. Would you do it? Would you go be a lawyer for free? I think most people would say no. Uh, double E did $10 to be chat. 10 more for 10? All right, thanks, thanks to be chat. Yeah, look, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just, just being honest about some stuff. Uh, Mr. Hamtassi did $10 to be chat. Thanks for streaming for us, Legend. All right, no worries, dude. Appreciate that. 
Anyone who expects you to do this for free is unrealistic and full of crap. I, I agree. But the thing is, there are people out there that do expect that, that, that you should just be doing this for free. And those people can fuck off. And I, I want them to know that I don't want them here and they can fuck off. <laughs> I want them to know. Uh, Matthew Soros did a two euro super chat. Would you manage to confederate Grom Brindle? Will I manage to? Oh, that is not on my to-do list by a long shot. But thanks for super chat. But yeah, I think it's, it's a little bit different when you're playing games because a lot of people look at it and be like, oh, but you're just playing games. And it's, I, under I understand that point of view, but the problem is I'm not just playing games. I'm playing the same fucking game over and 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 over again long after I've actually stopped enjoying it to try to teach you guys, you know, show you guys how to play it a bit better. I still enjoy it, but I'm just saying. I don't think I would have clocked this many hours on Total War Warhammer if I if I, if I wasn't streaming. Because like I just think about the last week, I have not been playing any Total War Warhammer in my own time, and that's not because I don't like Total War Warhammer. I do. I just I've been playing Zelda because that's what I've actually wanted to play. God damn. Just wrecking them here, not taking any damage. <laughs> Why use your army when you could just kill it with three three single entities? Is there a sliver of hope that you'll do a part two tomorrow, good sir? Uh no. <laughs> there is no chance of that happening at all. Sorry. No, um look, I in order for me to do live streams, I have to try to find a healthy routine. And for, I think it's not healthy for me to live stream too regularly because I get, I get really fucking pissed off if I come here too frequently. So I've sort of made it a, a rule to not do uh, any more than one live stream a week. And I, I I said I would do this live stream because you guys got um, Anton B Gaming to a thousand subs, but this was probably like I probably shouldn't have live streamed today outside of that I just couldn't find a better day to do it but I was definitely not in the best mood oh really you're not in the best of mood I can't tell um you know I probably should have given it another week and I'm not good at faking my mood pretending to come on and be like oh yeah guys I'm so happy it's dead. the sun is shining and the roses are red and fuck <laughs> Not good with that. Do I have another job? No. No, I don't need another job. I do well enough with this. Scrim stream when? No. Probably not for a while. Not all but most. There are some niche YouTubers who do it for the lols. Yeah, but I feel like the people who do it for the lols, they don't they don't do it very often. Like I, again, I I'm not sure, but if somebody is doing YouTube and they're only doing it for, as a hobby, they're not doing it every day cuz you would put a bullet in your head putting up with the kind of idiot people. I'm not saying that you're all idiots, but you do come across fucking ugh, in this in this industry. <laughs> you really do. Some fucking morons. Um, and honestly, that this kind of stuff that makes you want to turn off the internet and just disconnect and delete your social media. And it's across all games. It's not it's not unique to Total War. It's not like Total War fan bases are morons. Especially it's not the case. Starfield win. I probably will cover Starfield on this channel. But yeah, I... You know, find me a YouTuber that, like, does streaming every day, doesn't get paid, and, like, makes videos every day. Find me one person that does that. Like, if you've, if you've got a guy that's, like, making a video once every month, then, yeah, I can understand that. I can understand that. But, like, every day? Nah. There's gotta be no way. Has been doing it for years? Nah, I don't believe it. There's gotta be... So, it's, 
Gotta be some sort of kind of racket. There's no way. Disconnected social media is the best thing I've done in the last year. Oh yeah, I disconnected from social media a very long time ago. I, I'm like personal accounts, they're all gone. Got rid of them a long time ago. I just use social media now to let you guys know what's going on. That's about it. How much longer we stream today? Uh, I don't know. Let's see how we go. I'm getting pretty tired and cranky. <laughs> Some sometimes people like it when I'm cranky, but I don't know. What's the hardest part about streaming? Um, the hardest part about streaming is people's expectations are absurdly high and their behavior is oftentimes quite frankly unacceptable so that it's a there's a there's a like a um there's a disconnect i think between streamer and viewer that's been prevalent a fair bit that's kind of frustrating to deal with The hardest part is definitely the communication. Playing the game, it's easy. Easy to play the game. But sitting here and talking to 2,000 people, it is by far the most soul-draining, exhausting experience, and why I could only do it for a couple of years before I had to fucking basically retire. Yeah. And there are, there are some streamers out there that managed to... Like, get good viewer numbers without even communicating to their audience at all. Like, not talking to the chat. I don't know how they do it. Because I know that if I didn't do that, the stream would die. Do you still see views on your old content? I was going through some of your stainless steel biz campaign. I was wondering. A little bit. A little bit. Not, not a heap load. Do you ping on Discord when it's stream time? YouTube doesn't send notifications to me. Oh, I haven't been on my Discord in ages. Um, I usually don't. So we need to rebuild Legend Soul for more streams to occur? Uh, yeah, look. Um, how, how to get more streams to occur? Um, you guys have done fine. Like, everybody that's here watching, you've been a great audience. You really have. Um, you know, it's been a couple of people that piss me off, but that, that happens every freaking stream. And it's merely a case of how well equipped I am on any particular day to deal with it, which today I wasn't. Um, yeah, let's occupy I don't, there's nothing you can really do to, to get me to stream more because there's, the conditions aren't right for me to do that. They're just not right. Like, um, it's just, uh, it's, it's not right. Um, encountering line of sight issues during sieges where enemy units just pop in and disappear was capping a point and a unit of Ogres just popped in. Seen this? Yes, I have seen units just pop out of nowhere right in front of you. Yes. Yes, I have seen that. Thanks for Super Chat. Yeah, that's, um... That is annoying, for sure. Alright, I am going to get rid of you. Because you out here is a vulnerability right now. Alright, I can't imagine we're going to be able to maintain public order very well like this. So, we need to build defenses and... Mm, build defenses first. Master of okay, I think I've done everything I can here. The game needs to get better. Yeah, the game needs to get better, but also I kind of feel as though playing... Like... 
I have clocked something akin to like 20,000 hours across Total War Warhammer. How much better can the game get that I would actually feel like I'm would actually bring back that excitement? I think I've just played it too long. I think to to a small extent, I'm kind of ready for the next Total War game. Sorry, when, let me rephrase that. The next big Total War game. Like, the next Total War game that makes me excited. The way that Warhammer 2 did, and um, Medieval 2. Obviously not Pharaoh. So, I'm ready for that experience. And I think, I think that whenever that game does come out, whether it's next year, or the year after, or 10 years from now, that'll probably get me back into that grind of doing videos every day and live streams every day. But... I don't think I'm ever going to get that back with Warhammer. I think that, I think it's just run its course. All right. Still going to play it, obviously, but just not to that same extent. Because at the end of the day, when it comes down to which Total War game I like... The, ooh, here we go. Um, oh, this is not good timing. Ah, screw it. Welcome to my throng. <laughs> we just confederated on Grim Iron Fist, because I guess he got wounded. Um, Alright, our finances are not... Let us begin. ...completely useless. I might actually be able to push this guy up to here. I don't imagine we're going to hold on to Zafbar now. That's a done deal, boy. That that's a fucking done deal. Yeah, Zafbar, yeah, whatever. I don't want to be in this war anymore. Here you go. You can have it. Yep. Cool. That is a done deal. And how would you like Karag Drama? For money. Hmm. How much does settlement make? JK did a five dollar super chat. Alright, thanks, dude. Appreciate the support. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, this is a good landmark here, but oh, what about you? Do you want it? You no, I can't people. transfer anything to you. Well, I've still got Karakadrin. Yeah, probably best get rid of that. Mm, keep it there for now. And maybe probably put oh, I don't have any money. We're not gonna be able to hold this because this area is gonna be swarming with vampiric corruption. So I might as well sell it to the only person I can sell it to. At least I'll get a decent price for it. Peace with Vlad. I'm fighting on too many wars on too many fronts. Uh, you, you gotta call it sometimes. You can't just fight everyone everywhere. Or else you're not gonna make any progress. Alright. This gives us time to deal with Azag. Then once Azag's... And also, he's at war with quite a few people now, so maybe he's less inclined to want to pursue an attack on me. But yeah, now we can actually focus on Azag. I think some more move speed for him would actually really come in handy. Uh, then again, some more melee defense would be good as well. All of this would be good. I'll go with move speed. Okay. Okay, and let's move on. Oh, hang on, we got a hero. We inherited a hero. We got a Thane. Okay, that's good. Let's bring it around over here and give him a student. Did you buy anything on Steam Summer Sale? Uh, no.
What's our victory conditions? Oh, wait, we're a bit far off from that. Okay, let's move on. At Legend of Total War, if Total War is not surprising for you, why not dip your toes into the modding community like Grimhammer and other major overhaul mods? I do that every now and again, and it doesn't really do it for me. So there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with those mods, for sure, but they're just not really for me. Nice. You go and fight them, that's good. Any tips to starting an NO1800? Yes, sell soap to Eli Bleakworth. That's all you need to know. Sell, make lots of soap, sell it to Eli. Profit. That's how you make shitloads of money in the early game. Are you interested in the Gash mod campaign? Yes, I probably will do that next time. Yeah, I'll probably do that one. Do I play indie games? Uh, not very often. I'm the kind of person that doesn't play a lot of different games. I like to play one game to death. Like, I've been... God damn it, I don't know how much Zelda I've been playing, but that's just the kind of person I am. I, I like to play hundreds of hours in one game rather than 10 hours in uh, 100 games. I hope today's naughty chat hasn't ruined our chance of another stream this month. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you're fine. Um, this month, you know, it's the end of June, so no, there's not going to be a, uh, <laughs> there's not going to be another, um, live stream this month, it's not possible, um, no, no, probably a week or two, oh, look, look, you guys have been fine, there's just something you got to keep in mind, um, I just wasn't in a great mood today, it's not your fault, and so, there was maybe a little bit above average degree of trolling and I didn't like it and so I could have ignored it I probably should have um, but I instead chose to lash out at them tell them to fuck off because I don't want to see it. it it's annoying to see that much trolling in the chat so I don't find that ignoring ignoring them is very effective I've done that before and it just what ends up this is what happens when I ignore them um, I stop addressing the chat, and I just stop reading it all together. I just basically only read out super chats. Jason Ed did a twenty dollars super chat. Good to see you, Legend. Thanks, dude. Good to see you too. So, when there's excessive trolling, I stop reading the chat, and then what ends up happening is the chat starts fucking interacting with the trolls, and then people get pissed off, and then they run off to Reddit and be like, "Oh my god, Legend of Total War's chat is so toxic," and all this kind of shit, which they're not necessarily wrong. However, when I address those idiots and get rid of them then it tends to die down. And then things get normal again. It's just like, think of think of the trolls kind of like pulling weeds. You've got to get rid of them as early as possible because otherwise they just don't stop. You can ignore them, but they will not stop because if they're not going to annoy me, they'll annoy other people in the chat. And then that sours the whole experience. This is something you got to deal with when you've got this many viewers. It's something that we've always had to deal with. There's never been a time in the entire history of the channel that we haven't had idiots come in and deliberately try to sour the mood because you might need a mod. Um, I don't know, maybe. Do you ever consider just banning them as soon as they pop up and don't say anything? So sometimes I do, actually. It depends on the severity of what they're saying. Limbs will fly! Sometimes people do get banned. They say something and then they... I'll do the fighting. Yeah, they get banned and I don't even address them at all. Happens happens a lot. But you don't know it because I don't address it. Get out of my sight. Well. Well, alright then. Casting the roots. Got trick. Alright, well we're not out of the woods yet because we need to get this guy over here. We need to really press the attack on Azag. Grompeak has 
Okay, we could probably get some better units from here. Alright, what if... Okay. Gotrick, stay there. Get rid of this guy. I doubt that this guy here would be able to um, get to us here. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I do want you guys to know that you guys have been uh, mostly very good. Mostly. You're a good audience. And you've been very generous, and I appreciate that. So, yeah, I'm not like not coming back. I'm, I'm definitely going to come back. Just, you know, in the sort of, in a week or so, where it's nice and healthy. Need time to recover after us. Oh, true. Send me to vengeance. Watch your words, saying things like idiots, EDC will get you banned. Mm, I don't know who you're saying that to, but no, that's, that's not something that will get you banned. Alright, I could attack this caravan here. But I've only got one lord, so I'm only going to get like ten grand. It is time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, I need money. Oh, the... Oh, the garrison doesn't come out. Um, let me just try something. I might just be able to get someone in there. No, hang on. Because this will, like, double the amount of money that I get. Oh, I should have done this before I declared war. God damn it. Damn it. Let us be about this. Yeah. Damn it! Nah, this guy is probably not coming in to reinforce. Nice, ten grand. Are Archeon's gifts of chaos stronger than Bellicor's? His gifts of chaos are exactly the same. He just gets one extra undivided. Um. Gift of Chaos, which I don't think is that big of a deal since Undivided Gifts of Chaos are... There are like a couple of really good ones, but the vast majority of them are a bit shit. Well, getting 10 grand is good enough for the turn. I don't want to take attrition, so... I guess just stay there. Into the settlement, then attack order. I tried that. He ended up over here. I should have. I should have moved him out before I declared war. That was silly of me. Yeah, I could have. I could have gotten like an extra six grand out of it for that. Oh well, I make a mistake. All right. It's good to see these guys here haven't bothered me for a little while. Okay, that's all looking pretty good. Onward. Is it time? All right, we can actually stand here, the and they still won't be able to reach us, I think. And I will. Oh, yeah, no, no, we're okay for money. We're okay. Oh my god, I can't believe I spent all my Cathay money. <laughs> Jeez. Send another caravan, please. Any more cash? Jeez. There's a room. Can you attach three Master Runes of Spite to a character? No, you you can't, and you wouldn't want to do that anyway. It wouldn't do anything. It doesn't stack. 
<laughs> it just it just wouldn't do anything. You really shouldn't have like three master runes of spice in the same army. Or any more than one, because unless your characters are spread apart, putting putting like three characters together that all have the rune of spite, it'd be the same as having one character with rune of spite. Why didn't you get some thunderers or grudge throwers? No time, no money. Yeah, I just didn't have time or money. That's all. Um, QTV did a ten dollar super chat. Found your channel a couple of months ago, and you really helped me push my skills to run hard, hard. Thanks. Also, I started watching your Warhammer 2 videos and realized how bad I sucked at the game. That's okay. You probably didn't suck, but thanks for Super Chat. Okay. Yeah, this is something that happens in most of my campaigns, right? Where a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll conquer their start province and then they'll wait until certain units are available before they march on any further. And they'll... You know, by turn 10 or whatever, they'll have some good units. And they'll be like, oh, look at my army. It's much better than Legends Army. And Legends on, you know, twice the number of turns. However, if you look at the ter like the territory, I've killed Skarsnik, Tretch, Confederated Ungrim, and smashed Drazoath the Ashen, all before turn 20. With garbage armies. I've only lost one battle and it was a garrison battle. So getting your perfect army as early as possible isn't necessarily the right way to not necessarily the right or wrong. This isn't necessarily the optimal way to go about it. <coughs> Excuse me, but you play however you want. As long as you're not losing your campaigns, who cares what happens? could force march over to here. This guy's on force march, so he's going to get wrecked. He's going to... Got wrecked. Send me to yeah, just short on range there. How are these guys going? Yeah, they're, they're not recovering. I probably stopped all of their recruitment province there. These guys over here, they're... Yeah, green skins recover pretty quick after getting smashed. Okay, okay. Seems that Drazoath is actually beating Imric. This will give us some line of sight so we can see what's going on. So Drazoath is over here and have no idea what his army is. Yeah, he's... okay. These guys here are not that much of a threat. Military presence of nine, that means there's... Another half stack, probably one of these settlements here. So if I were to... If I were to go after the Sentinels, it makes a little bit more sense than going after these shit settlements out this way. It's not that they're shit settlements, but these guys are just not competent fighters, and I'm building extra defenses. I do expect these guys to make an attack on us, but I just I can't be everywhere at once. So I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I will actually go up here just so I can fight against these greenskins. Maybe. Because Imric's going to keep him busy for a bit longer. Anthony Luck did a 25 HK Super Chat. Is Luther Harkon campaign is much weaker than Wormer 2? High magic resistance becomes high spell resistance. Sounds really socks. <laughs> um, no, I think it's fine. Yeah, I, I he doesn't have as much resistance against magical attacks, but he's still really strong. You'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. Giant Slayer. I answer to clan and hold. Move. Thing to keep in mind is that Warhammer 3 is fundamentally easier than Warhammer 2, at least in my experience. Some people I've had some people say, Ah, oh, what are you talking about? Warhammer 
3 is way harder than Warhammer 2. But I kind of feel like those people just aren't good at the game. So, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, Zha Zha did a THB 100 Super Chat. I'm glad when I knew you played Anno 1800. I also have played since it was launched, and your exploit trading video made me rich. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, I hope you do Anno 18 stream sometime. I probably won't. Okay. Thanks for the Super Chat. I love Anno 1800. One of my favorite games of all time. I have no intention of making content on it. Because, like, I'll tell you a little something about making content. Sometimes, not always, sometimes, it's possible to really enjoy something on its own, and then you make a YouTube video on it, and people make you hate that game. That That's happened to me. So, some games, I just keep to myself. Okay, we need to push as hard as we can. Why not? Okay. Time for a reckoning. Follow mm. my okay. lead. Okay, so Azag has been thoroughly beaten. He just won't peace out. What about Valheim? Yeah, like I've got a secondary channel for Valheim. When I, I look, I don't think the Valheim channel is necessarily dead. Um, I just I can't make any content on it right now. I don't have any videos to make. I don't have time for it. I can't justify any live streams right now. Some things happened in real life that just sucked up all of my time and energy. I've only got time for the Total War channel right now. Same thing with my wife. We just, we've just had something that's just... Trust me, you don't want to know. Um, I, I, yeah, I can't be doing the, the Valheim channel right now. No, I don't want to. I don't want to trade with you because if you send a caravan, I want to eat it. Greetings on behalf of the Empire. Fine. City commander. What? Who calls? I will listen. Empire's blessings. Yes. Lord Majesty. Nice. Get them to be a bit stronger. Okay. Well, I'm kind of hoping my allies take out you know, Dryka so that I don't have to. What about vampires? My patience grows short. No. All right. Never mind. Uh, Cygnus X1 did a ten dollar super chat. Alright, thanks, dude. Appreciate that support. Thanks for the super chat. making some assumptions there and you have no fucking idea I'm not gonna talk about it maybe one day but not right now any tips on managing all the hero lord levels up late game that take some of my time in game and you can just turn the notifications off and just not level up you guys until you need them
Ah, oh, damn it. Well, it's not that large of an army. God damn it, they're always bloody anti play and biasing me. Okay, I can exempt it from taxation, but that's a fair bit of money that we're going to lose. I can switch... What's going on here? Confederation penalty. Alright, I was going to build walls here, but I clearly need to build... Oh, so much money! Right, okay, I'll build public order here, although that was where these guys might attack. Just a turn, because I really want to build... Oh, I don't have any money now. Can you explain how plagues work? I just got worm of three. Um, plagues are kind of a kind of a mechanic that you don't really need to understand very well. There are different types of plagues. So there's Skaven plagues. All Skaven plagues are basically the same. And then there's Nurgle Plagues, which also include the Beastman Plagues, which are called the Plague of the Crow, but the Crow is Nurgle. Yeah, all right. So, the, the Plagues will obviously have a explained text on what they do. I'm not going to go through every single one potential that, that, uh, that can show up. But Plagues have a chance of spreading. Now, a Plague can only spread so many times before it won't spread any further. It's a hidden mechanic. It doesn't tell you about that. So even Nurgle, there's a limit to how many times a, a plague can spread. Same, th I think it's the same thing with the Skaven Plague, but you can, you can, I think it can spread about seven times. After that, it won't spread anymore. Um, and it has also a duration from like two turns to, I don't know, seven turns. I, I haven't seen a plague last longer than that, but I don't really look into it too much. Um, when you transfer units from one army with a plague to another, you will transfer the plague unless that plague has already been transferred the maximum number of times. So one thing that I tested out a fair bit when playing as Nurgle, since you wanted to spread plagues among your own armies, I would actually create shitloads of armies and spread them, spread the plagues, but spread uh, units in between the the armies to see how many times I could spread the plague and it would only spread it a certain number of times. Wasn't it only four? I'm not entirely sure what the exact number is. It's, it's, like I said, I'm not super well... It's not something that you need to know. It's not that important. Um, plagues, for the most part, are fairly low impact, especially if it's a plague against the AI, since the only plagues that are of any use to you are the ones that reduce their... Replant so that um, cause them attrition. But the problem is the AI get very significant attrition resistance. So most plagues don't do very much in the first place. Most of the time. If you're playing on lower difficulties, I believe they, um, they lose their plague resistance. Yes. Gortrek, Gernishak. The 20% physical resistance of Nurgle is pretty nuts, though. Well, I guess uh, it's pretty good, considering that's, like, the only real big buff that they've got in the entire faction. It's, it's not... It's not anything more powerful than any of the other Demons of Chaos can do. Do you think 20% physical resistance is as good as being able to halt an entire faction for a turn? Or being able to spawn a full stack without it costing any upkeep? 
um, by using a, a devotee resource that has no attrition as long as you've got loads of slanesh corruption or being able to pump out armies in every single destroyed settlement that you destroy. Um, having plague, plagues are the weakest of the four um, chaos powers. By far the weakest. Unless, of course, you're a really passive player, in which case you probably look at them and like them, because it is a very passive mechanic, whereas the other ones are quite active, except for Cinch's mechanics. So it just depends. You're always going to have certain people value things differently because of their value system. Passive player will value passive buffs over active buffs, active benefits. Like, so for example, I, I consider myself an active player. I want to m make use of every mechanic, right? I think I've gone autopilot on this campaign now. Um, and so I'm going to value things that benefit that a great deal, like the blood host mechanic, like the, um, the devotee mechanic, because those are active mechanics. I don't value passive mechanics like Zinch's one, because all it is is you click a button and you get, you get a bonus and it gets a little bit boring. Same thing with Nurgle. You just click a button and then just stuff happens and it's just not really that interesting. All right. We got 16 units in here. God damn it, you were one turn away. Okay, Ungram might be able to help. You got any range? I got some Slayers. Who better to have Slayers than Ungram? Out of money. I must fulfill my Slayer oath. Okay, hopefully they'll think twice about attacking that now. Have you played Battle Brothers? I think you'll love that game. Oh, there's, I'm sure there's loads of games out there that I would love, but I haven't played it. I just don't have time to play everything. So, for example, there is a game out there that is a very popular game that I know that I would become so addicted to it, I probably would just... You'd just never see me again. But I deliberately not play it because I know that how addicted I can get to those games. And that game is Minecraft. <laughs> I deliberately don't play Minecraft because I know I'll get addicted to it. Retake the realms. Gotrek Gernishan. Dota 2? Nah, Dota is of no interest to me whatsoever. I remember my brothers playing Dota back when it was a mod for um, Warcraft 3, and I was like, this game, this, this is fucking boring. <laughs> and then it became its own game, and I was like, nah, not interested in it. And then it became like the one of the most popular games in the world, and I was like, nah, not for me. You know, not for everyone. No game is. Ever tried Kenshi? No, I haven't tried Kenshi. Does Zangrim have a good skill tree? It's alright. For, for a dwarf, it's alright. Make a poll to see how many active and passive players are around here. People lie on the polls. People, people lie, so there's, you're not going to get an accurate representation of it. Okay, uh, losing five, lead, uh, five leadership is not that big of a deal. So considering I've got public order issues and I need to retax this province here. All right, cool. And we can resume with the growth. 
cool. I really want to build that, but money. Oh, no! <laughs> no! Fuck off, man! Jeez, go go fight someone else, you dickhead. Oh, hang on. We just got extra defenses. Alright, so that's good. Hopefully that... That came with an additional five. So one unit was lost from all that. Okay. God, we have the same enemy. Why the hell are they fighting us? Gotrek Gernishan, where's the slaughter? Hmm. I can get replenishment, but Gotrek's movement's not amazing, so I need him to just do it. Good, we just got a global bonus to public order. It is time. Good, we've gotten rid of most of the chaos corruption here, so they're not going to cause this attrition anymore, that's good. I'm in the cusp of finishing these guys off. 13 units. But these guys here are more of a threat. Yeah, I still think I should finish them off. Whatever damage they do, we'll just have to, um, just have to suck it up and deal with it later. Okay, you get to have... What? Where is his character runes? What the fuck? Hang on, oh, maybe they're just not there yet. <laughs> I don't know. Here, you could have an Iron Warden tank. Okay, there it is, there it is. I was gonna say. Give me my fucking character runes. Alright, what else do we have for him? Yeah, probably need a rune of parrying. What else you got for me? Yeah, that could be good. Master Rune of Spite. Not really that useful in this coming fight. Bonus versus large might be good. And I think extra weapon strength, where is it? Spot it up. No, most of these guys here are, um... Treekin. This is what we need to be concerned about. They're, they're not going to be an issue. Okay. So, and then a hand weapon. Uh, yeah, you kind of need this more than we do. Wolfpaw with another 100 euro super chat. Dude, I'm actually kind of worried that you're spending, like, th throwing, donating way too much money to me. But thank you, it's very generous of you. But, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm worried that you're spending too much. I'm starting to get worried, but... I greatly appreciate it. If, if you're if you're cool with it, I, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, okay, uh, we could we could just attack him. Maybe maybe we'll win the order resolve anyway. Oh my god! <laughs> Dwarf and order resolve. Oh my god. Yeah, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Jeez, one one oath gold. Fucking rip off. Ask Ash and Mercy about it. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Look, if you're if you're cool with it, dude, I I greatly appreciate it for sure. I mean, I promise it won't go to waste. But uh, as long as, as long as you're cool with that, because you generally sorry, you donate way too much. I think. I am the Slayer King. I don't want to sound ungrateful. Contract. But I also don't want to like. <laughs> I don't want to take too much money from you. How come the Oath Goal was so low? Probably because a uh, few number of... Uh, because we didn't have that many units in this army. I think that had something to do with it. I don't know. I'm not unhappy with how he leveled... Oh, uh, that's not really... Oh, that's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Give him his Slayer Doomstack. Gurnish Things are really starting to sort of calm down in a bit now. Alright, let's see if we can get out of this... War with the Wargrove of War. No, not yet. But he hates money. I do not hate money. You, everyone needs money to live. Anyone who thinks that they don't need any money to live... ...is probably leeching off someone. I'm cool with it. I appreciate that. Okay, look, as long as you're cool with it, I, I, I really appreciate it. I, I really don't feel like anybody should donate that much to a streamer in one go. <laughs> Maybe over the course, course of several streams, sure. But on one go, it, it is a bit much because, like, I think about how much I sit here and talk about Creative Assembly <laughs> jacking up prices, and here I'm getting 100 euros from you, 200 euros, because the first, second one. I just don't think I provide that much value. Like, 5 euros. Yeah, I think 5 euros is fair. But 100 is way too much. Hmm. I need to save up that money if I want to get that Brightstone mine. But things are in pretty good shape at the moment, I think. Like, we've got Azag on the run. We just got rid of those forces from from um, Dryka. Oh, just when we thought things were going to be fine. Yeah, he's going to go to the fucking high place, isn't he? You come to us, yes, yes. Want something only we provide. There's always something, isn't there? Well, he's not going to attack us this turn, but how much can we really expect to recruit in one turn? Can do a lot with that. Alright, I'm going to need to free up some money somewhere because this is not going to cut it. Oh, I'll free it up with Ungram. I'm going to keep him there, but it's not urgent at the moment. Uh, Michael Snegurski did a 5.71 euro super chat saying fair amount. Uh, I agree. Thank you for super chat. Yes, that is that's fair. Alright. We've got no regiment of renown available either. I reckon they're just going to go straight for the high place because it's um, poorly defended. Hmm. Well, we'll see how we go. I, you know, I can only do so much. You got the Slayer upkeep, reduction, ancillary? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was auto-equipped on Ungrim as soon as I got it. I did see that. It, it's usually auto-equipped. No global recruit. I did. I just don't have, don't have a lot of money. Wolf Paul is a long time viewer, so it's his decision. Yeah, for sure. Just woke up unless you're still entertaining his fans. As long as you guys are entertained. Reed Gage 
did a, how about I pronounce it right, did a five dollar submission. Hey boss, it's my birthday today. I wanted to try a Lithanar campaign because I like to suffer. Any tips on how to increase their income early? <laughs> Thank you, Super Chat. Build money buildings. <laughs> oh, man, I just, I, I wish the answer wasn't so bloody obvious. Um, I mean, the thing is, on the campaign map, this game is really simple. If you want to make money, make money building, keep your armies cheaper, go down the blue line and, you know, reduce upkeep cost, get more trade agreements. Um, it's pretty much the, s the same thing. I don't know. Sack settlements. Uh, sell, capture a settlement and then sell it to their neighbor for profit. Sometimes you can make a lot of money. Uh, Crusader X11 did a five dollar super jet in-game ultimate crisis for this campaign. Do you think they'll make demons? Hang on. Uh, do you think they'll make demons of chaos crisis with Rift opening all over provinces full armies? Uh, no, I don't think they'll do that because they had that in Realms of Chaos and people hated it. <laughs> um, Kygnus X1 did a twenty-five dollar super chat. Fair amount. Okay. I think that you're overpaying, but all good. Thanks for the Marcus will fight. Became a member for 21 months. All right, thanks, dude. Appreciate that support. Yeah, we're going to lose the gates of Tsar. That's fine. Right? Easy come, easy go. We need to get rid of those those Chaos Dwarfs, though. Okay. They didn't go exactly where I thought they were going to go. And I'm not necessarily unhappy with that, because... If they go to the Pillars of Grugni, at least we've got a minor settlement siege there. There's, dwarves are pretty good at handling that. A lot of units, though. Um, they've stood just outside of reinforcement range, though. So that sucks. Let's have a quick look. Yeah. I was hoping that my garrison would come and assist, but no. And they've blocked the path, so I can't get around him. Ready. But you could have jumped! Yeah, if you jump from here to there, he will 100% intercept you. Alright, force march this guy over to Shmion. Give us a few extra units. Alright, that will ensure that this guy here definitely attacks the Pillars of Grug Grugni. Now let's have a look at what else we've got available. I've got the Ekron Miners. That's it. I don't think Thorgrim's going to be reaching rank 20 this turn. Oh, no, he might be. You can sell Gates of Tsar. Okay, yeah, I might do that, actually. Oh, who cares if they capture it? Does it really matter? We've already, we've already suffered a defeat in this campaign. Okay, they're gone. They seem to be a little bit busy. Uh, yep, that's good. Oscar Tos to Tosberg became a member for 19 months. Thanks for the countless hours of fantastic content, Legend. Really glad to see these spontaneous streams, all the stuff. All right, no worries, dude. My pleasure. Thanks for the super chat. All right, did we get a level up? I probably shouldn't have ordered. Oh, you fucking Thorgrim. Piece of shit. <laughs> Don't you dare die on me. Alright, what do we got here? Yeah, Rune of Wrath and Rune would help. Then... Let's do that, I guess. And... That's all I got. So that gives us 13 units against 20. But I think it's important to note that... 5 of their units are Skaven Slaves. Those are a problem, and these are all a problem. Oh, it's this. Uh, this is their faction leader. We didn't steal his armor of destiny off him. 
Hey, Legend, do you like Chris Hemsworth more than Hugh Jackman? Um, I don't know them personally, so I can't really answer to that. Um, I probably enjoy Chris Hemsworth more as an actor than Hugh Jackman, but I like them both, I guess. It's just, a, just a, such a weird question. I really just shouldn't have even looked at it. Oh. Mm, we have to fight that manually if we want to keep this army alive. Alright, if that's the case, these two should grab an Iron Warden tankard so that they can regenerate in this battle. No chance of us losing. I just want to make sure that everything's going to be fine. And since we're doing it, might as well give you one as well. My turn to die. Yeah. I die winning. Thoughts on Henry Cavill making a Warhammer 40k movie? Uh, I don't care. Like, if the movie's good, awesome. If the movie's bad, I don't care as well. I just... 40k movies. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not that into 40k. If they do a good job of it, it's great. You, the thing is, you're asking me about questions. You're asking me questions about stuff I don't care about. Just keep that in mind. I, I just don't give a shit. So you're not gonna get much conversation out of me. I just don't. I just don't fucking care. Going pretty well so far, I think. Oh shit, shit. <laughs> no, Felix. Dipshit, and you lost your own one, take it, you fuck. Get some morale. God, this guy's beating the crap out of Gotrick. I don't think Felix will rally because the battle's over. I usually don't. See, with the Iron One tankard. You don't get it if the leadership is um, lower than wavering. He's broken. Does Felix's passive heal every hero lord around him, or one of them? Yeah, he only heals one of them at a time. Anyone know what happened to Dame Offensive? Yep. Um, she basically just got sick of Total War. <laughs> and uh, just decided not to do it anymore. Yeah, I still speak to her every now and again. Um, she's doing well. Uh, I'd really like her to come back and, and make content again, but she doesn't want to. One of the casualties of Warhammer 3, unfortunately. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure if you ask her why she stopped it, she'd probably say Warhammer 3. Because, yeah. Man, was it a shit time. Holy crap. Throw 
It's pretty funny though. I think she got a really, really good sense of humor. On her last stream, she did this like dress up thing where she added stuff to whatever she was wearing, but it would always be stuff that you didn't ask for. And she dressed up as Total War Warhammer 3. So she was making a reference about the game, having stuff added to it that nobody asked for or wanted. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Gotrek Gurnishan Vengeful Alright So Curious to see what's going to happen here with only 13 units up against that But there's just Nothing I can do about it Tempting to go down south and deal with this, but he's tied up with dealing with Imric. So that's good. But he probably still prioritize me. You know how they are. Like the motherland, my people. What? Sigma it to war. The dragon blooded. Though you warrant unity. Yeah, look, I only wanted to raid your caravans. That's all. Okay, 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 okay. So we still need to try to push up here with Gotrick. Uh, look, I'll recruit over here with... No. No, I'll just recruit some of that, I guess. Um... Oh, okay, they've got a very large military presence somewhere in this area. It's like a full stack. Yeah, okay. Gotrick! I'm just gonna have to chill here, I think. Can't afford to really recruit any more units right now for an, an attack up this way. Just can't really justify it. Still trying to save up money for this. Because that'd, that'd really help me out. I just can't afford it. Not really building all that much elsewhere. Hang on. That's not needed. So we're going to lose the gates of Tsar. You said I could sell this. If this is... Nah, you can't sell it. Oh, unless... Unless... Hang on. Greases. Problem. Problems go into my gut. Okay. 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 Interesting. We could sell it to Greases, and then Greases will immediately lose it, but this puts us on good tiding with Greases. <laughs> well, actually, you just watch as this faction here, which is this one, um, just completely walks around it. We get a trade grid with him, and actually, no, fuck the trade agreement. I'm already selling all my stuff. Just get money. Uh, although it would be good to have friendly relations with him. Relations with ogres. Yeah, and that'll give me the money that I need. Yeah, they're at war with each other. Whenever you click on a faction, you can tell who they're at war with just by clicking on them. If you see that um, skull, uh, the, the cross swords. Hang on, I might have a grog, uh, grogny dude. Yep, I do. All right, cool. This will save us fifteen percent, making that a lot cheaper, so we can actually get the gold mine going as well. Nice. Okay. Alright, and we'll just see what happens here. Are you ever going to touch Napoleon Total War, your best series on the channel? All here. 
Okay. So, you're not wrong. The Napoleon Total War uh, series, for some reason, did really well. And I don't know why. Because it's not good content. It just isn't. Um, the short answer is no, I'm not going to be covering Napoleon again. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm going to go for the player. Fuck these guys. Oh, uh, good old Imric. Kind of hope Imric loses, actually. Yeah, I'm fine with that. There's your next stream on the gash mod like you did in Warhammer 2. Mm, okay, but let, let's make you pay for it. Let's see, what should I what should I ask for? Oh look guys, we're only at 1722 likes. I tell you what, if we get to 1723 likes by the end of the stream, then I'll I'll make the next live stream um Nagash. Ah, oh, legend you're asking too much! It's too much. Can we get one like? Just one? Please? Oh my god, he used to watch Legend of Total War, but then he asked for likes. Fuck him. Yeah, guys, look, I specifically asked for one like, not a hundred. So, no. We got a hundred, we got 200 likes from that. So, no, I'm not doing it now. I asked for one. Jeez. You guys can't follow instructions. What is, what is wrong with you guys? <laughs> no, that's shit odds. Uh, Alright, give me a good map at least. Uh, I, don't, I haven't fought that much in this map, but it's not bad. Um, uh, do you know what the funny thing is? Is that in this entire campaign, this minor bloody Skaven faction has given me the biggest headache. Yeah, take him back. I asked for I asked for one like, not two hundred. Take him fucking back. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just kidding. Next live stream will be in the gash for sure. Whenever that live stream might be, I'm not sure. But it won't be this week. Might not be next week either. We'll see how we go. I'm quite busy. Alright. Mmm. Mmm. Plague Claw Catapults are there. You know what I'd really like? Some army abilities. I don't have any. Hmm. Oh, but I, I can regenerate my ammunition. So that's something. Yeah. If they're like coming down this way here and I'm like bombing them through that line, that could work. If we hold this position here and that way we can maybe think about shooting these guys to begin with. Oh, this is gonna be shit. I'd be very surprised if I managed to win this. Very surprised. Skaven are fuckers. 
All right, what do we want to do here? Block this off? No, I want to use towers. How many towers do we get from this angle? Two, okay. We get cannon towers or explosive towers. I think cannon towers are the way to go. That one there will be first. All right, well, we need to get that 1400, okay. Do what we can. Alright, right, biggest concern right now is this single entity because that guys are just going to struggle against that kind of stuff. Okay, top priority needs to be getting rid of the fucking warp grinders. Try to get them blob up just a little bit first. Okay, artillery is ready to be made. Oh shit, wrong one. Not this one, go back. Okay, Warp Grinders is gonna smash soon, but we got a nice big blob going in there, that's good. Oof. Oof, that stuff hurts. I think he got pinned down. I know we got the artillery there, but just, just keep him out of it for now. Okay, the damage so far isn't really that bad. That's good. All right, we're gonna need a uh, this one here to regenerate our ammo. This one here can regenerate ammo too, I believe. Careful, 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 careful. All right, I don't have any anti-large units, so I'm not sure what I can do about that. You get out of there. Okay, we're going to try to shoot this fucking idiot. Alright, I want to put in a blocker here. Bias time as they're advancing. So much friendly fire. Who's escaping here, me or them? Yeah, that's it. Keep shooting at them. Need to get rid of this guy here before. Come on, shoot this fucking idiot. Alright, we got rattling guns incoming.
Oh no 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 no! Maybe I should have given this guy an unworn tankard. Where is it? This one? Come on, over here. Oh god, you don't get much ammo with this. Fucking bloody move, you dipshit! Fucking spell resistance, my ass! Okay, go on, get out of there. Move, you fucking slow ass! Bloody piece of crap! Gave in there for us. Fucking hell. Damn warp lightning. This guy out, he's taking too much damage. Trying to bloody restore my ammo where possible. Shit. Damn it, the fucking artillery's come around over here. Guys, I think I am actually winning. This is actually starting to come a little bit more under control. Get rid of that fucking warp grinder for fuck's sake. Oh, 
Bloody thing over here. Let's get rid of you. Yeah, need to kill this fucker here. Constantly warp lightning me. I hope he's overcasting that. Shit. I don't think that's going to do anything, but there you go. Good, enemy lord is wounded, that's good. Any guys over here rallied? No. Let's try to move these guys back a little bit away from these high damaging missile units. What the fuck are they aiming for? <laughs> they're, trying to sh they're trying to shoot this barricade with from that distance. It's well outside its range. You still get ammo. Get rid of this fucker here, please. Oh, I think I won. Yes, we can restore the ammunition on these guys as well. Let's wait until any of them come back. Boy, things got ugly in this battle, but it looks like we've looks like we're okay. That's actually pretty funny watching that happen. Yeah, we won. Ooh, boy, what a fight! That was touch and go for a bit. All right, well we've got no chance of catching up to any of these guys. But we'll be able to pursue them and finish off next turn, no problem. Does that ammo cheese work with artillery if you take the crew off? Yes, I, I did that, yeah. Yeah, those warp lightnings. God damn. Hopefully we steal the um, armory of armor of destiny off him. That would be good. Yeah, the warp lightning. I mean, I tried to dodge as much as I could, but it's a very difficult spell to dodge. I didn't steal it. I'll take that. It's gold. 
Do you like the change with minor siege battles? I do actually like minor siege battles. Minor city battles. Does Clan Wars ever confed these guys? It can happen, yes. There is a level in Hell called Dawi vs Skaven. Hmm. That doesn't really feel like that big of a deal. Who cares about them? Military access broken. What? But my pottery! Why did you die? Do they like me now? Now I don't know them. Give me my pottery. <laughs> well, I got I got three of the things. It's fine. All right. Let us begin. This is where you die. I'd imagine hell is like you're strapped to a Slaneshi dildo and your mouth has been pried open and a great unclean one just like shits into your mouth endlessly. <laughs> That'd be hell. Just like straight out of that fat warty ass of a... Oh, look at this bullcrap. They didn't fucking... No, no, they, they did. They, they sacked it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Alright. Tower of Gorgoth has got its defenses. This is actually a decent opportunity to go and hit the Sentinels instead. Because, yeah, now we've actually got Greasers dealing with these guys. I'll go into ambush there so they don't see me coming. Vengeful room lord. Hmm, nothing too interesting this turn it seems. What do you want? Really want to press the attack on these bloody Skaven. At least get out of this war. I smell things. Yeah, I could get if I give them a settlement. The other alternative is instead capture Karagdron. And then just sell it straight back to them for, Summon me if you dare. for like a slight chance that maybe they'll peace out because <laughs> they're pissing me off. Like, My stop annoying me so much. Right. So I'll send a small incursion over here to attack Karagdron because I just. I don't have the capacity to, to fully take him out. Alright, got a little bit of money left over. Ooh, I can confederate Barak Var. Probably not a good idea. Their actors are really good buffer at the moment. Yeah, I think that would be a shit idea to confederate them. Just because you can see a confederation option doesn't mean you should take it. I wouldn't be able to hold on to any of their territory and they would just pretty much immediately get... Just lose it. At least keeping them there keeps these guys busy a bit longer. Alright, that's all my money spent. Let's move on.
Which Bretonian faction has the easiest campaign? Oh, Rapance, I think. New to Total War, how do you move your units without ruining their formation? It always wants me to redraw the formation or change the formation to a line. Okay, well, in Total War Warhammer 3, it's not always the same. Um, you hold Alt, click and drag, and while you're holding Alt, tap F4, and then that makes your formation go in, like, really good formation. <laughs> Just exclude the, the Alt F4 bit. Hold down Alt, click and drag, and they stay in formation. I just can't resist doing Alt F4 jokes. Which Bretonian faction has the strongest faction effect? Fey? I, I think Fey Enchantress has the best one for the casualty replenishment rate. Yeah, I think that one's the best. Man, the AI does not like to occupy other AI's settlements. Disciples of the Morgue are destroyed. Oh. Oh, good, I guess. Well, I got defenses here, so if they go for Tower of Gorgoth, they'll probably um, sit there and try to starve it out for ages. And it looks as though Drowsel at the Ashen is finished here. So... There's no way he can recover in time now. And we're at the point of... Ooh. Just order resolving a lot. We're only on turn 28, and things are now comfortable. I think the campaign is essentially... <laughs> essentially won. You know, there'll be bumps in the road here and there. But... I think for the most part, the worst of it's over. God damn Gotrick. Didn't have any fucking movement. Off we go. What's your orders? Oh, you did have enough. Lucky. Lucky I know that that was possibly blocking it. Alright, can we get an auto here? No. Good odds for the great. I could easily win that, but I think we'll call it a day here. Because we're at eight hours and a quarter. Let me just see if that makes any difference. No, didn't make a difference. We could easily win that manually, but I'm going to call it a day there. Alright, turn 28. I'm going to call this campaign 1. We've got Azag on the run. We've got Drazowath the Ashen on the run. These guys aren't going to capture Tower of Gorgoth. They can go around it, but they're not going to capture Tower of Gorgoth. Uh, we're making shit money. You know, as soon as they capture Karag Dron, I can sell it back to them for peace. It'll buy us a you know, bit of peace. And we've got the Brightstone Mine being built, which is going to drastically increase our income. So that'll help quite a bit. And we've got a lot of friends. So yeah, I only just got one. Alright, let's go have a look to see who to stream. Just give me a sec here, guys. Uh, I put out a notice to my guys in the, um, in the network that I created. Uh, just, uh, let me just see. I'm just trying to see who's live at the moment. All 
Okay. Okay. Just give me a sec. PZA Total War is currently live streaming a Welcome to Astalia Gentleman Balthazar Gelt live stream. He's he's already at 1.58k subscribers. So he's already got 1,000 subs. So let's go over there and support him. So this is somebody that has joined the, the, the support network that I created a little while back. And what I did was I let people know that I was going to live stream. And he was the only person that scheduled the live stream to cater to it. Okay. All right. Let me uh, just give me a sec, guys. Just got to set this up. All right. Here's a link to his stream. I want you to start going over there now and show him some support. Don't forget to subscribe to him. I appreciate all the support that you guys gave throughout this live stream and the next live stream, which will be probably two weeks from now, but we'll see how we go. Um, that'll be Nagash. So that'll actually be a modded uh, campaign. Just with the... Maybe I should do a community bug fix mod as well. I don't know. I'll think about it. Okay, and then we'll set up the actual proper raid. Yep. All right, go and show PZA Total War some support. I'm going to get some rest because I'm knackered. Eight hours in a row is a lot. I can do it, but it's a lot. Anyways, 